Johnny up. Johnny up. Good, Good morning, Teddy. Who gets the belt? Russell. Russell. Russell Hunt. Hunt. Oh, good for you, Russell. Congrats. Good to see you last night. Ramsey is Tom Ellen here yet? Shout out to Tom. Yeah, we saw Tom. Hold on up to the game. What's up? That was nice. Sean Cunningham was messing with him. Like, have you just been waiting up here the whole game? Yeah, no. Because he's a goddamn real one. Didn't real ones also show up on the well, was last night. Mm -hmm. He's been around last week. week. All right, here, All right, we, here we go. It's game time. All right. Here's the deal, man. We're not going to be in here. Uh, it's not doom and gloom. A tough night for sure. Uh, but we're gonna walk. We're gonna we're gonna fence it a little bit today. Yeah, because I think it's important. Okay. Like sometimes, like typically in radio, you want to pick a side, right? Want to be like, I am on this side or this side. And typically, you and I would sit here before a show. Not you and I necessarily, but in a in a in a hot take world, mm -hmm. we would sit here and go, "Okay, let's see. We've got the Kings game from last night. I thought that it means they should fire everyone." And you would say, "Actually, I think this is good." And then we would spend the next two hours making our respective cases. Okay. The fact of the matter is, in mo as is the case with most things, answer kind of lands in the middle. Like last night wasn't a disaster in the in the in a vacuum of a one game sample. Yeah, it was a disaster. Yeah, and it was there were poor performances across the board, and we will talk about it. But also like zooming out, they're still in a spot where if they beat the Mavs on Friday, they now have the tiebreaker. They gain that game back, and they're right where they were starting Tuesday night. Yeah, I think. You know, Sacramento Kings fans, and like you can fan any way that you want. Like, yes, this the sky Please. the sky is falling is like a customary thing because you're so used to your team kicking your kicking you in the teeth mm -hmm. and just saying like, look, like we know you're down, we're gonna kick you harder, right, right, right. So I think there is this reaction that Kings fans have, and I understand it. And I'm watching that game last night and. Like I didn't have a good time watching the game. I, I know there are media members around me that didn't have a good time watching the game. And I I don't want to make excuses that there's no excuse for the, the performance that happened last night. Mm -hmm. I will point out, because I didn't notice this, so we always talk about three games in four nights. Mm -hmm. This was the Kings' third game in four nights. And which fifth and seven, right? That's the problem. You don't see fifth at five games in seven nights anymore at all. Yeah. And this was one late in the season that didn't have to be. Yeah. Like we talked about it yesterday. They could have easily had this game today mm -hmm. for both teams. It would have been better basketball, but I'm going to guess that that's because of the national television schedule. Yes. And for me, um, you know, sure. Dallas was on the second night of a back to back as well. But what happened in the third quarter was just, you know, you can't let that happen. You got punched in the face. You didn't respond. And then they like, you know, they just like Ralphie beating up the bully in, in Christmas mm -hmm. story. You know, they just like pounded, pounded the Kings I into oblivion. Yeah. And it, it just, it got away from him, man. Yeah. Like that's that you, you said it, it was a really good game in the first half. Yeah. Luca went for 26, but you know, hit some tough shots. And I thought the Kings actually did a, did a fine job defensively for the most part. Sometimes a player of Luca's caliber is going to hit some shots, mm -hmm. whether you play great defense or not. And then in the in the in that second half, it was like the game got away from them a little bit. And we talk about letting go of the rope 
constantly. We do. It just felt like immediately. But Mike Brown brought this up in his post game press conference, and I I noticed this during the game. It was like they got down ten, and when okay, we need to get it all back on one possession. Three, 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 right. three, three, they, three. They yes. got out of their offense, and it it led to easy buckets for the Mavs. And now all of a sudden. 10 point lead is 18 Hero and now ball. 18 is 25 yes. and at that point it's over and i think and that's where the okay look again losing by uh 36 is bad especially <laughs> at home. yeah at home to a team that is neck and neck with you in the standings huge game you can't can't national yeah. tv you can't turn into performance like that straight up but on the other hand I think there's, and Mike, Mike Brown talked about this pregame, he talked about it postgame, where, okay, you're going to lose games sometimes, and what do you take from those, and how do you grow from those moving forward? Mm -hmm. I think there's a lot that you can learn from the notion of like, hey, when a game slips away a little bit, and you go from down four to down 12 in two minutes, like it doesn't it, that, that doesn't mean, oh my God, shoot a three, oh my God, throw a, a full court, cross court, bounce pass on the break instead of just running a three on one break. Yeah. Like there's, there's all these little things that you can just do better. And frankly, I thought the Mavericks offensively were doing the things that Kings needed to do offensively. Oh yeah. They, they definitely play Kings basketball. Yeah. I mean, they got in the high pick and roll with Luca mm -hmm. and if, the first thing they did was with PJ Washington Shout out to PJ Washington. It looks like he's lost about like 15 pounds. Yeah, he looks great. He looks phenomenal. And, yeah. and I'm thinking it's possible that it's just the Hornets uniforms that like are non slimming. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I think it's possible that everyone looks <laughs> bigger and uh, in vertical stripes um, and, and the Hornets uniforms. But uh, he looked phenomenal, but they kept getting in this high screen roll. And Luca just kept finding. PJ Washington for wide open three hit three in a row to start the game. Just boom, 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 easy. boom. And then once that happens, now you have to you have to change your defense, mm -hmm. and that's when Luca gets loose. Yeah. And then in the third, it was just Kyrie, and you have to understand that that team has two of the greatest shot makers. Yes. Not shooters, just straight up shot makers. Yes. yes. In in the world. Yeah. And when both of them get firing you're in a ton of trouble. Yeah. Especially if you try to play their game, which is what I thought the Kings tried to do. Yep. Out of nowhere, they yep. started dribbling like Luka. They started dribbling like Kyrie. Yep. It's like, no, 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 no. Get back to who you are. Get back to the basics. Mm -hmm. And uh, I don't think there's ever been a better, like, example of letting go of the rope than what we saw in the second half. Yep. Where you saw a team literally, like, in a tug of war back and forth. And then, boom, they're done. You're down five points at the half. Five at the half, yeah. It was a 74-43 second half. 74-43. Yikes. Oof. I mean, that just... And it happens so fast. Yeah. I, I was taking notes during the game last night. We'll, we'll have some fun with that later. But I was handwriting my notes because all I had was my work computer and I didn't want to be... I had... I didn't want to have like a word doc up i didn't want to have to do all that yeah so i just i was like yeah i'll just write down I'll just handwrite some stuff tonight and i l kept looking down to write stuff and then all of a sudden i look up and this eight point game is 20 points in like three minutes yeah yeah and and I, yeah just yeah. like here here in the chat we have david myers who thinks that we're going to spend the entire sh entire show making excuses it's we're not a, we're not making excuses for they anything. got smoked dog they got like stomped <laughs> like they didn't show up in one of the biggest games of the year. The, like if, 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 if who did you, who did you say this was? Uh, David? Lane David Myers Martin. brother, David, David, David. All right. David. Yeah. Um, it, the, here's, here's the deal, man. They got smoked. They didn't play well enough offensively. They didn't play well enough defensively. Nope. They got out coached. They missed too many shots. They missed a lot of shots. They gave up too many open looks. I thought the effort defensively, especially in the second half, was not particularly good. The physicality wasn't there. It was bad, dude. If they play like they played last night the rest of the way, they would be lucky to win a game. Yes, I would agree. They they will not just they won't be a playoff team. They they won't be a play. They'll they'll be struggling <laughs> to make the play. -in. Right. I mean, yeah. if you're gonna drop 10 straight 11. games, <laughs> yeah. 
the the rockets aren't messing around they could catch you <laughs> yeah. if you're gonna miss that's right it yeah. was it was an abomination of a game i like it is what it is right but the the question now is is okay looking ahead it's trying to put this in context it's okay this was a God awful game. And if this had been a game seven of a playoff series or a play in elimination game, then we'll be in here talking about how the sky is falling. Yeah. But the fact of the matter is, as poorly and as god awful and as terrible as they played last night, we're sitting here going into Friday. And I I don't want to come in here and, and be because I know radio hosts who are like this. And I try I, I know I am sometimes, but I try not to be. I try not to be the the Oh my God, I'm way overreacting this way one day, and then oh, something else happened on the other side. Okay, now I'm gonna swing the pendulum and I'm gonna be oh, yeah. way over here this time. It was a ter- in a vacuum last night. It was one of the worst games they played all year, p- point blank period. Full oh, it's horrible. Full stop. Yep. In a, in a huge spot. Yep. Like it's you're on national TV, and we sit here and we talk about it all the time, and 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 we have for for years in Sacramento. Like man, the national coverage of this team is just not there. And then when you go show out like that on TNT mm-hmm. against Luca and Kyrie, who are already in that that spotlight, people go, "Oh yeah, see that? There's the Kings." Well, not only that, but that sucks. The Lakers game went double overtime, so most people had to go like turn to True TV, or they just kept watching the other game. Yeah, and so they missed a really good first half, mm-hmm. or at least a good portion of the first half. They yeah. might have watched like eight minutes of the second quarter and been like, okay, mm-hmm. this isn't, you know, the Kings aren't playing that well or you know, whatever. It's a mm-hmm. close game. And then what they take away is the third and fourth quarters. Mm-hmm. That's not good. Yeah. I mean, it, it was a disaster of a game and, you know, but now you have two days to recover and like, look, the other thing is they still have a two, one season advantage on the right. Dallas Mavericks. That's just it. If last night had been for the season series and they lost it, yeah. Then the conversation would be much, much different. Yeah, I totally agree. But it's trying, it's trying to, and that's kind of what we opened the show talking about was like, it's the difficulty of, okay, you called it, uh, you called it a, uh, an abomination. It an was. abomination. It was. It's a complete crap. That's uh, are you, anything else. This is completely BS. Mm-hmm. I'm really surprised that you, I was Scotty Barnes. No, not that one. No, one. <laughs> Well, not that one. Um, all the other ones. All the other ones. Scotty Martin had nothing to do with this one. Uh, no, it was. It was. It was. Uh, it's ridiculous, and we're tired of it. Yeah, we are. The board is just talking for itself Sorry, at yeah. this point. I, I didn't even click that one. Yeah. No, <laughs> no and that's it, it's the it's trying to okay wrap our arms around that, and we will. We'll continue discussing last night's game and some of the things that went wrong. I have a list of things that I thought went particularly poorly for the Kings. Okay, and we'll talk about those. And which one, like which thing went the most wrong? We'll do all that. Yep. But at the same time, it's important to to keep an eye on the next game because this team is still in the thick of a playoff race. And the fact remains that if they win on Friday and this team all year, it feels like every time that shoe we've been waiting to drop since last year. Mm hmm. Every time it feels like, oh man, okay, here it comes. Here comes this six game losing skit. They bounce back and they figure it out. Yep. So that's what I'm going to go off of. And if they go get smoked again on on Friday night, the conversation Monday will be a lot different. But they got housed badly, badly. at home. Yep. Um, we'll discuss it. We'll have James six quick thoughts coming up. We'll talk about what things went the most wrong. Um. We'll have a notebook dump. We'll look around the NBA. We got a ton of stuff to talk about. We do. So no, you're not going to get any excuses because yep. there's not there's not any. They got kicked in the teeth. They did. I don't I don't know what else to say. It's fine. All right, let's get to six quick thoughts next with uh, with me and James Ham. We're the Insider, sponsored by Jiffy Lube here on ESPN I, I would even point out too that even if the Kings beat Dallas and they have the tiebreaker, it might not even matter because in order for a tiebreaker to kick in, you have to actually tie. And Dallas has a 474 win percentage against, and the Kings have a 555 in the final 10 games. And 
you know, so like Dallas has a much easier path. The Kings have a Portland game, a Nets game, and a Jazz game. They also have a Boston game, an OKC game, a Clippers, a Pelicans, a Knicks, and one more against Dallas. Where Dallas is strength to schedule. OKC, the Kings are the second most difficult team they play. Then they have the Heat. They have two against the uh, the Warriors and two against the Rockets. But they also have one against the Detroit Pistons, the Charlotte Hornets, and the Atlanta Hawks. Uh, let's see. Got some good juice in the chat that I saved. Oh, yeah? Mm-hmm. All right. I just, at 95-7, when I was there, every Warriors loss was trade everybody, everything sucks, blow it up, and every win was, hey, I don't know why this team can't win a title. Like, that was, and I just, that shit's exhausting, dude. Like, I just, that's why I can't, I'm not going to overreact to, they played a bad game, but. Yeah, I mean, I. You are allowed bad games, but they've run out of bad games. This is one of their few bad games against a really good team on the season. Yeah. You know? No, there's a bunch of stuff. I I, I, I have it all written down here that we'll go over all okay. the stuff that went wrong. And... Uh, Russell, I'm going to agree with you. I, I think the A's will play in Sacramento next season and the next three seasons after this year. Um, And I, I don't like that that Vivek might facilitate the exit of the King of the A's from Oakland. But at the same time, I also know that it would, if I'm looking at it from the Sacramento point of view, and you understand fully that there is no way that Oakland, that the A's are going to be able to keep Oakland. I I just don't see it. If he's not going to sell, you can't keep them. The, like the relationship is gone. I might, bank on John Fisher not being able to figure it and figure out anything in Las Vegas. And there's always a possibility that the Kings end up in Sacramento. And again, I, I would, I would prefer the A's stay in Oakland, but if they're not going to go to Oakland, I mean, they're not going to stay in Oakland. I would prefer they stay in Northern California. Sure. Sacramento instead of Salt Lake city. Well, I, I, Salt Lake City is not legitimate. So, like, oh, yeah. sorry to crap on Salt Lake City, but the problem is they're they don't have a television contract, and we've no, talked about this. No, but here. what you're but what you're saying is, oh yeah, you would rather they stay in Northern California than oh than Vegas. Pick a different city. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Well, that and I mean, it's going to come down to the television deal. Uh, I told you guys that in the beginning. Like NBC does not have to honor their contract. Now, back to the Insiders with James Ham and Kyle Madsen, brought to you by Jiffy Lube on ESPN 1320. Tough one for the Kings last night. 132 to 96. Yeesh. I really, I went into last night thinking that, I was like, okay, I got a feel for the Kings now. <laughs> I got a... <laughs> What an idiot. Ooh, you. <laughs> I, was like, I think this is a game they're going to go get by like 20. And then Friday we'll get like a really, really high level game. And uh, that is not what happened. Yeah. That's my fault. Also, I'm not taking the blame on this one. I know we broke the curse against who was it? Who did we break the curse against? Um the Bucks? Yes, is the Bucks game. I think it was the Bucks. Yeah, we broke broke the curse against the Bucks. Um, but I'm not wearing that one. The Kings were just bad. Yeah, I, I mean, I don't think you have to wear, like, Kyle, I, I know we always joke around, we're both superstitious dudes. Yes. Um, I, 
I don't think you have to wear most of these losses. I mean, there are a couple there that I think were 100% your fault. <laughs> but, this one not on me. But overall, yeah, I don't, I don't think this one's on you. All right. Uh, you want to do six quick thoughts? Um, yeah, I, I think we, I mean, they should be sponsored by somebody, but okay. yeah, I, I think we have to do them either way. How'd yesterday's Kings game go? Oh, Kings up. insider James Ham has six notes you, you need to know. Here are James Ham's six quick thoughts. All right, here you go, James Ham. Six quick thoughts. Let's get to them. Uh, let's just make them really quick. The Please. duo, uh, Luca and Kyrie, just tore the living bleep out of the Kings. They combined for fifty-two points, fourteen rebounds, uh, thirteen assists. Oh. I, I think it's fourteen and fourteen. Fourteen rebounds, fourteen assists. They just kept adding things, and they just the traded end. halves. It was Luca with twenty-six in the first half. It was Kyrie. I think he had eighteen in the second half. Yeah, he was unbelievable. I mean, come on, man. And I, it's, it's just a, like the guaranteed shot making where you're just like, oh, that that ball's going down. There's no question. Yeah, yeah they're yeah. they're if if they're going to cook like that and then also get 34 combined from Tim Hardaway Jr. and PJ Washington. Oh, yeah, it's over. I mean, come on. Uh, and that's that is why. And we'll we'll discuss this in a bit. But that's why Dallas is dangerous, dude. Mm-hmm. Like what what you saw that duo do last night. Yeah, I totally agree. I just don't know. I mean, they've proven time and time again this season that they what they their style of play is not sustainable. Yeah. Yeah. So, you yeah, know. no doubt. Uh, right. Number two. Shadowed. Uh, the Mavs had a player pick up De'Aaron Fox in the backcourt um, from the opening tip. They had him shadowed with a long athletic defender all night long. It didn't matter where he was going. It was almost like they had a spotter on him. Mm-hmm. Um, he finished with an okay game, 18 points, five rebounds, three assists. But at the same time, I, I thought he forced, he, he got into playing like Kyrie does. Mm-hmm. And that's not De'Aaron Fox's style. Yes. It was, it was kind of interesting because there was a point the Kings were down eight and De'Aaron went and had seven straight points. And in the that was in the first half, mm-hmm. and it was like okay, this this might be a game where De'Aaron has to take over, um, and I don't think that's the way it needs to be done if he's going to take over a game. We talk about all the time his playmaking and his ability to set up his teammates. That was a that was a spot where I would like to see him getting in the paint and affecting the game that way, and it just didn't it didn't it didn't feel like a De'Aaron Fox game. No. Uh, like a lot of forcing it. I, I totally feel like that's what we've seen a couple of games here where yeah. he starts to feel the gravity of what's happening and knows it like he has to he's step dude. up. Yeah. He's that dude. And then it becomes like not the right style of basketball. Yeah. Well, and especially especially if he's not going to drive and get the calls that some of these guys get. It's just if you're going to be able to get hammered in the lane and not be able to get a shot on the rim and there's not going to be a call. Yeah, if a guy is literally piggybacking you all the way through the lane and then you drop a hip into him and they call you for an offensive foul when the guy was draped all over you for Crazy. the three seconds before that, Crazy. then I understand being upset. Matty, yep. number three. 55. Uh, Demonis Sabonis posted his 55th consecutive double-double. Wasn't great, though. 13 points. <laughs> Nine assists, twelve rebounds. Could not care less about the double double last night. Maybe he was twelve bad. points. He was three of ten from the field. He was bad. It was that was that is the exact type of game where they they talked about it post game. Keegan Murray did, De'Aaron Fox and Mike Brown, how their bigs played up, and Mike Brown said Domas has to fake and turn and get inside himself there. Yep. And like, dude, just, he took a bunch of jumpers early. I like that. Yeah. Because if the Mavs are going to give them to you, you got to take them. But uh, I, I I was not impressed at all by Sabonis last night. No. And, just and I'd also say, effective. like, look at the week and the, the couple of weeks that he's had mm-hmm. where it's just like they are relying on him for everything. Mm-hmm. And we talk about shooters having, you know, this moment where they they aren't as effective. Mm-hmm. Well, Domas doesn't really have. I mean, a three for 10, that's really not that bad of a one. Well, it's a one off. But because of the way he's relied on, he has taken a beating. Mm -hmm. And there's going to be a lull. And we've been waiting for it forever. Mm -hmm. I mean, 55 consecutive double-doubles is crazy. That's tough. And Not a lot of people do that, turns out. It does does turn (laughs) out that (laughs) post-merger, not a lot of people do that. 
Thank you. Yeah. <laughs> Thoughts, Marcia. Number four. Uh, playoff Malik? Question mark? Mm. N- no. Uh, he went one of seven to start the game, and it didn't get much better. And he has not had a great couple of weeks here since the All-Star break. He hasn't been shooting that well. And you can see him trying to fight through it. I think it's better than it was last year when he started to have a cold stretch. It was just horrific. Mm -hmm. And it lasted like six weeks. Mm -hmm. Now it's usually like three or four games where he has some trouble shooting. But uh, overall, it's just not good enough in a big game. Since the All-Star break, Malik Monk, 43.1% from the field, 27.6% from three. Oof. Not great. Not great. Number five. A uh, strong performance. One of the few bright spots, Keegan Murray, six of 11 from the field, 17 points, three rebounds. I need him to rebound. I need him to rebound more. Mm-hmm. But I also thought, hey, look, he's defending Luca for stretches. He's defending all kinds of different, different people. Mm-hmm. I thought he was good and he mm-hmm. needs to shoot more. And, you know, we keep talking about that, but this was, it's better. He's building on something you can kind of quietly see. He would be a beneficiary of what we talked about with De'Aaron Fox. If Fox in those moments, you know, trying to score for sure, but when he gets into the paint, kicking out to Keegan, Mm -hmm. uh, then you'd see instead of 11 field goal attempts, you'd maybe see 15 or 16. And instead of 17 points, you'd see maybe 24 or 25. And now we're talking about that game a lot differently. I agree with you. I thought it was a pretty good Keegan game. Number six. Number six, uh, settling in. Keon Ellis uh, scored seven points in the first quarter. Mm -hmm. I thought they foolishly went away from him. He he scored seven points in like the first three minutes of the game. Mm -hmm. He didn't, he scored 10 and he got an and one in the fourth quarter. He never took another shot outside of that. And so for me, they need to understand that the other team is leaving him open. And this is sort of a larger problem that this game had. It's that they just, you know, Mike talks about the spray three. We heard a lot about it last night uh, again. Um, they just didn't look for it in the second half. They just went away from who they are as a team, and that's why they got stomped. Yeah, four of five for Keon Ellis, one of two being on the arc. Um, he's a, I think he is a credible offensive player. Mm-hmm. Um, and his, his usage last night, 28 minutes. And maybe it's just because the Mavs were attacking the Kings defense in a way that um, Keon wasn't as effective. It is a minus 24 in his 28 minutes, but yeah. Um, I would even say, I don't think they need to lean on him offensively, but he's not, he's not, he's not the kind of player that when the Kings get down big and they're like, dang, we need some buckets, get Keon off the floor. Yeah. It just doesn't, you have to utilize him better. And I would point out that some of the players that we talk about in his sort of type style of player, right? This Mm -hmm. defensive minded, crazy guy, Mm -hmm. uh, Gary Payton, the third, uh, Matisse Seibel, second, my bad. Uh, Matisse Seibel, mm-hmm. right? He's got a lot more shooting ability than yes. he, than any of those guys. Uh-huh. And in a, in the King's style of offense, that actually matters. Yeah. And so he's a better fit. Mm-hmm. And, and as long as he continues to get better defensively, which I think he will, he'll only get better. Uh, yeah, he's going to be a nice player to have. Yep. I'm uh, I'm right there with you. We all know how I feel about Keon. Big Keon guy. Yep. Uh, I took a bunch of notes last night. I love it. And... I, in, as I was going through, I was like, you know what? Instead of trying to turn this into something on the radio, I'm just going to start reading my notes and you can just stop me and we can talk about it oh. if there's something that jumps out to you. Okay. I'll try and keep it to the interesting ones. I wrote down some stuff that's probably not going to matter. I'll try and filter all that out. About squirrels and stuff? Just dude, yeah. Just like yeah. Kelly Green, Maxi Kleba jersey to my right. Oh. Yeah, you know, that kind of stuff. Oh, yeah. Okay. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> no, we'll leave that out. And then, uh, you know, so much stuff went wrong for the Kings last night. What went the most wrong? We'll go through that as well. Right here on ESPN 1320, Sacramento Sports Leader. Clear. Clear. <sighs> yeah, I definitely think, like getting back to the Oakland thing. Sorry if I said uh, if I said Kings earlier. I definitely think that there's a good chance the A's are here in Sacramento for a couple of seasons. And again, I'm not going to be a rah rah guy for this, but uh, I definitely think that you know I would rather have them here. 
then gone completely. And it sounds like, I, I don't know, I, there was a report yesterday that it's possible that NBC is willing to negotiate with the A's right now to allow them to play in Sacramento because as of as of today the contract that they pay the A's which is like upwards of 70 million a year it's right around 70 um it's only good in in the bay area and Sacramento while NBC Sports California has a Kings and the A's and the Sharks um so it's still like it still would be on the same exact station if it were in Sacramento, it it's, it still changes the dynamic. And so NBC would not want to pay Bay area rates for a team. Uh, that's, that's playing in Sacramento. And Hey, look, I, I think that it, I, I'll keep saying this, uh, you know, people in Oakland, they can drive the 60 miles up to, to go see an A's game. I think they would prefer that than to just give up on their team completely. I don't think this season, I don't think during this three year period, but if the A's ended up staying, I think you could possibly settle back in and go, okay, at least they're here. At least they're, they're around. And either way, you got to get rid of this idiot owner. Like it, sure that's going to always be the problem. I don't know how many people will make the track up from Oakland. Um, I think there's a large know. portion of people that once they bounce from Oakland, they're just done. No, I get it. I get it. Hey, but and I'll pull be, this up. Maybe some people that Meg uh, Sutter Health Park is not a major league stadium. They didn't. They had an opportunity to build it that way when they originally built the stadium, and they they decided not to make it expandable. It was supposed to be expandable. They had two options and it was about like putting in larger uh, like footings and larger girders to support a third deck. And they, they decided against it while they were putting the stadium together. And, uh, and so it's not, you could never use Sutter, uh, Sutter health park for a long-term landing spot. Public funding is going to be part of it. That's part of everything. But uh, you know, you got the governor, intrigued by this saying got a, a mayor who's aggressive um i wouldn't doubt that they really do push to get the a's to stay in sacramento 50 seconds and sacramento is a great baseball town it i mean they've proven that with the river cats over decades they they have um I just don't know that it's like truly facilitating anything because there is no true like negotiation left between the city of Oakland and and Fisher and Caval. Cavill. Whatever the hell you want to call him. Yeah, Russell, there's not enough seats that you could add in left field and center field. You'd need a third deck to be a major league club. There's there's not enough suites, all that stuff. There we go. Now, back to the insiders with James Ham and Kyle Madsen, brought to you by Jiffy Lube on ESPN 1320. I want to remind everybody, we got watch parties. Ooh, I'm excited. At tomorrow. Tomorrow? Sweet 16 action. Mm. That's going to be D-Lo, KC, Jesse, out at Bar West starting at 4 o'clock. Nice. Bar West at 2724 J Street. I think that's the one it is. Trying to do this from memory. Yeah, I nailed it. 2724 J Street. There it is. Down in Midtown. A Sweet 16 watch party. D'Lo, KC, and Jesse starting at 4 o'clock. Get down there. Uh, have some drinks. Have some food. Watch a little hoop. And then tonight, uh, 6.30 p.m. Big time game for, for the Kings. Phoenix at Denver. Mm. We're carrying that game right here on ESPN 1320. So make sure to check that out. And uh, root hard for Denver. Yeah. 
That's a significant game for the Kings. Yeah, this is we'll part be carrying of, it for you right here on thirteen twenty. This is part of that stretch where I mean, it's just brutal what the Suns are left with. Six forty five win percentage against in their in their final ten games. Oof. They don't have an easiest opponent. Yeah, let's on, on tank. Turn. They don't have one. Denver, OKC, Pels, all on the road. <laughs> Cleveland, Minnesota, Pels. The Clippers might literally be their easiest games left. They have two against the Clippers, two against the Timberwolves, two against the Pelicans, and then the Cavs, the Nuggets, and OKC. Which makes which makes their 42 and 30 record even more baffling. With as good as they should be, with as easy as their schedule has been to this point. Yes. That they're 42 and 30. Ugh. Here's a kicker for you, Kyle. I'm looking at their their toughest opponents. They have, and again, I'm counting them up. So Denver, OKC, two against Timberwolves, mm-hmm. two against the Clippers, one against the Cavs, two against the Pelicans. That's nine games. Their 10th opponent is the Sacramento Kings, who don't make the list of toughest wow. opponents. Just based on win percentage? Yeah. Yeah. Their easiest game on the schedule is the Sacramento Kings that are left. A team that they're like neck and neck with. I'm going through the the Suns schedule right now and grabbing all the losses to teams that aren't currently a top six seed. It's a lot of them. <laughs> it's not great. Mm. Oh, we got a Atlanta in here. We got Golden State in here. We got Houston. We got two to Houston. We've got uh, Boston a top six seed. Yeah, right. That's Boston. A joke. That's, a joke. Yeah. That's a yeah. joking. Um, the Spurs without Victor Wembanyama. Mm. Got a couple to the Lakers, a couple to the Kings. They got the Nets, the Blazers. I mean, boy. Well, that and they they lost to the Spurs three times this year. What? Yes. Wow. <laughs> oh my God. That that's not great. I no, mean, it's, it's kind of the Kings lost to the Rockets four times. No, I know three or four. I know. Maybe it's just three. I do, at least the Rockets are making a push. Like the Rockets have won nine in a row. They're a game back of the ten seed. Oh yeah, they could yeah. very easily wind up as a play-in team. Yeah, they're bringing it. At least that's the case. Did they lose to Charlotte, Washington, uh, Detroit, and Portland? Because the Kings did. Well, they lost to. Let's see. They lost to Atlanta. They lost to Memphis. Oh. They did lose one to Portland. They okay. lost one to Brooklyn. They lost one to the Raps. Oh. Yeah. That's okay. So for you. lottery teams, they lost a lot. Yeah. Yeah, five or six. So now they're sitting at 42 and 30. You'd feel a lot better about them if they were 47 and 25. Yeah. You'd feel a lot better about this stretch coming up where, yeah, okay, they're going to drop a couple, but, or maybe they lock in and are like, all right, we're geared up, but I don't, I'm not, I'm done waiting for the Phoenix Suns 10 consecutive wins. They're back on track. I'm well, just, that and what is Kevin Durant going to play forty-two minutes instead of thirty-seven per game down the stretch? Kevin wow. Durant, the MVP conversation, man. Thirty-seven point two minutes per game, man. What is what? Uh, okay, that's tough. Um, all right, let's, let's get to your notebook. Well, I want to. Do you want to do notebook first, or what went the most wrong last night first? Either way, let's rip through the what what went the most wrong. Okay. All right. So the first thing I wrote down. Or the first thing I have down here, Tim Hardaway Jr. and PJ Washington combining for 34. Yeah, that's a lot. That's too many. I have the Mavs shooting 22 of 39 from three, uh, including the non Luka and Kyrie Mavs going 14 of 22 from three. And especially Mike Brown talked about this after the game because you know it had to irk him to no end that the Mavs were getting in the paint where the Kings would send a double, they'd pass out of the double and then swing one extra pass to a wide-open shooter every time, every possession. And it felt like they hit every single one of them. Well, they hit 14 of 22, which is essentially every single one of them. Yes, that's <laughs> wild. Yeah. Um, the Kings, 5 of 10 on spray threes in the first half, mm-hmm. 1 of 4 in the second half. And if you're not familiar with the idea of the spray three, that is where d- player gets in the paint. I was going to pick a specific player, but any player gets in the paint and when the defense collapses, you kick it out conceivably for an open three. Mm -hmm. De'Aaron gets past, breaks down his defender, gets inside defender collapses from the wing, throws it out. Harrison Barnes, wide open three pointer. 
Yeah. Right. That's what that's supposed to look like. That's what the Kings offense is predicated on. And they had four of them. They took four of them in the second half. Mm. They wanted to, they want to take 20 a game. That's Mike Brown's goal number is 20 spray three attempts a game. And they got four in the second half. Wow. That's really bad. That's, that's just a, a perfect encapsulation of how the Kings got out of their offense. Just, you can't have that. No, you can't. I mean, you have to stick to your basic tenants, and that's what you saw the Kings get away from. Yeah. The the Mavs did what a couple of teams have done, and that is collapse on De- DeMarcus mm-hmm. Cousins. Um, DeMarcus, DeMarcus Cousins. Sabonis. DeMarcus Sabonis. Um, yeah. I, I don't know why my brain does that. Hey, every once in a while. while. Every once At least while. you've never called this the wrong radio station. No, that's true. Come on. That's true. <laughs> um, yeah, I, I think it's one of those things where like, you just can't get away from who you are. Yeah, and, man. And I, I think that that's why Mike Brown left his team in a lot longer than some people were happy with. Mm-hmm. And then it was weird. I had some people yelling and screaming, why is Mike Brown have a, a, all of his starters in the game with six minutes left and the fourth? And then I had this other group of people who were yelling, why does Mike Brown still have all of his starters? <laughs> I mean, why why is Mike Brown waving the white flag and not trying to win this game? Mm-hmm. It's like, well, first of all, you're not winning that game. You're You're, you, you're not winning it. They got it to like 21 and Malik had had a big dunk and the place was kind of rocking a little bit Mm -hmm. and they got it to Keegan for an open three in the corner and he missed. Yeah. They get the rebound. They get it to Davion for an open three above the break and he missed. And at that point it was like, wrap it up. This one's yeah. Um, Luca 26 first half points, Kyrie 18 in the second half. I mean, that's, that's tough. And then we talked about Sabonis earlier, third, three of ten, um, and didn't take advantage of Mavs bigs kind of pressing up and playing out of the paint. Mm-hmm. Um, to me, when you're going down that list, I go to the non Luca Kyrie stuff because Kyrie and Luca are going to do things in a game that you just can't defend. They're going to hit shots where you have perfect defense; the ball is going to go in. It's PJ Washington wide open threes. Yep. It's Tim Hardaway Jr. getting whatever shot he wanted mm-hmm. all night. That's just the kind of stuff that over the course of a game, when you play the Mavs, that's what's going to kill you. Way more than, okay, Kyrie hit some shots, Luka hit some shots. If you're letting the other guys get loose as well, you you just you don't have a chance. And that was the the that was the disappointing part to to me last night. Um but at the same time. I go somebody in the somebody in the chat. This is what I wanted to get to. Um, Jim Garfinkel says. Yep. Uh, so James, do you agree with Mike Brown this time that this game was an offensive failure as opposed to a defensive failure? I actually do agree with that. I Their offense too. was terrible. It was, and it led to so many easy buckets. Yes, that it, whether it was just a breakaway layup or a what the what the Mavs finished with eighteen fast break. Points? I think it was nineteen to four. Maybe it's eighteen. Uh, 18 to five on fast break points for the Mavs, 21 points off turnovers. Yeah. I mean, that just ball game. That's it. I mean, really? Mm -hmm. And I I thought that, I mean, Mike's point isn't that their defense was okay. His point is that it's really hard to play defense and your defense looks much worse when Mm -hmm. you're chasing somebody who's going in for a layup on a break. Yeah. And, you know, again, you take away, if, if you put them at the five points, that the Kings finished at, and mm-hmm. they end up, you know, 14 points less, the game looks a lot different. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, it's just not that type of track meet. And, yeah, really, really tough. Yeah, and and the other thing that I think Mike Brown was trying to drive home, because he said, like, the effort wasn't good enough anywhere, but it's not as though last night undoes the last two weeks of really good defense the Kings have been playing. It's like, well, they, they, they've been figured out. They can't get stops anymore. It was they were struggling a little bit defensively, and then when the offensive wheels came off, that's where you saw the game really get away from them. Oh yeah, totally. Yeah. So yeah. Um, here's what I wrote down last night. I broke it down into quarters. Okay. I'm very organized. Um, I wrote down just some of the matchups. Uh, Keon uh, Keon Ellis started the game on Kyrie. Keegan started the game on Luca, and then they had Demonis Sabonis on PJ Washington. And we mentioned this earlier. They just attacked that with a pick and roll and got PJ Washington on Domas. And then Domas is trying to double. 
and trying to help on on Luca, and it just and actually was ugly. What happened was the Kings ended up switching Domas back mm-hmm. to Gafford. Yes, and that's when the Kings went on a run, and mm-hmm. and Luca started to make a bunch of mistakes. Yes, then so even when Gafford came out for for the high screen role, mm-hmm. you didn't have to support him the same way. Yeah. And so it was okay, like to rush Luca mm-hmm. because Gafford's not going to slide over and take a, a you know, a, a, a three. Yeah. He's only going to roll to the rim. Rolling. Yeah. And then your defense can collapse on that. You might get caught in, like, a, again, a spray three situation mm-hmm. where he's collapsing the defense, but that's okay because he's not a natural passer or anything like that. Mm-hmm. And I thought Luca made uh, like a bunch of mistakes. And that's yeah. why you went into half only down five. Mm-hmm. You could have even been down less. I mean, the Kings blew a couple of opportunities in the final seconds. Yeah. So I think that that was an interesting thing that they they tried to do. But I think it might be something that like the switchability and, and during the playoffs, it, like Domas is going to have to do that. He's mm-hmm. going to have to defend those guys. Yeah. And the fact is that every time you left PJ Washington open, he hit a shot. Yeah. That's it. Happens sometimes. Uh, I also noted that Davion and Keegan got turns on Kyrie uh, as well, and I thought I thought the Kings did a pretty good job on him in the first half, mm-hmm. but Luca was just it was too good. Um, I noted that Harrison Barnes, Luca was guarding Harrison Barnes. Um, I thought that was something the Kings needed to attack a little more. The it felt like the Mavs were hunting switches and hunting mismatches. And I just did not feel like the Kings did that enough. Luca was questionable with Achilles soreness. You could tell he wasn't moving 100% right. Yep. It's like, man, I would I would love to see them get him in spots. or Whether it's Harrison Barnes or De'Aaron Fox or whoever, make him work a little more defensively. I didn't I didn't think they did that. They did that a little bit early. I didn't think they did it enough. Yeah, I I thought that De'Aaron kept getting getting switched on 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 the offensive end, kept getting switched on to Luca mm-hmm. and then running right by him. And he wasn't effective with his pull up. Mm-hmm. Uh, he missed a couple of wide open pull ups in the lane. And Luca doesn't even try. Luca just like tries to grab you as you're, as he's yep. trying to fight through the screen. He's trying to reach out and grab the player mm-hmm. and just get a foul call. Mm-hmm. I mean, it's why Luca had five fouls last night. Yeah. And he complained about every single one of them. And every single one of them was straight I up a foul. I, no, Go I'm going to give him some credit. Oh, he complained about four of them. Okay. The one where he blocked, I think it was Keegan going in for a dunk and he fouled him as he was going up. Yep. He immediately turned around with a hand up. Oh, okay. Tried to help him up. Went over to the, was like, told Keegan, I think I'm pretty sure it was Keegan. Like, I hey, my he bad. I was worried he was going to get called for a flagrant because <laughs> it, no, it was a defenseless player in the air. Yeah. Yeah. And he, and he tried to block Keegan it off his, sideways. Yeah. 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 So he did, he did that one. He did and acknowledge. The, like, hey, that was me. I got that him. That was me. I, I did it. But yeah. the rest of them, I, well, uh, I didn't. The whole game. The whole show game. the replay clearly grab and hack. Like, oh my God, dude, look. <laughs> like, are you watching? <laughs> um, yeah. The, I really liked the De'Aaron Fox, Malik Monk, uh, Fox Monk, Ellis, Keegan, Alex Len lineup. I like that lineup a lot. Man, Alex Len is, <sighs> dude, I dig Alex Len. More man. on Alex Len coming. Okay, cool. Yeah. Um, I thought that early in the game, in the first half, the pace that the that Fox and Monk were playing in mm-hmm. in the half court was crazy. Mm-hmm. They were sprinting at the rim again and again. Like mm-hmm. they just kept coming at them in waves, but they weren't getting the ball to fall. Mm-hmm. And I think that they got a little frustrated and kind of lost their way. I thought Domas took three jumpers in the first six minutes. Mm. And you know I'm here for that. If a team's gonna give it to you, you have to take it. You have to knock that down to the point that people start guarding him differently. Uh-huh. Um, but I love the confidence that, that he was taking those. Uh, like you said, they didn't necessarily fall. Also, we saw him a couple times put the ball on the deck and really pressure the rim, like with pace. Mm-hmm. Uh, talking about Domas here. He had the one where Derek Lively fouled him because he just put him in a blender and Lively jumped and then just kind of fell on top of him. Oh, yeah. To keep him from getting a shot up. And then the next possession, same thing. He dribbled in. He made a really nice move and made a sweet pass out to Keegan for a three. It's like, man, that's what I I love to see that when he's putting the ball on the deck and pressuring the rim. And you saw the Mavs in those cases. They don't, they're they're scrambling. Mm -hmm. Now they're collapsing. And now Domas is with as good a vision as he has and as good of a passer as he is. You're going to get open threes that way. I'd like to see more of that. Yeah, you just have to keep doing it. mm -hmm. You know, that's to get away from it. And I don't like these games where Fox ends up with three assists. 
Yeah. You know, I, and, and Monk for the same thing, you know, Monk has had five assists in a ton of games this season, mm -hmm. but these guys have to have five assists, six assists every single game. And even with Fox, he needs to have games where it's more than that. Like, it's, no doubt. And it can't just be as he's having a, a assist night because he does that on occasion too, where he's just not aggressive offensively. Yeah. And he just, well, he can be aggressive offensively, but he's not aggressive looking for his own shot. And mm -hmm. he's just having an assist night. Yeah. He needs to mix those up a little bit. Yeah. You can do both. You yeah. can definitely do both. Uh, in the second quarter and uh, Barnes was on Luca to start. Um, also noted the Mavs went six of eight from three to start the game. Mm. And that's notable because it didn't really stop. They never cooled off at all. Yeah. Um, here you go. I wrote Alex Len, the five they need question mark. Yeah, Alex Alex is playing Good so player, well, dude. man. Yeah. He is. And it's in, you know, it's tough. It's 10 minutes a night. Mm -hmm. But the some of the blocks he's had lately, and, yeah. and not only that, but the he's he's defending the goal. Yes. Not just yes. like getting a block here and there. He's defending the goal. There's like three or four other shots mm -hmm. that teams are missing because he's there yeah he's affecting shots for yeah, sure yeah 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 man i i've been really really imp impressed with alex lennon again mm -hmm. not not to the point where i'm like yeah you gotta get get him 20 minutes no but i i think if if you're in a spot where yeah hey you can get domas an extra couple of minutes off a night mm -hmm. and alex len can give you effective minutes on both ends because mm -hmm. he just does the right things offensively he's in the right places defensively I, I I I thought he was really good last night, and that's just kind of an expansion of of what we've seen from him really all year. Um, but particularly recently, I thought he's been really good. Okay. Uh, do you feel like the quick timeouts have upticked since the All Star break? No, I, I don't think it's that noticeable. Mm, okay. I don't. I mean, it's not like the beginning of last year where twenty seconds into a game, Mike Brown's already called a timeout. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. And actually, I yeah, think that there hit. are times where they needed timeouts to stop a run mm -hmm. to like recenter. Yeah. But I also feel like every time they come out of one of those timeouts, they make some stupid offensive turnover. <laughs> sure. Uh. Yeah. Eight fifty three or so. What is that? Little little more than three minutes into the into the second quarter, back to back Luca threes. Quick timeout. Try and fix it. Um. Another Domas jumper. I wrote <laughs> just Kyrie man. That's what I wrote down. Well, Thoughts? when he go starts going, there's he's one of the most elite again shot makers in the league. Like mm -hmm. it's just ridiculous what he's able to do. Mm -hmm. And if he's right, you're in trouble. Mm -hmm. Like it doesn't matter who you're, you know, who he's up against. Yeah, you know he's he's one of a handful of players in the it's league ridiculous. that can do just about anything on a court. The full speed dribble behind the back to create separation, and then stopping to pull up after that dribble behind the back is just. He's the best ball handler in the league. It's so silly, and it's not even—I yeah. don't even think it's close. No, no, the the players will tell you it's not close. It's ridiculous. Yeah, there was a a point in the so when De'Aaron Fox got his tech, the, it was a fifty four fifty game. Uh, De'Aaron Fox gets called for a foul on Luca, mm -hmm. gets teed up. Luca goes and misses the technical free throw, and the crowd is just whipped into a frenzy. Yeah. Now, Luca hits both of the free throws to make it 56-50, but that was a point in the game where I thought the Kings really had Golden 1 on their side. I thought that that was a really big uh, opportunity to um, make a little bit of a run before the half mm -hmm. and not taking advantage of that little two-minute stretch um, because they came down. Darren Fox misses a layup. Uh, Doncic gets it stolen by Fox. Um, Keegan Murray misses one of his two free throws. Exum then misses a layup after a block by Malik Monk. That was the block right there under the basket. Mm -hmm. um, and then Kings come down turnover. And then Doncic gets fouled, hits a couple free throws. Uh, Fox turnover. It's like man, that was that yeah. was a spot to me where you could have really either either taken the lead or gained momentum and, and wrestled that game kind of away after the Mavs had sort of controlled it for the first half. Yep. And they just they they didn't. That blo block by Monk was incredible. That was so sick. Yeah. It's like he wasn't even looking at the play and then realized there was somebody in the air and went, oh, I got to go get this. Yeah. At the, <laughs> the His reaction is time is, is wild. <laughs> yeah. Like quick twitch muscle. Yep. Uh, here's a, here's, here are two things from the third quarter and then we can kind of punt the rest of this because this is when it got, got out of hand. 
Mm-hmm. Um, oh, one thing I did think the crowd energy was still really good last night, even when it was like a 23 point game in the third quarter. Yeah. Had a couple of Malik dunks. They got the place fired up. Um, no, two things. One, the third quarter started really frenetically. And with the way the Kings have been playing defensively lately, I'm not sure that frenetic pace really helps them anymore. Huh? I think quick is fine, but that like, Hey, throw the ball ahead, long outlet pass layup. Okay. Hey, now we're trying to run back and play defense. Okay. Now let's see if we can get a steal. Now another lo- I just don't those those stretches where it feels like there should be Benny Hill music playing. Oh yeah, it felt like they thrived in those last year, and this year, at least right now, with how they've played the last couple of weeks and the success we've seen them have, really since the All Star break, I don't know that that is good for them anymore. I don't know that the game, like I said, playing with pace is still going to be something they want to do, but I think you eliminate some of the ability to play with physicality and the organization that they have thrived on defensively. Since the all-star break. Yeah. I think that goes away when it's like, oh, miss layup, throw ahead. Oh, quick steal. Okay, now throw it ahead. Oh no, another block. Now we got it. That just the oh the made shot, pull it out. Let's go. Let's get running. I just don't, I I don't, I don't know that that's the move anymore. Okay, so there's something hidden within that. Okay. It's that if you're not, if you're throwing it ahead and you're if you're not scoring the basket, mm-hmm. then your defense doesn't have time to set up. Right. So if you're going down and you're doing something silly and you're you have this frenetic pace, but your offensive numbers start to dip, then your defensive mm-hmm. numbers are going to dip. Yes, and that's the big problem that mm-hmm. I, I see. Where if you're not, you know, going down and scoring every single basket, mm-hmm. you're going to get in trouble. Now, there's also the track meet where you know it's just score basket. The other team pulls the ball out. Boom, they're already coming at you on the other end. Mm-hmm. That does happen as well, but I just feel like this team they are letting their their offense dictate their defense on some of these plays, and and that's because it, it's sort of part and parcel of the same thing. The other thing that jumped out to me was I thought Harrison Barnes was was pretty good last night, particularly just affecting the game without shooting. Um, what did he end up with? Six rebounds. Thought he was a little more aggressive going to the basket, but I'm still waiting on a game where and I, and I understand shot distribution. I understand offensive pecking order. But I would love to see a game where we have Harrison Barnes and Keegan Murray both being aggressive at the same time. Mm. Where it feels like when Keegan's hitting shots, Harrison Barnes is just over there in the corner hanging out and getting rid of the ball as soon as it gets to him. Yep. And I would love to see, hey, Keegan's hit a couple shots, but hey, it's to Barnes in the corner, puts it on the deck because the guy in front of him can't stay in front of him anyways. Puts the ball on the deck, breaks the defense down. It Those, those things happen individually. But I, I I felt like last night there were too many instances if it was like my turn, your turn with them being third in the offensive hierarchy. Yeah. And I think I think there's room for both of them. No, I think there is, especially with Keon Ellis in the lineup. Yes. Yeah, definitely. I mean, I, I think that there is. So there's more shots to go around. Uh last last thing on this. Uh Derek Lively can play. I didn't I, I didn't they, not that he was a future all NBA guy last night or anything like that. But I think if you look at the box score, there's no, there's no column for shots affected. I think he affected a ton of shots at the rim last night. I think him and Gafford are really, really similar. And I think Lively's career path is going to have him sort of follow the same path Mm -hmm. where he gets bigger, he gets stronger Mm -hmm. and you appreciate him more in like year three, year four. Mm -hmm. I think he's a ball player, but I also like, I think he's really sloppy with his footwork. Mm-hmm. I think he plays out of control quite a bit. That doesn't mean he's not talented, that he can't score, he can't yeah. rebound no and all that stuff. He is kind of a big physical, slightly out of control guy. There and were just there were there were a couple times where the Kings got to the rim and he just went vertical. Oh yeah. Straight up. And he gets so high when he jumps. Yeah. And same <laughs> with Gafford an too. Freak, and a, man. A Gafford came into the league as like a hundred and ninety five pound, yeah. you know, seven footer or maybe yeah. two twenty. But now he's grown. He's a full grown man now. And, you know, that's they're a really interesting duo. They Mm -hmm. don't give you anything different. Mm -hmm. They're they're repetitive pieces, Mm -hmm. but they're still they're still good. Yeah. Overall, I was just, you know, King struggles aside. Mm -hmm. uh, We talked about this a little bit yesterday. It feels like the Mavs are starting to come together a little bit in a way that I believe in their roster a little bit more now than I did pre-trade deadline. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. I do, too. PJ Washington. Um, I like him. Yeah. Uh, did the Kings get any help last night around the NBA? They certainly didn't help themselves. We'll take a look at the NBA scoreboard. 
and uh, why I am officially out on the Milwaukee Bucks. We'll talk about it next on ESPN 1320, Sacramento Sports Leader. Hey, dog, we're clear. Nice. Mm. How was your uh, chili verde con carne last night? Not great. Not great. Charlie, let me tell you how much I care about the Kings. Hartford Whalers. That's how much I care about the Kings. Come Uh-oh. on. Come on. <laughs> I'm wearing my Hartford Whalers I love that shirt you, today. Man. So, I love that for you. how are you doing? Hey, everybody say hi to Charlie. Say so. hi to this one. Amy, I have no idea what's going on with hi, Sasha all. still. How are you? There's I was Charlie. a little upset with the Kings last night. So. <laughs> Just a little. And then also Vladi Divac, because every time I see Luca play, I swear. Oh, boy. I, I, I'm, I'm never letting it go. <laughs> on, my, on my tombstone, it will say, I hate Vladi wow. because of Luca. Oh, come on. Come on, on my tombstone. Come on. On my tombstone. Come on. I don't let things go. That's funny. Oh, I'm going to. I just wanted. I got those spots in. Sorry, I didn't oh, get okay. those in for you. Okay, no worries. I had a, I had a complex day, and it wasn't complex for Marilyn. Trust me. <laughs> Love complex. <laughs> Sounded good, boys. Thanks, Charlie. We doing moves? We making moves? Well, I don't know why they haven't figured out that this keyboard over here. Uh, good question here. Charlie's the best. I hope I didn't chase uh, David Myers away. I don't think so. Especially by calling him Lane Myers' brother. Lane Myers, the better off dead. Yeah, no, it's you know, it's still, it's no, still, still, still sails right over, right over my dome. Wolseystats.com. Making spin moves, spin moves, spin moves. Still plugged in. Yes. Come on. Come on. Let's go. Uh Hey, facts. We should have done a Jamba run today. We probably should have. Um, I you want me to answer this right now? No. Uh, I mean, you can if you want. Yeah. Okay. So, Jack, we have this problem that the Kings aren't giving any updates on medical stuff. <laughs> um. So, I would like to tell you that you know, like when it says someone will be reevaluated in four to six weeks, or someone will be reevaluated in two weeks. First of all. We're supposed to be allowed to talk to the player at a certain point during that time, and that hasn't happened with Sasha or with Trey. Um, but like, we have no idea what's going on with Kevin Herter, and he has a dislocated shoulder. So I, I would like, like Trey Lyles, they said they'd reevaluate him in two weeks from a sprained MCL, and. I'm not sure what game it was that he got hurt. Uh, wait, let me think. Who did he get kicked by? <sighs> Draymond Green. No. Oh. It's a good guess, though. Yeah, let me... Oh, it was a Bucks. He got kicked by Brooke Lopez. Mm. Um, Ten seconds. He's missed a lot of games already. Not going to be eligible for All-NBA, unfortunately. You know, it's a good thing that I forgot to schedule my give me seven games of this tweet. (laughs) 
That's James and Kyle. We're the insiders. Um, yeah, I said yesterday before the game, uh-huh. I was like, hey, I'm going to just schedule a give me seven games of this tweet for like 9.06 p.m. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Boy, it's a good thing I didn't. No, it's very good. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no. Because that would that would have come out right about the time the Mavs pushed it to thirty nine points. Yeah, it was like thirty nine <laughs> going on forty. Like, oh no! But it got to a point about midway through the fourth quarter. Yeah, I was like, just don't lose by forty. Do not get forty pieced on TNT. Yeah, losing by thirty six, fine. Forty? Mm. Can't get forty pieced on national television. No, I mean it was close, really close. Yeah, shout yeah. out to Mason Jones. Yeah, there we go. Mason Jones caught fire, hit a couple of threes. Yeah, people were asking in the chat, like, some of the medical updates. Uh, first of all, the medical staff in Sacramento has been top-notch. Uh, what they've done the last couple of years has been stunning. The Kings are some of the fewest games missed. They've been absolutely spectacular. Um, but that that's not who tells us our medical report. So um, the fact that we don't know about Trey Lyles, it is what it is. But at this point... He, th- today is a two week mark from Trey Lyle spring his MCL. Uh, he'll be reevaluated in two weeks. It, today is the actual day. Uh, Sasha Vizinkov was four to six weeks. We're probably right at six weeks right now without an update. Um, and, that scares and, me. And, and then on top of that, we have uh, the Kevin Herter injury, which, you know, at this point, you know, Kevin is on the sidelines and, and it's been how long ago did Kevin get hurt? Um, well, which game did he get hurt in? Oh, it was Memphis. So, mm-hmm. uh, yeah, it's 18 uh, on the 18th. So, uh, we're talking about nine days. Um, we should probably know pretty soon whether he's going to have surgery or whether they're going to like, see how it reacts. But the fact that we don't know anything is, is weird. It, it's not something that's typical. Very, very odd for sure. Yeah. All right, let's take a look around the NBA scoreboard last night. Putting a pin in the Kings game momentarily. 132-96 is the final there. Um, the Warriors went down to Miami, and they beat the Heat 113-92. to uh, Don't want to dive super far into this one, but um, it turns out, James, that the Warriors are better when Steph Curry plays than when he doesn't. Yeah, I think that, thought. that's science. Mm-hmm. Yeah. yeah. I did some deep dive on the analytics. Yeah. and. Uh, if you didn't, if you didn't, if you not don't follow this, the Warriors lost to the Timberwolves in Minnesota on Sunday, and Steve Kerr kept Steph Curry out of the game while Minnesota just went on this run where they went from down five to like up eight or nine. Mm-hmm. And Kerr, after the game, basically said, "I don't think a couple more minutes of Steph Curry would have changed the outcome of this game." And <laughs> so, in a very similar spot against Miami, Steph comes in a little bit earlier and immediately. Uh, scores five of his own points to put the Warriors up double digits, and they eventually pull away for a 21-point win. Fascinating. Enthralling. He, he's really good. <laughs> yeah. It's just, again... He struggled to find a shot a little bit lately, though. Yeah, but they're his not... His legs a, are getting tired. They're just not a team that's built to... No, they're just not... No. ...to succeed at no. this point. And, no. and it's like, it's a one-man band. Yeah. And that's yep. it. Like, the bar The bar for the supporting cast in 2017 was so low. They had Jonas Jurebko getting finals minutes, right? Mm. Like that that's that's where the bar was. Well, it's at the point now where Draymond Green is less effective, Clay Thompson less effective, Steph Curry still very good, but not as good as he was in 2017, not as as good as he was 7 yep. years ago. And they're still trying it's like they're still trying to build these rosters that uh the the they're not clearing the necessary bar. And they're just you see it. They're they're about a five hundred team. Like that's just what it is. No, that's that's what they are. Yeah. And you know the fact that you know you have Andrew Wiggins who gets paid very well and is twenty eight years old and decided he's not going to be uh, anywhere near elite mm-hmm. at anything anymore. Mm-hmm. It, it's jarring. Yeah, like that's it, that's a problem. You know, they are uh, my buddy Sam uh, Isfandiari from the Light Years podcast said they go as Andrew Wiggins goes, mm-hmm. and that's why they're a five hundred team. <laughs> that's just a huge problem. If you're like, hey, hopefully Andrew Wiggins shows up tonight. Can you imagine if the Kings are like, hey, hopefully Harrison Barnes gives us 25 tonight. He'd be cooked. Yeah. So anyways, um, 
the Lakers somehow beat the Bucks 128, 124 in double OT. The Bucks were up like 20 in the fourth quarter. I don't yeah. know if it was 20. They were up a lot, though. They just had full control of that game. And I'm no LeBron, out, dude. No LeBron. No LeBron. Yeah. Austin Reeves had a triple double. Anthony Davis had like 26 rebounds. They had ev- like almost every single player on their in their starting five had a double double. Yeah. And then I, Austin Reeves with the triple double. I'm just out on Milwaukee, bro. The okay. vibes are terrible. Mm-hmm. I love Dame. I love Giannis. I think Burke Lopez and Pat Connaughton. Good, good contributors. Malik Beasley is one of the best shooters in the league. I'm just out. The vibes are so bad in Milwaukee. They okay. got ousted by an eight seed last year. A Heat team that had to win through the play-in and lost a play-in game before getting in. Beat them in a in a playoff series. Yeah. And now, now this isn't like coming back with a vengeance. It's like they're still 70 plus games in trying to figure it out with Dame. I'm I don't, I'm not buying it. You know, they're still good though. They're good. They're de- they're definitely a good team. They're still the number two seed in the East. I mean, yeah, no, for sure. Eleven games back, the number two seed is eleven <laughs> games back of number one in we've the been, East. We've been doing a lot of stuff with like net rating and stuff lately. What in the world? Just going through and looking where the Kings you know that since the All Star break they've done this, since March they've done this. Over the last two weeks they've done this. Every single one of those net ratings, the Celtics are at the top by a massive margin. Okay, yeah. So point differential, just. Just straight up point Pure differential. Point. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The Celtics are at eleven a plus eleven point five per game. Per game. The Knicks, oh who are the God. four seed, are a plus four point three, and they're the closest. <laughs> the closest team to them has a a point differential of seven point two points less in differential. That is wild. Yeah. The difference between and this is on on basketball reference, so their their offensive, defensive, and net ratings aren't exactly the same. Uh, offensive rating points per one hundred possessions estimated. Defensive rating points allowed per one hundred possessions estimated. Net rating, the difference between those two yep. numbers. The space between Boston and Oklahoma City, who's number two in net rating for the season according to Basketball Reference, is four point four points. Mm. that's the same as the space between Oklahoma City and Phoenix at number 10. Oh, wow. So the one the one to two distance is the same as the two to 10 difference. Yeah. That is just bananas. Boston they're, is so good. They're really good. We're just almost ignoring the fact that they're like, they are the title contending. Like it, it's them and Denver, but I even have them well above Denver. They have to show that they can Right. It. They're in this they're in, they're the 49ers of the NBA right now. Yeah. Like great, you have the best roster in the league. Cool. You've had it a couple of times here. You lost a finals, you had no business losing. Yep. Uh, what can you do can you figure it out now? Like uh, so I I just don't I'm not I I'm with you. They are the title contender in the East for me. Oh yeah. But I got to see it first. Yep. I can't, I'm still I'm still waiting see mo. Can you dribble when the game is on the line? I don't know. That's all. That's it. Let's figure that out. Some basics. Uh, and then the Thunder beat the Pelicans. Really fun game there. Uh, 119, 112. The Thunder top New Orleans. 24 from Shea Gildas Alexander. 25 from Chet Holmgren. And 26 from Jalen Williams from J Dub. Yeah, they're pretty good. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, New Orleans. That last night was where New Orleans missed Brandon Ingram. Yeah. Just not having that additional oomph to get over the hump. They had this big comeback. Uh, they actually took the lead at one point in the fourth quarter, and then the Thunder just kind of overwhelmed them. Mm. But, um, I still think I'd rather see Oklahoma City than New Orleans in a playoff series. Oh, yeah. yeah. Oh, no. If, if you're the king. Oklahoma, I'm a big believer in Oklahoma City, too. I mean, it just depends on who you are. Yeah. Like, if you're I, the I, Kings, <laughs> yes, I would want to see any team see except New Orleans. Oklahoma City over New Orleans. Yeah. yeah. And the Kings still have a game against New Orleans uh, to finish this thing out. And Boston. Hmm. And the Knicks. It's a tough one down the stretch. All right. Um, it's NFL mock draft season. We'll talk about that. And then I have a really fun game to play with you, James, about Uh-oh. the Kings home and road record. We'll do that next on ESPN 1320 Sacramento Sports Center. Clear. Clear. What's going on, everybody? I'm going to pull a Kenny Caraway and eat a snack while we 
while we sit there and here and have a conversation. Anyone have any questions? The cameras yesterday didn't show Sasha at the arena. Uh, you know, Emmy, I haven't seen Sasha, but that doesn't mean he's not there. Um, like I remember seeing Kevin Herter on the sidelines, um, not last game, but the game before, and I'm I'm sure he was there last night as well. That's a good question. I am confused how a player is questionable for a week and doesn't play. Mm. Steven asks, who sits in uh, sits courtside Kings beat uh, gear? Uh, there are two, well, one guy I went to high school with, kind of grew up with, uh, him and his brother and one of their friends have those seats down there. Well, it's one guy's seats who has a business in, in Grass Valley that's very successful. Uh, he has those courtside seats that are right underneath the basket. And so I do know those guys. I actually, they're the ones that had the crazy Christmas sweaters with Mike Brown's face on them. Um, they brought me one of those too. I have one of those at home. Um, Sun Devils. I, I, I'm not watching Ramsey. I'm not watching baseball right now. So I don't know. You got me. Whoever bought it, because that's kind of what baseball's become. Oh. Okay. So he was there. Uh, of this, okay. Of this group, who is my favorite to cover? I don't know. Like I'm kind of partial to De'Aaron because I've covered De'Aaron since he was a kid. Oh, I forgot to cut that audio. You forgot to what? Cut the De'Aaron audio from last night. Where he, did you cut it with the bleeps? No, I forgot to cut it entirely. Okay. So yeah, De'Aaron had a moment last night and. No, we're going to talk about it on air. Okay. Talking about it now. All right. The NFL mock draft thing can wait until literally the day before the draft. Okay. I also, I, I, I dig Malik. Malik is a lot of fun to cover. It's always a laugh. I'm not bringing sneaks, snacks to the watch party. Who's coming to sit in, uh, who's coming to the watch party on Saturday? Saturday. We're players. Player okay. Sports Pub. Yeah, you guys need to show up. Roll up. Sass, I... Here's the deal. Everybody needs to pull up because we're trying to convince people to give us more hours of showtime. And so if everybody here pulls up even for a little bit that shows the uh, powers that be here that like, Oh, they would benefit from having more hours of showtime. Mm -hmm. Ergo. Uh, I don't want to say the future of this program is up to you guys, but no pressure. There you go. Yeah. Uh, Russell, I think it's three. We're doing three thirty to six thirty at uh, players. Three o'clock. Three o'clock. Three o'clock. Then we're pulling up. Okay. Thirty seconds. All right. Did they call me, dog? That's right. Uh, got that. How much time do we have left? Ten seconds. Oh. <laughs> Here we go. Now, back to the Insiders with James Ham and Kyle Madsen. Brought to you by Jiffy Lube on ESPN 1320. Hey. We'll treat for the for the <laughs> He's James over there. He's over yonder. I'm Kyle. I'm right here. Uh, Saturday, March 30th. Well, that, we got a couple 
of Big Watch Party, sponsored by Michelob Ultra Superior Light Beer. The first one is tomorrow. We will see you out at uh, Bar West, 2724 J Street in Midtown. That is for a Sweet 16 Watch Party. D'Lo will be there. Casey will be there. Jesse is going to be in the building. That's right. The great Jesse Toppy will be in the building. Uh, that is tomorrow, Thursday, March 28th, 4 o'clock, Bar West, 2724 J Street in Midtown. Uh, see everybody out there for uh, some Sweet 16 action. And then Saturday, it's me and James. We're going to be out at Player Sports Pub and Grill. That's at 4060 Sunrise Boulevard in Fair Oaks. That'll be an Elite 8 watch party. Um, hopefully my national champion is still in by then. So I have a rooting interest. All right. I can't wait. I still have my champion. I I, I chose Purdue. All right. Great. Big Zach E.D. guy? Well, he's a big dude. <laughs> he's enormous. He's a gigantic <laughs> man. No idea if he'll be able to play in the NBA, but man, he's a dominant college player. That's right. And uh, another quick reminder, tonight, huge game for the Kings when Phoenix visits Denver. Mm. Uh, every Kings fan should be a Nuggets fan tonight. And we have that game for you right here on ESPN 1320, 6.30 p.m. Coverage begins on this very radio station. Should we do a player of the game for last night? Yeah, we should. Probably should. Uh, Jiffy Lube, who sponsors the show, our wonderful sponsor, uh, has given us $100 gift certificates to give away after every single Kings game. And then they said, hey, that's not enough. Here's some Kings jerseys. Give these away as well. So uh, when you enter this keyword that we're about to give you, you will be entered to win a $100 Jiffy Lube gift certificate. It will also be entered to win a Sacramento Kings jersey. So enter like once. It's good. good. Enter once for you. You just enter once. You're entered for both. Okay. Get it. Won't, won't be fooled again. Uh, ESPN 1320.com is the website. Click on the Jiffy Lube fast break contest page. It's right there at the front. You cannot miss it. And you're going to enter the code word flush it. Two words. Flush it. Flush it. I think every single person who spoke Last night, podium, locker room, otherwise, said the words flush it. That's right. That's what the Kings are going to try and do. And uh, that is our player of the game. Flush it. F-L-U-S-H space I-T. I-T. It. <laughs> it. <laughs> uh, man, speaking of post game, De'Aaron Fox yesterday. Look, I don't. if you haven't seen the clip, uh, at, at Matt George posted it on, I posted on it. Twitter. James, you posted it. Um, it in its entirety. Every, I, yeah, you posted the whole thing. That's it. Um, so the whole the whole press or the whole press conference is is up. Uh, James underscore ham NBA. Uh, subscribe to the Kingsbeat Kingsbeat dot com and the Kingsbeat podcast wherever you get your podcast. Mm -hmm. um, I'm sure you guys will be discussing this. So Darren more or less got got asked by Jason Anderson and Sacramento B. Um, hey. It seems like you've been coming up here more after losses. It's like, oh my God. First of all, but it seems like you've been coming up here more after losses. Is that something that you've like taken it upon yourself to kind of be more of a of a vocal leader for this team? And Darren was like, No. That I don't I don't get anything out of this. I don't enjoy doing this. Uh my teammates don't care that I do this. A little more cover, colorful language than that. Um, I get asked to come out here by the PR staff and I'll come out here and I'll talk to you. That's right. And honestly, like, I get it. I don't, I, I saw some people online taking that as this, like, huge negative thing toward De'Aaron. And I don't know how you feel about this. You cover the, the team on a, on a daily basis. I certainly don't. Um, I appreciate the, well, I appreciate candor all the time. Mm -hmm. But I also completely understand what he's saying. The Kings season is not being altered by what he says post game. There's not a bunch of guys in the locker room going, wow, look at De'Aaron going out there to talk to the media after that. Wow. You know what? I'm so inspired right now. Mm -hmm. So what's going on? He's going out. He's going to answer some questions and then he's going to go about his day. Okay. So I, I think this always comes back to, it's not even like accountability within the locker room. Mm -hmm. It's about accountability to your fans and sure to be out in front of the media when something bad happens. Mm -hmm. So I agree with him. The fan, the like his teammates don't care. Mm -hmm. 
they do because they care that they didn't have to go do it. <laughs> right, right. Right. They didn't have to be the one that goes out there and, and gets asked questions yeah. after getting thumped. Which sounds awful, by the way. It's not. It, it The whole process is really weird and awkward. And like, to be honest, at, like, when it was in the when used to be that we would get a coach 10 minutes after a game, you get a coach. We'd all like wherever the coach wanted to do their post game. We all like right, right. huddle around the coach. Right. And he does his post game. And as soon as that's over, the locker room's open and we all rush to the locker room to go get guys. Mm -hmm. That's even more fresh because this team specifically, they do more like body maintenance and, and care than any yeah. team that I've ever seen. Mm -hmm. Like Demonis Savonis the other night, it took him two hours to get to the podium after he set the record. And we waited and waited. Now, look, he was hit in the head like 14 times mm -hmm. and, and he even had to have something closed up on his face. Mm -hmm. Um, not with stitches, but something close to it. Um, like this team like takes their time and there is no mad rush to the locker room. That's not what the NBA does anymore in post COVID, mm -hmm. but it, there isn't a lot of joy in going and talking about how you just got your, your butt kicked. There's yeah. not. A and I get it. But at the same time, there are moments where De'Aaron Fox does open up and is really good. And those are the moments mm -hmm. where you see it. And you have to just keep pulling. Mm -hmm. It's like, oh, we've got we've got that De'Aaron tonight. So I don't blame him for not enjoying it because realistically, it's a lot of the same questions. Yeah, that he gets asked again and, and again, everything and, and again, and everything comes down to like, hey, you guys got smoked tonight. What the hell happened? Yeah, and I think sometimes it's our job to to have something to talk about and extracting all these things from the game. And as a player, you're probably like, yeah, just a bad game. We'll go get the next one. Yeah. And that's the extent of it. There's, they're not thinking as deeply about it as we are. And as we, as we are trying to, well, so that I, I, to I totally get what he's, what he's saying. And I don't, I don't think it, I, I don't know. We have this loud thing that's happening with us as media members too. And that is the other element that is social media and fans. Right. Some players, a, a lot of players walk in scrolling on their phone and you know exactly what they're doing. Mm -hmm. They're not looking so much at fan reaction mm -hmm. as they are at what some of us in that room have said. Mm -hmm. And and maybe I'm wrong. Maybe there there are players who are just like, no. but I mean, I can tell you there are players on the current roster who have blocked me and all of my media friends. Mm -hmm. They They have blocked us on social media. And I think that that's a good thing because they're not seeing <laughs> everything. Sure. But it's also like I, I'm not sitting there dragging a player all game long. Mm -mm. That's not my job. If a player miss, if like I have to be fair, if sure, if, if a player doesn't play well, you're going to say so. Well, that. But if Malik Monk is 0 for 7 from the field to start a game, I have to say, hey, he's 0 for 7. And the reason why I do that is because I said it about De'Aaron Fox the game before, mm -hmm. or I said it about Demonis Sabonis, or mm -hmm. I said it about someone else. So you have to be fair and you have to be balanced. It's, it's an observation. It's not an opinion. It, it's not. It's not. And some people want to pile on and they want to say this or that. That's not at all what I'm doing. I'm mm -hmm. just making like tracking what's happening during the game. Yeah. Uh, but for Fox to walk in there and say, you know, like, I, I don't get any joy out of this. I get it. I do. I'm, I no, don't think uh, I would. No. Can he, you imagine if after every single, every single show, every single thing you did at your job after every single day, you had your long day at work. Yep. And I know they played basketball. I know this is not strenuous, uh, you know, backbreaking labor they're necessarily doing, but it's still, it's hard. Like it is a hard job yeah. that takes so much of their time. And all a guy like De'Aaron wants to do is go home to his family. But hey, before he does that, I got to come out here and got to talk about all this stuff that I'm going to talk about with coaches and teammates later. Yeah. Like, ugh. <laughs> this over with no i, I mean dude i get it man. the one thing is he's contractually obligated by the league yeah yeah no doubt. that's number one number no two he, he makes like 32 million dollars a year yeah. and i'm not just like throwing out oh he makes so much money yeah it's part of the job no no, no doubt but just that's like the thing. it's part of is my it, job but, do you think i wanted to go in there and ask questions after that game <laughs> no but he also but it's not like he said he said i'm done doing this he's just like no i don't i'm not volunteering to do it when somebody asks me i'll come do it and well yeah well, it's that like, and he yeah, wasn't also sense. like, you're a bad person. You're a bad person. That's a stupid question. You're cool. You're, you're this is you lame. <laughs> I am not down with any of this. Yeah, yeah. That's not what he did. He was just, yeah. he was honest. And that's to me, 
what deer and fox has always been yes he's been brutally honest which at some point it it, it has cost him right you know i would so much rather and we gotta go here but i would i would so much rather he give the answer he gave it's like hey here's my candid response i don't give a damn dude yeah i don't like doing this my teammates don't care that i do it and if i never had to do this again it wouldn't change my life no nope, totally and i so much rather that than yeah you know it's important to to be a be a, to be out front and be a be a strong leader for for this team. I think that's a responsibility I take on myself and blah blah. blah. Like, like uh, I, if that's not what he thinks, then I'd so much rather get the real answer. Yeah, I thought it was great. Shout out to De'Aaron Fox. Anyways, uh, maybe we'll come on the show someday. I'm with you. <laughs> hey, we know you don't like press card. How do you feel about radio interviews? No. Um, what are we gonna? Oh, I want to talk about the Kings' home and road schedule. And have a fun game to play with you, James, and you, the listener. Next on ESPN 1320. Clear. Um, I don't know if it was the wrong time to ask that question, Spencer. But I just don't know. I don't know what there's, answer you're looking for. Well, there's a... There's a I don't know. I'm just going to say it. There's a <clears throat> context to this of Keon Ellis being the guy early in the season who would come out after these kind of losses. Well, and the bigger issue there was it twice they, they brought out Keon mm -hmm. by himself Yeah, when you're supposed to have two. Yes. And like twice they did it. Yes. They were just they that were, was awkward. And there were multiple times during the year where it's like, boy, I would love to talk to one of this team's stars after that game. And that just wasn't there. Yeah. And that that to me was the context of that question. Was like, hey, De'Aaron's out after almost I think every game I've been there this year, mm -hmm. aside from the one key on one, I think every game I've been to, he's he's come out and talked. That is, I mean, I don't want to get too deep in the weeds here because sure, sure, sure. there's too much. No, I know like, there's a, but I know there's, there's reasons why all, all of, of this is happening. Yeah. There's, there's like, it has not been a, like we've dipped and ducked and dodged around it all day long, <laughs> whether it's the injury, two and a half, the injury report, or whether it's the De'Aaron Fox situation last night. It's very specific. Players should be asked. I mean, every player by league rules, if, if we ask as media for them to come to the podium, mm -hmm. they should come to the podium mm -hmm. that, I mean, there there's two, it's a league mandated thing. You get two players and a coach and then the sure. locker room, everyone should be in the locker room. They're not, they all dip out as soon as they can. And that's part of the issue that I was trying to explain earlier. We now get two players and then the coach at the podium. And that's mm -hmm. like 35 minutes. Yeah. And that's if they come right out. And a lot of times they don't, by the time we get to the locker room, like 95% of these dudes have grabbed their stuff and, and left. That's what did not used to happen. It used to be as soon as the game's over, 10 minutes later, you get a coach. You talk to the coach for about eight minutes. You sprint to the locker room. You're 18 minutes after the game. That's where NBC used to bring a camera in, and I would be asking questions of players in the locker room that's going straight to TV and all that. That era is dead. Yep. It just is. Yep. So. Bottom line is, though, Media availability isn't something that De'Aaron Fox is thinking about. No, <laughs> no. Um, I, I think it's interesting though too because there are times where he wants to make sure that he's the one talking, and then other times where he doesn't care. So, I mean, I, I get it. I've I've always enjoyed his candid responses and anytime he starts talking starts using profanity, it makes me laugh. I think Tom L got know. that last night. Like we talk that I use profanity all day long at like all day long. But not on the show. That's not what we do on the show. And even on the podcast, I don't really but you get me off the record and mm -hmm. It's jarring for some people. I I think even like Tom was caught off guard by that last night. Like, whoa. Like, oh yeah. Sorry. 
Most media people do. You just lost. <laughs> I just watched a basketball game where the team you cover lost by, well, we're down by 39 at one point. So. Yeah, I try and curb it for sure, especially because of this job. I also used to, when I did not host a show and I just produced, I would put little jokes and stuff in the rundown all the time. And now I don't because I'm afraid that it'll put me in the wrong brain space. To... Oh, really? Because I, on occasion, put profanity in it. Now, back to the Insiders with James Ham and Kyle Madsen, brought to you by Jiffy Lube on ESPN 1320. 916-909-1320. 916-909-1320. 1320-1320. That is the Farmer's Dog Talk Line. Farmer's Dog, a healthy life starts with healthy food. I admit you, New Jersey, he was complaining at me on Twitter yesterday. Yep that our phones were busy all day because I had forgotten to unlock them. <laughs> and I said, you know what, Mitch, I will unlock them just for you. So they're unlocked. Oh. They've been unlocked all show. Do we have any idea how it works? Because I don't. Yeah, no, I got I, I got it. I just, uh, I have this up and I can throw people on air. You won't even get screened. So yeah, 916-909-1320. Uh, I want to play a game with you, James. Okay. The Kings are 21 and 14 at Golden One Center following last night's loss to Dallas. Mm -hmm. That means they have two, four, they have six home games left. Okay. okay. They are 21 and 16 on the road. Mm -hmm. They have four road games left. My question to you is will the Sacramento Kings finish with a better home or road record? And I'm going to run through every game with you. Okay. And. We'll decide right now. Like, we recommend they still play the games just in case. All right, Sacramento, 21 and 14 at Golden One Center. Their next home game is against the Dallas Mavericks. They have the Dallas Mavericks. After that, they have the Utah Jazz. They also have the Clippers, the Pelicans, the Suns, and Portland. How many games are they going to win? Yeah, yeah, yeah. We're doing records. I think they're going to win 20. So, 20. How many games? Six total? There, there's six total, yeah. I think they're going to go four and two. I have, the exact, I have the exact same thing down. I think they get wins over Dallas and Utah. I think they lose to the Clippers and lose to the Pelicans, but I think they beat Phoenix and Portland, and they finish with 25 home wins. Okay. Um, that would put them at 25 and 16. On the road, they have the New York Knicks, the Boston Celtics. On the worst back-to-back -back of all time. Yeah, they go they go New York Knicks, Boston Celtics back-to-back, -back, then day off, then back to Brooklyn to play the Nets. Okay. It just doesn't that doesn't make a ton of sense to me. Um I've got I've got them going one and three on the road. To close the year. Who's the fourth? The, the Thunder. Oh, the Thunder. No, I'm gonna I'm gonna Knicks, go Celtics Nets Thunder. I'm gonna go two and two. One, two and two, that gives them twenty three. Right. Twenty five that you have them at twenty five and sixteen at home and twenty three and eighteen on the road. The twenty three and eighteen on the road's great. Okay, so that's forty eight wins. Yeah. Okay. You'll take that you'll take twenty three and eighteen on the road every single year. Yeah, what were they last year? Last season? I wanna say that they were better than that. Were they? Um 23 and 18. Maybe they were 23 and 18 as well last year. Yeah, to me, I, the fact that this team is not good at home, it it really is a shame. It's baffling, dude. It's so weird. I don't get it. I can look. I've got it right now. Um, it, it's very frustrating because, you know, last year they were 23 and, eight, and 18 at home. They were 25 and 16 on the road. And they're going to, looks like they might flip-flop that this year. Well, you have them flip-flopping that exactly. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> and this is, yeah. the funny thing is, I, I told everybody at the beginning of the season, there's two ways this team gets better. Number one, the ability to improve on the defensive end is just like, it's sitting there because you can't get any worse. I guess the Indiana Pacers will prove that you can't. And <laughs> I think the Atlanta Hawks can also prove that you can get worse. And, mm -hmm. But really, this team could not get any worse than they were last year. Mm-mm. And then the other way was to win more games at home. And, you know, I've, I've said this a bunch of times, but 
Kings fans are incredible. They're like the fact that they show up and they're having a great time and they're selling out every single game, even though ticket prices have gone through the roof, mm -hmm. they're selling out every single game. Like that is amazing. And the fact that the team can't ride the wave and come away with more wins. I don't know. I like to me, I, it's something that perplexed Alvin Gentry, like to no end. He's like, mm -hmm. how could we lose by 40 at home? Like he was like, your family is here. Mm -hmm. How is that possible that you're doing this in front of people that you know? <laughs> like all of you give, <laughs> gave, you gave tickets to like your barber who's yeah. sitting in the stands and then you lose by 40. So I get it. I, I don't understand because for whatever reason, it, it doesn't make any sense. This team should be better at home. And they were better like in the 2000s, the early mm -hmm. 2000s. Yeah, of course. They're one of the best home teams that you're, you're ever going to see. Yeah. But the fact that they can't win more than that they might, might win 25 yeah. at home, 25 and 16. It's baffling. And 28, 30. That's where this team should have been. If that's, know. if, if you want to be like a, a 50 plus one team, that's where you have to be. Yeah. I don't get it. Hey, we got somebody on the farmer's dog talk line. Hey, you're on, uh, you're on the air. What's your name? Where are you calling from? How you doing today? Mr. Madsen, Mr. Hems is Javier from Vacaville. Hav, what's up, bro? How are you going on? Man, just, uh, you know, you know, I'm very thorough with my analysis and I always give my kudos to James Ham. Best listen and best follow for Kings coverage um, on the best Sacramento radio station there is. But I just want to have a clear understanding of you seen last night, Kessler Edwards, granted he played four minutes, give or take. He missed three layups at the rim, shred mm -hmm. the cup. And you see the guys that they put in in garbage time. With the injuries to, you know, Kevin Herter, Trey Lyles with the sprint MCL, I, I don't understand why is a guy like Montez Connor Anderson not on the roster? And I'm not I know there's a plethora of free agents, but I'm saying he's so familiar with the system. Mm -hmm. You're telling me in a seven game playoff series that a guy like him that can play defensively in the on the perimeter as well as in the interior couldn't help us when we're playing a nine man rotation. And Duarte had a horrible game last night. We had Davion, Monk, Duarte, and Alex Lynn. Granted, nine man is not a small rotation. But I'm just, I'm just plethora. I'm just, I have a plethora of just dismay, plethora dismay rather of why they don't, why they didn't bring him back because please feel more comfortable with him or Kobe Jones, him or yeah. Kester Edwards, him or the other gentleman with the go Mohawk. Second thing <laughs> is, do you feel like PJ Washington and the Daniel Gafford lack of interest on the Kings part showed why they can potentially lose the plane and or the first round to a team like the Mavericks because those guys made a significant difference last night. All right. Thanks, Hoff. Appreciate the call. Um, I can take the Kessler I, thing really quick. Yeah, go ahead. Okay, so the Kessler thing is is pretty basic. You traded for a, let's see, what is he, 21-year-old kid? Uh-huh. And you spent some time trying to develop him. Yeah. And not only that, but what he did in the offseason to re- configure his body and to get bigger and mm -hmm. stronger and everything that they do, everything that they ask him to do, he does. Yeah. Um, you can't just give up, especially if you're a team that traded away your first round pick the last two seasons and won't have one again this year. If you make the playoffs, Yeah. like you do have to invest somewhat in young guys like this. And we keep talking about the Kings need to find more guys who are six foot eight with a seven foot three wingspan. Sure. It, it's right there. It's Kessler Edwards. Yeah. And you have to invest a little bit to see what happens with that player. If it doesn't happen, it doesn't happen. Juan Toscano Anderson, like he's not on another NBA roster. Like I, I would like no. to tell you, I mean, he brings energy. He's a good leader, but he also, he's not playing in a rotation. At least he shouldn't be playing in a rotation for the Kings. Yeah. I'm, I'm with you. I understand the idea of having him as depth and somebody who knows the system and can yeah. go out and play. But I, I, at this point, like you said, if they're they're gonna bet on Chris Duarte, the over over somebody like, like JTA is thirty, yeah, uh, and yeah. he's uh, his his best contributions or his his biggest contributions in the NBA were on a terrible Warriors team in nineteen twenty and a play in exit Warriors team in twenty twenty one. Like he's just not. I, I love the guy, mm -hmm. a huge fan of his. But if he if your team is in a spot where you're going, man, we could have really used JTA tonight. Yeah, you have way way bigger problems than whatever JTA would solve. Yeah, and, and the problem that you have too is that it's 
these these players aren't going to play anyways. Yeah. For the most part, they're going to play in in games like last night. Yeah. And that's about it. Yep. So. Yeah. That's it. All that's right. it. What was his other question? I forget. I forget as well. It was the JTA thing. And. Huh. I can't remember. I can't remember either. He is thorough in his, in his analysis. Yeah, for sure. All right. Uh, hey, you're on the Farmer's Dog Talk line. What's your name? Where are you calling from? Hey, this is RJ from the Grove. RJ, the what's up, Grove. buddy? What's going on? Good, man. What's going on? Hey, you guys are doing this without calling screeners. That's that's pretty ballsy on your part. I'm just gonna say. <laughs> yeah, bro. I got a um, dump button right here, too. So watch out. <laughs> okay. No, I'm all good, brother. Hey, I love what you're saying about uh, De'Aaron going to the podium. You know, as fans, as social media people, we, uh, you know, we want answers. What happened? How'd you play so poorly? And those poor guys are like, I got 82 games. I mean, I, we're not going to win every one. Yeah. I guarantee you we're trying and we're paid professional athletes. that love the sport, but we're not going to get uh, everyone out. And, you know, we're moving on to Friday. And I know you guys want to overanalyze paralysis, but it is funny. It's a dynamic in every sports thing with the way, media is and fans are these days and the access to these athletes yeah especially right after a game i know i have a bad day at work i don't want to talk to anyone i want to go have a beer and sit in the corner and yeah, i don't exactly. need my wife saying hey wh- what happened today you didn't close that deal <laughs> um and, but hey one other thing on, on social media i don't know if you guys seen this tweet someone really went after fox's wife on being yeah. a little heavy did you guys see that and they told her to get on a treadmill or something that's so it, trash. Yeah, I, I it didn't was see that. Total that's, trash. Yeah, that's super trash. Yeah. Hey, thanks for the call, John. Appreciate you. Hey, but see you guys. Yeah, that's not okay. Um, I, I did see it, and actually, to be honest with you, I blocked the guy when I saw it yesterday. Good. And I'm like, look, I, I don't want that stuff anywhere my, near my timeline. I, when people say, "Oh, did you see this?" Then it ends up in my timeline, and yeah. I don't want that stuff in my yeah. timeline. So I blocked the guy. Um, I think he's been reported as well. And then Rose like popped off. She literally said, hey, like, look, I'm eight months pregnant in that picture. I, I watched this unfold this morning. She's like, I, he's like, so whatever, dude. And hey, she also said something like, I'm going to eat. Like, I, I, that, I'm, you know, it is what it is. Like, I'm sure. Yeah. No, that's just one. Leave players. What? Don't talk to. Yeah, don't people. do that. Don't be mean. Yeah. Why do you? Why are you mean? I don't understand. Leave. If you want to say, hey, player did, did, would love better effort next time or whatever whatever you you're gonna t- okay yeah, i yeah. think that's a, not my favorite thing but whatever going after family members and stuff is yeah. um the lowest level of trash yeah absolutely horrible. Leave, leave leave people leave people alone. the other thing that uh our first caller brought up uh javier um was they also open us out yeah they did Thanks, it, it was about why the kings didn't go out and pick up Gav- uh gafford or oh yes or pj right. washington it's actually right. it's a good question because I agree. like look the kings have had uh like interest in pj washington in the past and i, I think you got to a point with pj where you're like okay i kind of get who he is and he realistically is just very similar to harrison barnes he's just a younger version mm-hmm. and then he got pay- paid paid mm-hmm. <clears throat> like look they gave up a bunch of stuff to get him yeah they did they gave up grant williams they gave up Seth Curry in two seconds. Yeah, Seth Curry, two seconds, right? The Kings don't ha- didn't have that to give up. And then with Gafford, what they gave up were Sean Holmes and a first, right? Um, they they did actually give up stuff to uh to go get these uh to get those players. And whether the Kings had enough money or not to go get them, I- I'm not sure that Daniel Gafford gives you a oh. m- much more than what you're gonna get from Alex Lynn on I'm sorry. this team. I'm sorry, I got this wrong. They traded the Mavs, traded Grant Williams, Seth Curry, and a top two protected first in 2027. Oh, not two seconds. Oh, so they got a, a first round pick for, yes. for, yeah, yeah, PJ Watch. A first round pick, a, and two rotation guys. Yeah, I'm, I'm not in on that deal at all. That's so you're basically Kevin Herter, Davion, and a top two protected pick in 2027. Yeah. No, thanks. I, no, I'm not giving up for not yes. for PJ Washington. I, and and like, look, I, I like PJ Washington. He actually, there was a point where he was a very, very good shot blocker as well. Well, mm-hmm. it's not kind of who he is anymore. Yeah. And he tore up the Kings a couple of years ago, like mm-hmm. something horrific. I just don't like it's, <laughs> he's a good player. Yeah. But where the Kings are right now, to me, to get to the next 
tier of where we want to see them go, mm-hmm. they need more than a PJ Washington. And when you add PJ Washington, you're subtracting something via the trade. And I think the net is pretty neutral there. And you're paying him a, a lot. Yeah. And yeah. you're not getting longer. You're not getting more athletic. You're yeah, not. I just I, I think it's a pretty lateral. It is. Move. I mean, it might be lateral. And it, I mean, you're going to get younger at mm-hmm. the position. So maybe that's something that would make sense. But overall, I, I'm not in. I'm not in on it. What was the Daniel Gafford trade? Uh, Rashawn Holmes and I believe a first round pick. So salary filler and a first. Yeah. Mm. I know a lot of people are like, oh man, the, the wizards, yeah, I mean the, the Mavericks were able to get uh Daniel Gafford for Rashawn Holmes. It's the, it's, it's the like, thunders 2024 first round pick. Yeah, no, no. They got a first round pick as well yeah, in that man. deal. Yeah. Yeah. So, no, well, I, I get what, uh, what everyone out there is saying, but, um, it's it's not that big of a deal. Like those guys, realistically, on the Kings might not be as important as they are on what yeah, we're seeing. Yeah, from Dallas, Dallas Dallas needed players who could knock down threes and play a little bit of defense. Yeah, and catch lobs from from Luca and Kyrie. I don't I don't know that the fit would have been exactly the same. Yep. Uh, with the Sacramento Kings, Kenny Caraway in the building for the handoff. Uh, Kenny, we were just talking. Uh, Javier and Bacchio gave us a, gave us a buzz on the Farmer's Dog Talk line. Uh, healthy life starts with healthy food. Shout out Javier. We, yep. Um, he basically said, Hey, d- should, or can we revisit why the Kings didn't go get Daniel Gafford and PJ Washington? And we we're just kind of talking like, yeah, they're, they're, they're good players and they're helping Dallas for sure. But when you look at what they gave up, I don't think they make the Kings significantly better than what we, what we're looking at right now. No. And I, I've said a number of different times, um, with the Kings, you've got one move to make. Make it your best move. You know what I'm saying? You've got yeah. one, like with the assets you have and the contracts and the draft picks and all this other stuff, you got one move to make. Yep. And I'm not making that for Daniel Gafford or P.J. Washington. You know what I'm saying? It's going to be for somebody that I feel can help elevate this uh, th- this franchise to a championship level. Yeah. So, like, th- that's the way I'm looking at the way the Kings are, are situated right now. Um, Daniel Gafford would love to have him. He's he's been great for Dallas. Um, PJ Washington has done really well as well. So, you know, yeah, I'd like to have him on the team, but um, I don't I don't think I don't think what was needed to get them uh, is what the Kings have right now. I agree. Yeah, that and I, I would just point out too, like Gafford would play 13 minutes a game on the Kings. Yeah, like that's it. He's going to back up one of the best players in the NBA. Yeah. Well, and then what's Alex Len going to do, you know? Yeah. At Javel. Kind of like Alex Len, man. Alex Len is playing, and playing really well. He's played fine. Yeah. He's played he's played perfectly fine since he's been getting consistent consistent rotation minutes. It's been good. It's been fine, yeah. Yeah. What did you think of last night? Tough Just overall. One, man. Tough one. I mean, you know, number one, Dallas, uh, I think by the end of the third quarter, they had like 18 threes, maybe 16, 17, yeah, 18 threes. They couldn't miss. Yeah. It's gonna be tough to it's gonna be tough to beat a team that, that that's shooting that way, and then especially when you're following that up with, I think at that time they had like six threes, the Kings. Mm-hmm. So, you know, it's just one of those things. They hit a bunch of a uh, bunch of shots. Kyrie was doing his thing. Um, nobody for the Kings could really get cooking. It was, it was one of those games. That was one of the first times in a long time I've seen them like not play well, the Kings. Yeah, but um, it happens. Yeah. It happens. I know a lot of people, you know, look at this as an, an indictment on what's going to happen for the rest of the season and where they are. It's a game, man. And Dallas yeah. came. They played really, really well. Mm-hmm. The Kings didn't play well. See you on Friday. Yeah, you're in a spot where that doesn't ruin anything. Like you go in on Friday, you're literally in the same spot you were yesterday. I, 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 before I, the game. I, <laughs> I said yesterday, I said, um, maybe, you know, behind closed doors, maybe there should be a, uh, gentlemen's agreement between the Mavs and the Kings to split because <laughs> really that's what both of them I guess Dallas to get the tiebreaker they want you know both want to yeah but more than anything both just don't want to lose to because that would put you way behind the eight ball so yeah. like hey, let's, let's let's help each other out here let's split and then we go on about our merry ways for the rest of the, <laughs> for the next 10 games or something like that so <laughs> so, neither, so neither team is 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 losing in this situation Hopefully somebody gets on the phone today. Says, "Hey, we still got that deal in place." And the Kings went on Friday. Jonte Porter knows a guy. Yeah, 
I, I would point out too. Shohei. <laughs> so Shohei calling up. <laughs> he cuts. Um, like there's just the way that that these two teams are like where they are at in the standings. It's if the two teams tie, at, at, like if the Kings lose again on Friday, mm. the Kings can easily make up the two games and they could tie again. And then it goes down to division record. It goes down to conference record. Mm -hmm. And these guys are going to be right next to each other. No matter they're within like a half game of each other, one way or the other on all of the tiebreakers. Mm -hmm. So yeah. just because you lose a game, I, you certainly don't want to lose a game, right. but, but just because if you do lose this game, that doesn't mean really anything. The Mavs are playing really good basketball right now, too. You got that's you that's the thing. Yeah. They've now they're, won they're eight of really, nine. Yeah. Four in a row. They, they, they're playing really good. They're locked in. Yeah. Yeah. I just I got that was my first time watching Kyrie in person. Kyrie mm. is yeah, he's, he's a little different. <laughs> Kyrie is that man. I, I know people don't like him for other reasons, but no that's one of the greatest basketball players I've ever seen. Ever His seen. teammates love him. Yeah. They the, love him. I, well, I, I mean his whole career essentially. Like everywhere he's gone, they go they ask if you if you hear any NBA player talk, we got like 30 seconds. If you're NBA any NBA player talk about the best players in the league, every single one of them is like Kai. Well, they, and guys that they'd like to be a teammate with. Mm -hmm. yeah. 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 He sets up everybody. What do you guys got coming up? We got Kings, obviously, and we got A's. I don't know if you guys are going to like what I have to say. Mm. Again? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I got some nasty texts yesterday. Hey, tune into <laughs> something else other than D-Lo and KC. <laughs> <laughs> no. uh, we got D-Lo and KC coming up next on ESPN 1320 Sacramento Sports Leader. All right. Thanks, Chatty House. Hit the thumbs See you guys. up for Appreciate y'all. See ya. Well, I heard that commercial. Like, who's talking to us? Did they get the keyboard situation fixed? No, they're still switched. Oh. They look like they work, but they're still switched. But again, that was my fault. I climbed under there and switched them that one day. It's because the one keyboard just flat out died.
Yeah, 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 yeah. We got him screaming D-Lo, KC, D-Lo, KC, D-Lo, KC, D-Lo. We got him screaming D-Lo, KC, D-Lo, KC, D-Lo, D-Lo. We your number one spot. We your number one spot for some sports, huh? Got the city going crazy when we work, huh? We top two, but we ain't two, we in first, huh? And when you need the real, we is who you search, huh? D-Lo, KC, D-Lo, KC, D-Lo, KC, D-Lo. We your number one spot. Go, baby. We in here. One more time. One more time. Set the move right. Come on, man. We in here. We in here. We're going to talk about it. We're going to get through it. Don't worry about nothing. Hey. Let's talk. Stilo and Ron Simmons here. <laughs> I'm Damian Barling. The ultimate needle mover in God mode himself. He's Kenny Caraway. Yes, sir. Acknowledge me. All right. All right, all right, all right, all right. We in here for the Wednesday, March 27th edition of d and KC. All right, that didn't go according to plan. No, not at all. So let's, obviously, we're going to talk plenty about what happened last night at the Golden One Center. We'll break it down, what went right, what went wrong. Spoiler alert, not much went right. But the idea was always a split. Mm -hmm. We knew if the Sacramento Kings lost last night, it was going to make Wednesday, Thursday, and the first part of Friday mm -hmm. a whole lot more antsy and difficult and 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 hard to deal with. Mm -hmm. All right. Well, that's what happened. The Sacramento Kings have an opportunity to fix what happened last night on Friday. Yep. You split this series, everything is just fine. You lose both, that's a different conversation. Mm -hmm. We'll talk about that. Obviously, winning both is completely out of the equation now. So you focus on getting a win on Friday. And there's one thing that we didn't talk about yesterday, partly because the games had been so far apart. Like, they hadn't played since January. And this is, you know, to be fair to the Dallas Mavericks, this is pretty much a different basketball team than it was when they played in January. You know, we looked at the lineups like it's a different squad. This is something that I think favored them yesterday that I do believe favors Sacramento tomorrow. Dallas had lost two in a row. Mm -hmm. And <laughs> while this is not a foolproof plan, uh, as we can look at Pelicans games and we can look at Houston games to attest to this, mm -hmm. I think when you are a team that's lost a couple of times in a, in a we'll call it a season series, where you've got to get a victory, mm -hmm. I think you 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 have a smidge bit of advantage when you're the team that lost last, right? You're diving more into film. You're you're you you have a kind of a a hyper sense of correction that you want to do. I I don't hear them do this very often. De'Aaron did it last night. He was like, "Yo, we've got things." De'Aaron's normally, "Hey, it's a loss on the schedule. We'll keep it moving. Got to be better." Blah 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 blah. He was like, "We've got things to correct. We got film to dive into, and we'll be ready for Friday." They normally don't acknowledge stuff like that. Mm -hmm. And given how badly the Kings got their ass kicked last night, given the fact that I believe there's an embarrassment factor that that happened, one, on national television, two, on their home floor, and three, against the team that you're dead even with in this playoff race, I think headed into Friday's game, they now have the hyper sense of correction, right? Mm -hmm. They have the hyper sense of, hey, guys, we've got to focus on this. We've got to correct this. We've got to go out here. We can't be tentative with our shots, which we were on Tuesday. Mm -hmm. We can't be tentative with our passing, which we were on Tuesday. And we got to figure out what we're going to do with their two superstars because they figured out what to do with our two superstars. We got to figure out what to do with theirs. Yeah, man, I, I, I agree with everything you say. Great. They're Show's over. We'll <laughs> see you guys Friday. <laughs> They're going to be ready to play on Friday. Whether that results in a win or not, I don't know. But they'll be ready to play. There'll be a level of physicality to that game. Um, there was last night. Yeah, there was. There was. Except and, Luca, you couldn't touch Luca. But other than that, somebody try to you know play defense on Luca. Luca would say, "Unhand me, you foxy heathen! You <laughs> give this man a technical." <laughs> I will not be touched by someone named De'Aaron. <laughs> Put your hands on me. Referee, blow the whistle immediately. Did you see you? You were at I the game yesterday, so you might you might not have seen it. But 
did you see the <laughs> the play? It, it had no uh, bearing on the game. I think it was already like 20 at that point. But in the second half, early in the third quarter, Keegan's going for like a loose ball on the baseline. Luca kind of barrels into him. It wasn't like nothing overly egregious, but it was a foul. Like he gets there, kind of bumps him. Keegan goes out of bounds. They call the little push. He, hey, what? Huh? What? Hey, no. Hey, review that. No, no, no. You already know. We review that. Review that. Review that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Review that. Review that. They, they go to the uh they they go to the, the damn uh replay. He's out there doing the bump with uh Keegan Murray, sexy, sexy. Yeah, well. And <laughs> What, what are you talking about? He's like, no, no, hey, no, absolutely. No, review that, review that. You know we got that. That's a win. That's a win. Nope, nope, nope. You, you know what's Stop. funny? Stop, bro. You know what's funny about that play? That's when I left. I was like, this is stupid. Like, I'm out of here. Like, I'm not dealing with this. I'm out of here. This is such trash. <laughs> oh, so get this guy out of here, man. The one that made me laugh is when De'Aaron, this was a first half play, uh-huh. lowered his shoulder and just like drove someone like 10 feet back on a drive. And the crowd was like, hey, I'm like, no, I'm pretty <laughs> sure you can't do that. I'm pretty sure that's illegal. <laughs> so they allowed their officials allowed the game to be physical, except yeah. for Luca. I think they're going to allow the game to be physical again on Friday. I think they're allowing everything in the league to be physical. That's, yeah, that, it's clearly a, hey, let's get in playoff mode now. And, mm-hmm. and, and, and that's where they are. Um, but I'm with you, man. They they gotta they gotta be ready to go on Friday. Yep, it's and huge, they will big, be. It's the latest in in the most realist biggest game of the season on Friday. Yeah, for sure, man. And you know you got to tip your hat to the Mavericks. They played great. They played incredible. You know they 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 did everything they were supposed to do. Um, Luca was phenomenal. Kyrie was man. phenomenal. Man, um, and I I think I was telling the insiders. I think. Um, at the end of the third quarter, I don't know for sure. I feel like they had like, I think 16, 17 threes already at that point in the game. And that's tough. <laughs> that's just tough. Like team going to hit 17 threes through three quarters. It's going to be tough to keep up. Yeah. And you combine that with the Kings. I think mm-hmm. they only had like six or seven at that time. Yeah. Yeah, there was there was a there was a point in the first quarter where those shots kept dropping for Dallas, and it was like, man, I think there were like six of seven at one point, five of six, something like that. And I think Keegan was the only one who had hit a three for Sacramento. He might have hit two of them by that time. Mm. And it was like, okay, they got to settle this down. And the funny thing is, I don't even know that I realized this as it was happening. Do you see how many points Luke had in the second half? Uh. I didn't see, but not that many. Probably what six, two. two what do you have? Twenty four in, in the first half. Yeah, he, he had or he had uh, twenty eight total. Maybe he had four in the second half. He no, uh, he might have. He might have had twenty six. Yeah, half. he had twenty six in the first yeah. half. Yeah, it was. It was. It was, He had two in the third quarter. That was Kyrie. Like, I, yeah, I, it was. It was. <laughs> it's. It's Kyrie. not. It's not meant to be. Shade of Lucas. I love Luka, that dude. I love that dude, but I hate him. Oh my God, he is so deadly. Luca. Luca is. So is franchise he's he's generational all this other stuff i don't mean no shade Kyrie's the engine for that team mm. Kyrie's the one he's so, the one if Kyrie is Kyrie is either gonna win them a game yeah. because of his play or he's gonna keep them in it because of his play Kyrie's the one on this particular Mavericks team Luca gets the numbers gets the stats he's another reason why they have aspirations of being a playoff team and thinking they can do something in the playoffs. Mm-hmm. But Kyrie is the one. I didn't feel, and I, I I wholeheartedly agree, I didn't feel this way in December or January, excuse me. This is a good basketball team now. I don't think Dallas was a good basketball team to start the year. I think the trades that they made mm-hmm. really accentuate those two and put players like the PJ Washington's like that the, there's guys on that squad to where it's like, look, our focus is Kyrie and Luca, but it's not like we can just leave these guys. Mm-hmm. Like we've got to be honest with these guys here. That's a better basketball team, a much better basketball team yeah. than it was in January. I don't think they're 30 points better than Sacramento. No, I think they're but, the same, but right now they're 30 points better than Sacramento. And while Sacramento doesn't need to be 30 points better than uh, Dallas on Friday, they just need to be one. 
that'll that'll smooth things out because that gets the season series. That changes the complexion of this playoff race if Sacramento is able to get that. Absolutely. Yeah, I, th- I think to your point, they are better than they were. I think they're on the same level as the Kings. I think uh, I, I really do think that New or excuse me, kind of put New Orleans in there now, but Dallas, Phoenix, and Sacramento are all about on the same plane. All about about the same plan. I think I do think the Kings are slightly better than the other two, but they're on the same the same wavelength. Well, whoever gets six, there's or potentially there's five. Things, I know there's some things going on now. <laughs> yeah, there's potentially four. Yeah. Like the, the, no one. It, 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 I looked at the Kings' schedule and I do not like it, but I don't think anyone is running away with these playoff spots. Like these playoff spots could very 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 likely come down to those final three home games of the season Mm -hmm. and i think portland's in there which is you know a bit inconsequential but phoenix is in there and new orleans is in there oh they got a tough road before that though like that that knicks boston back to back and then back to brooklyn I know Brooklyn's mm. not tough, but that yeah. is a bizarre travel schedule. Well, you got those two those two Eastern Conference playoff teams uh, in a row, and then you got to hop the plane back to New York. Yeah, that's a bit goofy. Yeah. I don't know. Sometimes I don't know what the schedule makers are doing. I really don't. But they also got a lot of things going on. I'll give them that. They do, but that feels ridiculous. That does feel ridiculous. like you're you're twenty minutes away. <laughs> And you got to hop a plane that night, right? That should to that go should, to a different state. I don't care how close the state is. That's right. what you've got to do. That should always be the case. Always, with the Knicks. if you're like, playing both on the same road trip, it should always be Knicks. If it has to Nets. be a back to back, make it a Knicks Nets back to back. Like, yeah. what are you going to Massachusetts for and then coming back? That's crazy. That's crazy. And yes, I'm just now getting mad about it. <laughs> um, it's almost as crazy as back to back. You know where you have to leave the country or re-enter the country. No. Yeah. Yeah. I I thought you were talking about Sean Combs for a second. Well, and I realized you might be talking about Toronto, but no, that's fine. <laughs> that's a good point. Sean is, <laughs> well, that's a wild. There's story. no evidence that he's left. So like he, he appears. Well, literally there's evidence that he has not left. He's walking around. Well, that was a couple of days ago, right? Like he what left now? Yeah. Where is he? Now? Well, they said, according to his lawyer, he can do what he wants. Yeah. And I don't think if I were him, <laughs> if there's no travel restrictions, <laughs> if I were him, I'd consider leaving. I'm gone. Like, oh, I'm free. Oh, good. Hey, guys, I'm here to cooperate. No, it's fine. You fire that shit up. It's good. Thanks, guys. We'll see you. We'll see you next time. Uh, there's obviously a, a, a couple of big games tonight uh, in the Western Conference, man. We'll talk about that, what they mean. Uh, to the Sacramento Kings, and then we'll dive a little bit further into that game last night. Uh, I didn't like the first half. Like, obviously, the story of the game is the third quarter. I did not like the first half. We'll talk about that. Uh, we've got much more ahead. We're just getting started. Steele McCasey brought to you by Sky River Casino here on Sacramento Sports Leader ESPN 1320. <laughs> Where uh tell Charlie we'll push it in on both stations. Hey, uh the mic.
So I said, fuck him. <laughs> well, leave him alone. His house is up for sale. <laughs> oh. <laughs> Kyle, you want to buy a house? <laughs> what, 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 did, uh, what did Drake say? That if your house was up for sale, so I'd buy, buy the, the whole, whole thing. thing. <laughs> <laughs> I told Karosh, like, hey, you, I could be a dick right now if I wanted to. <laughs> That house didn't sell super fast. Last time it was for sale, mm. a couple months, you know, less than a year ago. Uh, it was going to sell super fast this time. Damn, that IG story is funny. I'm this old. <laughs> Man, the old ass trace. y'all know about that. <laughs> Saw Kevin John last night. Got to spend some time with him. Oh, shout out to our man Kevin John. We do got to get him on the show again, too. Yeah, we definitely do. We didn't get to spend time with much of our people. Got to see Hunter a little bit. Um, but, you know, get there so late. Didn't get really, really get to visit with our squad. I'm having this interaction with this guy just because. He, 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 you know the rules. He's, he's trying to say something like he's trying to act like hella smart about it. And it's like, no, nah, I want I, I I need you to explain this. So eventually we can all see that you're just talking out of your ass. Mm. He tells me, no, nah, I mean, so he tells me I'll talk about it. Talking about the A's thing or whatever. He's like, yeah, they don't need to go. MLB doesn't need to go to Sacramento because Sacramento already watches Major League Baseball. It's proven that it already watches Major League Baseball. Why would they go to a place that they already have watching? Why would they invest in a place that's already watching? He's like, what are you talking about? And he goes, you're talking about it from a consumer. I'm talking about big business. I was like, so you think they should, MLB would go to a, a market that doesn't watch the game? You say, that's not what I'm saying. That's literally what you're saying. Kenny, why would you go to a place where you know you're going to make money because you have an audience there? <laughs> why would you do that? So dumb. That's the, but he's talking to me like I'm dumb. Like I'm just, no, oh, you're thinking like a consumer and a fan. Like, what are you talking about? Kenny involved in another one of those intellectual conversations <laughs> on Twitter. It's one of those things you just got to stay off Twitter. Just don't Boy. argue, man. I did, uh, some, I did it once. You know what though? Sometimes, sometimes you you gotta you you gotta push through with it because they need to see how stupid they look. They they need sometimes you gotta right. do that. I'm I'm all for that because when, when somebody from a saying distance stupid, can't tell who is who. This is true. Man, just walk away. That's sometimes. the thing. I don't even think they realize at the end of the day. No, they're gonna realize when Kenny, I'm oh, so, to so you. I love Casey. He's gonna be the first person to get through to someone on Twitter. <laughs> oh, yeah, the first. No, they, they gonna, he's gonna they, be the first person ever. They're gonna just stop responding. That's what I know. They sound stupid. When you lose an argument on Twitter, it just comes down to like what they say is just whatever. Like I can believe what I want. <laughs> you don't know ball. Yeah, <laughs> you don't know big business, Kenny. <laughs> Casual, like Doctor David says. Watch more baseball, Kenny. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, there's some some people who are not on, pleased man. with our our thoughts on the not at all Sacramento A's, and you know that's going to be matter of fact, that's going to be a conversation today. Our man Jay Gaden, shout out Jay Gaden, who the, is, who's been all over this thing. He has man, he's been he's, he's been breaking all the news on this story. He was uh, singing the praises of his uh, March Madness co-host Kenny Caraway last night. My dog uh, at the game, so uh, Jake's going to join. Oh, us. Jake was at the game last night. Mm -hmm. My dog. Yeah, he was working. The whole TV crew was working hard last night. Sean Cunningham, Jake Gaden, uh, Kevin John, well, Matt when George, you, they were all there. You, you mentioned when you left. What what was that? That was after halftime. Yeah, it was after halftime. Okay. I, I was, okay. okay. Late night D -Lo. Okay. He's outside. <laughs> He's outside. He's outside. Make it change, you huh? Make it change, though. The night's just starting. That's what he said. That's what he said at halftime. Night just starting. You imagine first leave. time after the game, Damon's like, what are we getting into? 
You got the trash, dude. So what's the move? What's the move? <laughs> Bro, it's Tuesday. Go home. Even I would say, that. even I'd be like, "Bro, it's Tuesday." Come on, buddy. I was outside. I told you I was outside, right, with Mikey. Yeah, Vegas? No, yeah, yeah, I was outside. Jordan is outside. It's it's a new D-Lo. That's yeah. why he was there till halfway through the third last night. Was that what time it was? Yeah, it was about that. It was during the run, mm. or it, the game was over at that point. I almost but turned the game off. My buddy Colt was there. Like I was, I was visiting a few people and. King Melly was in the building last night. King, I didn't him? even get to see him. Yeah, I just saw. I was, I was room, looking though. at his IG stories too. Like, man, I'm, I'm trying to save my money, and you out here making. I mean, you out here making gear. I mean, I know what are we doing? Um, I'm sorry that everybody came out to hang out last night. That's a, that's a, <laughs> it's a big I, game. That was. A, I know. Friday it, gonna be popping though. Yeah, Friday, Friday, Friday gonna be crazy. Friday gonna be because now there's yeah, some Friday's desperation be involved yep. with the fan base with the king. It's, 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 it's gonna get. It's, it's gonna be. Less, yesterday, I assume you were there. It was a playoff atmosphere. They were ready yeah. to to pop off. Yeah, but I think Friday gonna be. Yeah, yeah. They um. I I didn't like the first half. Like I, I'll be honest. I I I I felt like the game could go one of two ways at halftime, and it did not go the way I expected. I thought the Kings were horrible in the first half. I thought they were indecisive. I thought a lot of those they hit. They had like four or five shots all in or around the restricted area, mm. right? Like, and I love that they didn't get goaded into shooting a bunch of three pointers. Like they, they felt like they had an attack plan. It just wasn't working. Like Dallas was hitting threes. Mm -hmm. They were looking sharp on the offensive end. The Kings were looking super sharp on the offensive end, but they were getting enough stops and, 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 and getting enough baskets to where the lead was, wasn't out of control at all in that first half. And they miss like a series, three, four, five shots just in or around the restricted area. And I feel like a lot of that is they were almost unsure about what they wanted to do. Like they off, they made, uh, there was a couple of times where they made like an extra pass, which wound up becoming a more difficult shot than the shot that they passed up to make that pass. Mm -hmm. And then there was a couple where they looked to make the additional pass and it became a turnover. Mm -hmm. And I just kept thinking, I hate the way that they're playing here in this first half. But the game is still within reach. Halftime, get here, settle down, like get more aggressive. Keegan passed up on Keegan was the only one hitting threes at this point. He passed up on a three in the corner, and I was convinced Mike's going to pull him right here. <laughs> He's going to do that gimmick right now, and he didn't. And it, and you know, two passes later, it was a turnover. And I thought, okay, halftime, settle down. Get aggressive, Mike. Yell a little bit. Take some shots, and you'll be just fine. Mm. Uh, that 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 wasn't the case. Um, they weren't just fine, and it was a disastrous start to the. Th I mean, the game was over at the beginning of the third quarter. Like yeah. it, they never, they never came out of the locker room. Like they never had a shot after that. I think the run was. 31 to 12, 32 to 12, something like that. The quarter was was worse, but that was the big run that essentially ended the game. They wound up getting up by as many as like 38 or 39. And that's that's not that's not the way I thought it was going to go after halftime. I thought they were going to come out with a different type of energy after the half because I thought they were really bad in the first half and were within striking distance. I thought, okay, you survived a horrible half. You're going to be just fine. Turns out that was their best half of the night. Um yeah, for me, they just they didn't hit shots, and the and the Mavericks hit them at an unbelievable clip. And while I think the Mavericks are are, are a good team, like I think they're a good team, um, they're capable of having another good game on Friday. Uh, I ain't they ain't shooting like that, and I don't think the Kings are shooting like that. Kings shot thirty nine percent from the field. Um, it, it's one of those things we always talk about. Do we? I think, I think we might have lost Perk. Uh -oh. I think we might have lost Perk. Uh -oh. The graphic says, which is the West most dangerous team outside of the Nuggets? Perk's talking, and there's a Dallas Mavericks logo up there. When you look at Luka Doncic and Kyrie Irving and what they're able to do, I'm telling you right now, they are the most dangerous team in the West outside of the Nuggets. It ain't the Suns. It ain't the Lakers. It ain't the Warriors because they're finished. It's Luca and Kyrie. It 
that's not bad. It's like Draymond, Broussard, and Kent and Perk. They're so close. <laughs> they're 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 like there's just like these little distinct differences. But yeah, I don't I don't mind that one. I'm just sad. <laughs> I'm just sad that we might have lost Perk. Yeah, I mean, well, look, I mean, they're they're playing well though. They're playing they're well. Playing great. Nine and yeah. one in their last ten. Yeah. Um, and the and what they did last night in a big time game, super impressive. Super mm-hmm. impressive. Yeah. But I, I do think, and it doesn't mean that they won't play well on Friday or anything. They, they ain't doing it like that. They're not doing it like that. They're not shooting 56% yeah. from three and hitting 22 threes on Friday. Mm-hmm. And if they do, I don't really care what the Kings do. You're probably going to lose. No, mm-hmm. you're going to lose. Mm-hmm. Like if they do that again, they're going to lose. And you tip your hat again. But I, I think Friday will be different because the Kings aren't, shooting as poorly as they did and and like i was about to say it's always the age old was it the mavs defense or the kings missing shots mm. a combination of both i think the mavs were active on a defensive end but will z where you at if you're out there i don't know but the wide open looks i would assume they were probably along the lines of what they normally are yeah Just didn't hit. i don't know um I do think Dallas was really good last they, night. I though. think they played good defense. Yeah, I do I think thought they, they were good. really good last night. I feel like night. the Mavericks at points a lot in yesterday's game kind of had the Kings had spinning on defense a bit because I feel like there was a lot of op- a lot of moments where um like the Kings just weren't set like on the defensive side and didn't know really really where to be. There's a lot of times where I feel like Kyrie or Luke or whoever just dumped it into the paint. They had an easy shot in the paint and stuff like that. Well, they last night and this is what happens when you play uh, a team that has Kyrie and Luca. Um, I don't think the Kings did a good job of uh, stopping the ball. I think that's what it was, too. And they would get them into these scramble things. Whatever would go on with passing that ball into the middle, they weren't – it don't feel like the Kings were in the zone, but they were in some type of maybe matchup zone. And when they get that ball out and they'd spray it to the wing, and then the guy – they would put – whoever's on that side of the court on defense and conflict because they spray it to the wing. You got to cover the wing. They make a quick pass to the corner and get that corner three. It was there all night. Mm-hmm. It was there all night. And the Mavs were working that to perfection, yeah. to perfection. And and they were hitting. And then once Kyrie started, they were even able to survive all that, though. But once Kyrie took over in that third quarter, it was lights out. It was lights out. It was, and it felt like, like, look, look I, I didn't realize, like, De'Aaron had, like, 14, I think, in the first half. Mm-hmm. It Like, they they made his life miserable. Like, I'm watching, I'm watching some of his, uh, his offensive plays back right now. Like, they, they're all over him at, like, half court. Uh, they made it tough on, they made it tough on the Kings' two stars. One of the things I didn't understand offensively is why, why they didn't attack Luca more on on the defensive end, get him involved. And maybe it's a little bit of their offense, right? Like there's a lot of motion in their offense and stuff like that. But it seemed like to a certain degree, sometimes, especially with Monk and with Fox, they you know go a little bit more pick and roll and do a small to small pick and roll and get Luca on Fox. Get Luke on Monk. We saw it a couple times, and Fox, it was just easy work. Just blow by him. I mean, he's a horrible defender. He's not good. And I didn't think they worked enough to get him in conflict on the defensive end. To get Luka in conflict? Mm -hmm. Mm-hmm. And I'd even even work Kyrie, too. Like, you got to make those guys work a little bit. That, That would be my strategy. They're still great. They'll still find a way to, you know, do whatever. But that would be my strategy going up against the Mavericks. Don't let them hang out in the corner all night on mm. defense. Mm. Put them in the pick and roll action and the dribble handoff action, all this other stuff. And with the Kings, they have enough people that on the offensive end that you can you can do that with. You know, you're not losing if you're putting Keegan Murray in the dribble handoff action. He's an offensive player for you. So if Luca's trying to hide on him, let's go to work with Keegan Murray. If you find a way, if he's guarding him, hey, Fox, let's get a simple Keegan Fox pick and roll. Yeah. They're going to switch every time. Let's get Luca working every single time down the court and try to wear him off that way. To use the overused sports term, like De'Aaron couldn't get downhill. Mm. Like he kept, 
he 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 had to do a lot of moving side to side. He he had to do a lot just to get into the front court and you know and operate the offense. There's a couple of times here as I'm watching, you know, the first half go by. He 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 starts getting the ball to Malik when Malik gets in. He starts getting the ball to Malik Monk a little bit quicker, and then going down and getting in the offense himself. Um, yeah, they 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 had a they had a strategy for him. Uh, he really attacked Kyrie a couple of times. He went uh, at uh, when they in the first half when he had lively on the switch. He was going at him. Mm -hmm. uh, he was doing. I thought he was doing whatever he wanted. But he had to, well. He uh, it, 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 he had to work though. Mm -hmm. It like it, you know, De'Aaron. Uh, I, I can get any shot I want to. Like you're a hundred percent right. It felt like last night he had to work really hard to get those shots though, and perhaps that you know took a toll as as the game went along it, hell i think it took a toll in the first half it i don't know that he had a field goal in the second half he took i think what, what do we say at 14 he took 12 shots to get that uh i don't think he hit a field goal at all in the second half of course the game was over by the you know fourth quarter or whatever but and 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 nobody was hit. nobody nobody could, could nope. do anything for the kings nope will uh in the chat he's got some numbers that are pretty impressive to me he said the hard part is that Dallas hit their threes regardless of the Kings coverage. Tightly contested, they were three of five for 60%. Open, they were eight of 14 for 57%. And wide open, they were wow. 11 of 20. And he compares that to the Kings, who tightly contested, they were 0 for 1. Open, they were two of seven for 28%. Wide open, they were nine of 22 for 41%. So last night, the the numbers kind of go with what I thought last night. It really was kind of a make or miss league, at least with giving yourself an opportunity, right? Like the Kings didn't have a chance because they, they shot poorly and the Mavericks shot really well from deep. If those things like if the Mavericks, sorry for the radio people, but if the Mavericks are way up here without their shooting mm -hmm. and the Kings were down here, you don't have a shot. If it was a little bit more like this, maybe the Mavericks still shooting better. A little bit more not, even. Yeah, yeah. You got a shot going into that fourth quarter, but that third quarter, uh, I mean, they died. I mean, look at the second half: thirty-eight to twenty-three in the. Third I mean, there's quarter, a there, thirty-six to twenty in the fourth. To use numbers that you to to, to illustrate your visual point, there was a twenty percent discrepancy in three-point shooting last night, a difference of eleven threes. Mm. That's, That's ridiculous. It's 33 points. 11 or 33 three point difference. Or whatever. And that's how you find yourself down by 39. <laughs> right. Is that right there? A 20% three point discrepancy. They um they hit 11 more threes. That's literally 33 more points. Mm -hmm. Than you and yeah, it's just, you know, and, and and you tip your hat to Dallas. It's not just oh they had the luck on them. Oh, it's not that. They they got shooters. They hit shots. Um, and the Kings, the Kings just didn't, you know. And uh, you got a couple of days to stew on that if you're the Kings. And I think they will. I think they are stewing on that. And I, much like you, think they'll be ready to go on uh on on Friday. 18 to 8 and fast break points, too. Mm. Like they just couldn't, they they were just Dallas made them uncomfortable, right? That 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 they they Dallas felt good about their game plan, and I think they were able to carry more confidence into the second half than Sacramento was, where Sacramento was probably looking to make a whole lot of adjustments going into the second half. Where Dallas, I'm sure they made adjustments, even though they're not coached. Uh, their coach is just a <laughs> fan, just like we are. But I'm sure someone on that that team or that staff said, hey, here's a few things we could do better. They had rolled Luca that first half where it's like, all right, well, this is what we do. Mm -hmm. And Kyrie was like, no, I want in on this. <laughs> and Kyrie hits those shots where, like Luca was doing in the first half, like Luca hits a couple of those and you just kind of you roll your eyes. Like and I'm standing up watching the game, turning around like, Jeez, you got to be kidding me. Mm -hmm. Then Kyrie got in on the act and was like, I don't even want to be here no more. Like this isn't this isn't even worth this is not worth watching. You, you know what you know what killed me and it felt like he made way put more. this game back on true TV. <laughs> oh man, <laughs> I was I was tripping because I was at my my son's baseball game and I was watching on on the app. I was you know trying to pull it up. True TV. Yeah, I took that what? as disrespect, Loki, until I realized what was going on. <laughs> it's, 
<laughs> they're the <laughs> first team to get flexed out of a TNT game <laughs> as it's happening. Like, nah, just I was up. like, no way the, the Kings got bumped to True just, TV for like just, Avengers or something on TNT. Yeah. TV. And then and then I get home and I turn on the TV and I'm turning to TNT and I see why. Mm -hmm. It's a double over. We'll talk about this later. I said they were they were destroying the Lakers. What the hell's going on here? Boy, man, that's crazy. Doc Rivers jokes were flowing last night. <laughs> oh man. We'll definitely get to that. But this guy only hit two threes, but it felt like he hit 22. Every time Derrick Jones would hit a three, I said, <laughs> come on. Come on. And I really like Derrick Jones. I it's somebody I wish the Kings would get a couple times, but the whole normal was he's not gonna be able to shoot. And it it felt like he was hitting like five or six of them. He only hit two. My boy, go blue, Tim Hardaway Jr., four or six from beyond the arc, though. Mm. Does Michigan still have a basketball team? Absolutely. Oh. We got FAU's coach. We're on our way back. You see what he did at Florida Atlantic? Don't do that. What's his name? I don't know. I forgot. Okay. It's our guy from FAU. <laughs> that's, what, that's what I'm saying. That's good. It's fine. <laughs> they, oh, I, you they, go from they, Jawan Howard to that guy from FAU. Well, what, what's the hoop programs looking like in Ohio State right now? I don't care. They ain't looking nice. Don't bother me. Good. As a matter did of you, fact, that's actually a good thing. Did you see uh, a little bit off topic? Chris but... Biederman was not happy about all of my Duke tweets <laughs> this weekend. Chris <laughs> Biederman, an actual Ohio State alum. Well, not particularly pleased with how many times I tweeted about Duke. So. That's how uh, I felt. Um, what it is. Uh, but did you see um, their, their broadcasting uh, – Michigan and Ohio State spring games on Fox. Yeah, we talked about that. Yeah. We didn't talk about that. We didn't? No. Who did we talk about it with? Who, you get, who you get was radio show? You, hey, when you guys, yeah, when you have your own secret show. Yeah, maybe so, that. you know. Yeah, must be that. <laughs> um, Thank yes. you. spent 30 minutes on it. <laughs> yeah. All right. Why don't you settle down in there? Jesse been treating me like The Rock treated Cody Rhodes on Monday night. That's how the Mavericks treated the Kings last that night. That is facts. That is absolute facts. I watched that segment again last night after the game was over because I felt oh, like I'd just seen it. I should have. Yeah, it was, you know, you guess what I watched last night? Not sports. Not the office. I didn't watch the office. You yeah. know what I got close to finishing was Grizzly. I watched I watched the oh, okay. Yeah. I gotta start that whole thing. That, over, I man. think I mean, from what I can tell, I feel like that's just like a short series. Like I it think is. it's like five, six episodes, yeah. and that's the end. Yeah. Cause they're she's I think there's one more episode left and she just went off the deep end yeah yeah i think it's a <laughs> the end a, is near a limited series ba based on reality to a certain degree right like, you know it's funny pin, one 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 of the days there was there was a lot of there was a lot of uh recovering in vegas and you know you get like a handful of channels in the hotel Modern Family was on like 40 times. Oh, on... yeah, that's what, that's what it do. Now, that show's pretty funny. <laughs> what really bugged me out, though, is I don't think I knew how long that show ran. Oh, the and kids are adults. One of the kids was pregnant. <laughs> oh, wait, what? I didn't even get to that part of Modern yeah, Family. Yeah, one of the kids was pregnant. And I'm like, is that one of the kids? Like, what season is this? It's crazy. Yeah, I didn't realize that the show ran that long. Yeah, it's And then the, the, little, the little chubby kid. Yeah. He's a grown ass man. <laughs> He's in college dating yeah. and all this. Yeah, yeah. That, that did trip me out when I see those. So they were they were running, and I don't know if they were consecutive. First of all, the show is very very funny. But I was really thrown off when the girl walks in and she's pregnant. And I'm like, I started thinking, is this not even the right show? Like, what is this a spinoff? Like, what am I watching? I did not know the show ran that long. It ran super long because before the um, I forget her name. I'm sorry, but the a little Asian girl they adopted. She wasn't even always on the show. I think she's Lily, right? Lily. Yeah. That's my girl. Lily wasn't even always on the show. She comes in there. 11 maybe, seasons. Maybe a year or two in. Mm -hmm. By the end, Lily's like in high school. Oh, and she's hitting them with the one-liners too. Yeah, no, nah, she was funny. Yeah, <laughs> Lily, she was when she funny. was like a little, little girl, when she was like three or four, was super funny. Yeah, it's, it was, it was, it was, it was weird to see that. that. that though, everybody got old like that. I never got into that show as it happened. I've seen episodes. Of, that show is very funny. Hilarious. That's probably the most episodes I've ever seen before. And yeah, it was that, probably like four or five. It was very funny. The family be getting mad at me because I'd be like, oh, snap, my family's on. They're like, ah, oh, here's two hours we're going to lose. 
Because I'll just watch it for like two and a half hours. So start bargaining. Look, I'll turn the channel if we get Chipotle. Here we go. We can we can watch something other than Modern Family if I get Chipotle. There we go. That. You know, uh, as we talk about things, one of the... See, anything's better than talking about what happened last night. One of the ways I got away from the Kings last night, it wasn't just Griselda. I watched like uh, three or four episodes of Living Single. Number okay. one, I love Kim Fields. Mm. I love Kim Fields. <laughs> I love mm -hmm. Kim Fields. That's for sure, for sure. Mm -hmm. Second of all, I got to like the back end of it. Do you remember when they got a male roommate? Cla Man, um, Sinclair I I and do. Overton got married, yep. moved into their own place. Yep. And they got a male roommate, which was the guy who was um was uh in Soul Food that that uh what was Nia Long's character? It was her high, old high school boyfriend that got an interview for Lim. And he okay. was remember, oh yeah, yeah, I remember Cola. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah. And and Makai Pfeiffer like loses it and hits him with a tray wow. or whatever. Happens. He was the roommate. I don't know how long I that don't season remember went. that at all. Yeah. I don't remember. But that's where they were at. And it was still it was still cool. It's the, it still worked. I mean, that's a great show. But uh yeah, I watched like an hour and a half of Living Single. Wasn't watching Inside the NBA. I can promise you that. I definitely wasn't definitely watching Definitely not that. with hating ass Candace. Absolutely. Did not need to see what she had to say. I'm not going to lie. That King's name was a little tough when Kyrie drove to the basket and dunked it. Oh, once, once that happens, like, okay, it's probably not happening today. I, I His name is turn. Mel Jackson, by the way. That's the, the guy's name that was on Yeah. Name? Yeah. He's like, he's, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, <laughs> Cole got that interview for you. <laughs> I'm sorry. It's just a little nickname we used to have for back in the day. And Lynn was like getting more and more mad. He's like, yeah, she had that body like a Coke bottle, right? I, <laughs> like I a mean, bottle of Coca-Cola. I, I love how you. Yeah. And then they got, like good. zoomed in on his mouth and he was licking his lips. He's like, yeah. Yeah. He wanted them pretty light skinned dudes because the his his like he's got like a red carpet pick where he got his he got his eye up. Where he, he he's doing the old he, he's doing that old 90s pose where he's standing like this. Yo, I, came, All right, come on, I came across a thread today of Drake on Instagram. It's a, why does this dude take pictures like this? This dude's hilarious. He's low key hilarious. I think everything might be a work with Drake. He's just funny. It might be. <laughs> He's funny. It might they, be. they went from like 2011 all the way to now. And dude's Instagram pictures are hilarious. <laughs> All right. Well, let's find out how we can so, kill time the rest of the show without talking so, about the king. So or no. Oh, yeah. Oh, my bad. We used to call it Cola. Just a little nickname we oh, have for said that like three times back in the day, you know, because he had the body shaped like a Coca-Cola bottle. <laughs> and Lim was like grabbing his biscuit. <laughs> he was gripping. He was gripping his biscuit even harder every time he'd say a word, boy. Then he hit him over the head with a tray. Hit his boss over the head with a tray. Well, you're already here. There's no point in going anywhere, so just stay tuned. It's Dilo and Casey on ESPN 1320. <laughs> Shout out to my buddy Colt. He's watching. He came to his first Kings game last night. Sorry, Colt. That was that was a tough first Damn. game, man. I'm sorry to hear that, yeah, brother. That was, was a tough first game to be at, but uh, we'll get you back to a good one. Yeah, man. Uh, and I mean, Colt ran up to me, gave me a big hug, and where's KC? I was like, it's not what Colt has. It's like my nephew. Like, where's KC? That's, at? that's like, not what Colt has. He's not How's, here, buddy. And, and that he, nephew was at the house at the game yesterday. I said that's like my nephew. Oh. Colt's like my nephew. He didn't ask. And that. he just wanted to know where KC was. That's not true. How many times did you get stopped yesterday? And they, D-Lo, take a picture. Every time I go with this guy, they, they stop in D-Lo. Every time. So you're a good friend, KC. We well, have you happened. guys back right there. Well, that, no, it ain't about having his back. That's what happens. Jesse sees through it. <laughs> that's what happens. Jesse going to be out at... Uh... Barstool with us, to, Barstool Bar, Bar West with us tomorrow. <laughs> Jesse coming through? Yeah, they finally sending me out now. Hey, let's go, let's go. Hey, y'all got to pull up then, man. Jesse going to be in the building. Mm -hmm. and, and and shout out to Jesse for coming because usually there are windows for him to come. I'm going home. I'm not, 
No. My office hours well, were it was, not, it was, it was, not hanging with It was you a guys. little different last year when I wasn't coming. Yeah, no. I wasn't coming to these little um, watch parties. There was reasons. Yeah, the, two words, baby. <laughs> Talent fee. Yeah, Talent man. Talent fee. So my office hours are nine to five. Well, the office hours have got extended. Mm. No. What's so, what's going on over at the the water cooler? <laughs> hmm. What are you guys doing in the halls? <laughs> I'm already getting mad thinking about it. <laughs> oh man, what's the scuttlebutt? <laughs> Yo. Hmm. Wait, we changed up those rejoiners, huh? We lost that month. Yeah. Play some, play some Guns and Roses, <laughs> maybe some. Yo, that, that was the day right there. Where I was like, "This is over. This is over." Yeah, for me, it was the sports updates in the middle of a conversation during the show. <laughs> yeah, that didn't help. This is a funny video that they're showing. They're showing all of the the stars, and then like. Kid videos, drafted videos, and then today. Is this the first time we got the draft date? No, I don't think so. Because I looked up free agency the other day, and that I didn't see that on the NBA dates, but I'm assuming it's right, right after this. He's not even eligible. Why are they showing him? Oof. Cooper Flag looks like a beast, though. He really does. I'm anxious to see what he looks like in college and in uh, and in the pros. What's his name? Son is really good too. Russell, I didn't see this, but I imagine Jalen Brown wasn't too happy after that game. What would he do? Well, I guess Bogey tried um, like, dapping him up after the game, and well, they did Brown blow shoulder it. bumped him. Yeah. Thirty point lead. Don't yeah. don't dap me up. <laughs> don't dap me up. Paolo Bancaro showed up to give that man his trophy in the most unenthusiastic way imaginable. <laughs> so oh, I like my that national player of the year. I, I like that shirt Paolo has on. Oh, he's just on the show. Did he win national? Player no, of he year? did. Yeah, no, he oh. did. That's, that's that's the trophy he delivered to him. Ah, got you. Paolo might play a game. Today. He was like, "Here, bro. Here, just take it." Is the draft so bad this year? Like we're not even like, do we even know who the top person is? It's a it's a foreigner, I think. I mean, the draft they got some they got some ball players. It's not. I feel like nobody's talking about like just the prospects yeah, this year. Crazy, you got guys like my boy uh, Dalton Connect, um, Rob Dillingham, Reed Shepard, uh, Jalen Williams' little brother. What's his name? I forgot his name. It can be like rotational players. Yeah, there's no. Hey, we're building a franchise around this guy. Uh, Jadeveon Clowney to the Panthers. Oh. Right. Happy retirement in two years. Uh, not, He's not, already about to retire. Not my favorite. Not my favorite. WD-40 worked out well. Oh, well, one thing at a time. <laughs> one thing at a time. <laughs> they had us speak to our sales team yesterday, and it went as bad as you can imagine. <laughs> I was trying to undo all of the damage all morning. That story you told me yesterday, man. Oh, man. I had to go to one account executive who I genuinely love and had to tell her I love her, which I do. Yeah. Hey, tell our sales. Hey, I think the world of you. Just let everyone know. Comes comes from a place of love. Sometimes y'all need to kick, you know, good hey, kick in the ass. We but... need we need here. We need that Malik Mike Brown relationship. Oh, that does not. Sometimes so that exists. Say nice. That exists with me and our girl Justine. Mm -hmm. We could do that. Mm -hmm. There is not another. That does not exist with the department. No. At Big all. Rich. Big Rich. I, uh, Big Rich is there. I think they understand. I think they smell what we're cooking. Well, see, but Malik and Malik and Mike will go at each other. Like I don't. I think Rich will hear us, and Rich will be. Like, I understand. I got you. Malik. We got I mean, Rich is like Rich Justine. Is Justine will be like, sit your ass down and we'll talk about it later. And then they'll just be like, all right. D -Lo, no, no, D-Lo will be like, I ain't trying to hear that, yeah. man. He 
storms out of the room. That's a shoot. And then they link up that's, later. They're that's just like, that's hey, what man, happened. Let's talk about what's going on. That's what happened. <laughs> get, get a text the next morning. Hey, sunshine. Uh, you want to want to get here a little early and talk? I got you. Yeah, I'll be there. Monk, you got your Kevin Herders. You got to deal with different players. It's all just, this. You just you oh, can't this. keep inviting us to do this. It does not go well ever. And we try and everything will be fine. And be like, all right, Casey, we could do this. We got this. Let's approach this differently. And then the day before the game, something happens that pisses us off and puts us in a bad state. And then maybe during the game, someone says something well. that <laughs> someone says something that really sends you over the edge. <laughs> And that that happened. Maybe I need to come in here and just mediate, just be like the level head. Like, no, no, I got it. Like, this is what Damien wants to say or whatever. <laughs> see, so we'll see. But Jesse in there, let me translate for you guys what this means. <laughs> I, was, uh, I was telling the wife about how everything went. <laughs> I said it word for word. I was like saying, and then Damien said this, and I said it word for word. He said, he said that. <laughs> I said, look, sometimes you got to say what you got to say. <laughs> I don't even know what you're referring to. That's funny. Well, when the when the suggestion was made and you said not to be a. <laughs> oh. <laughs> I felt like I had to say that three times. Sometimes you got to say what you got to say. Hey. <laughs> I'm, a, I'm, a, I'm a big believer in that. Sometimes Literally, there's no other way of putting certain things. I had to walk in the meeting and go, not to be a jerk. Do you all know who we are? <laughs> Just if you don't, let me introduce us. Like, yeah. Do you know what this is on the screen? You guys were in the meeting yesterday. You don't even know that, but the, the chatty house yeah, was man. in the meeting yesterday. Yeah, we had uh, Drew Down was, was mentioned. Charlie had a uh, uh, YouTube pulled up for the insiders. He had an old show pulled up, and then we pulled up the live version of the insiders, and we were explaining to them what that chat box was and who you guys were. And Drew Down and and, and two hundred nine Dave Garcia and the, D David Jackson, mm -hmm. the crew that comes from Tracy and. And Ramsey, who's been with us since day one, mm -hmm. and Katrina, and how they're a couple, and it's the first couple of the chatty house, and no, no. and and how this crew rocks with us, man. So um, I don't think we got through to anybody. So <laughs> we'll see. We'll do it needs, again in a year. What, what needs to happen? It's not that we don't need to have these meetings anymore, but what needs to happen is they, we need to have them after they've sold something. Mm, well, because it'll be it'll be a different it'll be different energy, no. not. When something hasn't been done in months, mm -hmm. <laughs> then you want to meet with us. Got about six to nine months of uh, <laughs> filled up of of things we got to get off our chest. What if we were just bring the chatty house to a meeting? The, the, you know that we're about well, that. You, well, 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 we kind of we, kind we of have. have. They've been to Sky River. Boy, nothing ever moved the needle more than that first Sky River live show <laughs> where they were looking around like, who are all these people? <laughs> we just talked to you guys. They had it. been to another live show at Sky River where no one was there. So it ain't so. Well, well then they came to ours and it was like, who are all these people? Yeah, what's here? going on here? Look, why are they all wearing D-Lo and Casey merchandise? We, 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 uh, we talk about our people. Everybody on that sales team, I really like. Like they're oh, they're good yeah. folks. That's they're good people. people. We just we like I said, it's Mike and Malunk. Mike and Malunk. Mike and Malik. That's what it is. Yeah. Like we like. Hey, come on. We trying to win. We trying mm -hmm. to get to the playoffs. Mm -hmm. Let's go. Mm -hmm. That's all it is. But it, it might all be those people. I, I I think I can speak for you too. We really like everybody. Over there. I love them. Justine is, is is that us and Justine. That's Mike and Malik. The some of the others might be like Malik and Luke. Now, why that doesn't exist, what? I can imagine what it would be like. Well, how did Luke get in there? I don't know. I'm just trying to. Uh, Malik and Bar uh, what's his name? There, Baringo? there might be some Alvins where it's, hey, we're not going to quit. We're not. We're, we're we not going to quit. quit. I can we're assure gonna, you we did not hey, quit. Hey, on. Look, it's Big Rich. <laughs> Big Rich Alvin Gentry. We're not going to quit. We got to do better. We got to do better for you guys. Yeah, That's my big dog, Rich man. is Alvin. Yeah, That's my dog. and Alvin's the coolest dude in the room, right? So yeah, our our man Rich is. That's is, my is, dog, is Rich. Man. Is, 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 he's Alvin. <laughs> and for the love of God, don't ever utter the phrase "That's neat" to me when I'm explaining oh, something no. to you. Don't ever do that. That will that will virtually end our relationship in a heartbeat. That's like this morning I was listening to the morning roast and Butcher 
Butcher Boy is, gets offended when somebody's like, uh, hey, I see you, boss. Like if somebody says that to him, he's like, he, he doesn't like that. That bothers him? <laughs> he said it's condescending. <laughs> oh, Bush. <laughs> You say something is neat when little Tommy in first grade brings his macaroni picture up to you and shows it to you. That's neat, Tommy. <laughs> hey, this channel has 18 million impressions on it. Yeah, that's neat. But could mm. you, like, send it in an email? All right. Hmm. All, right. Mm. All right, man. Like, let me just go ahead and bite my tongue. I would have fell to the floor. <laughs> I would have fell to the floor. All right. Oh man. Oh, there was something I wanted to ask you about. That meeting went like the game last night. <laughs> oh boy. Jeez. Shout out. Uh, shout out. Maybe back oh, the game last night. Oh. Cap. Don't think she does that anymore. But she's like flying around the country. She's uh writing books. What's what's her line again? Don't waste the weight. Don't waste the weight. Yeah. Talking to yeah. people. Motivational speakers. That's what she things. always does. Making man. moves, man. Now she just don't have time for us. Yeah, making moves. Um. Something about last night I do want to ask you. You see the clip that went a little a little mini viral from De'Aaron last night? The clip about the media? Yeah. Oh, I didn't know that that caught on. It was on what's one of those like not NBA Central but like clutch points or something like that like Okay. It was it was it was circulating a little bit. King's okay. Twitter had it as well. It was just a big King's Twitter thing too. I know I I saw James. I saw his entire video. And then I saw Matt isolated it. Mm. Uh, and it was I think J.A. asked him about coming to the podium after big losses. And he he said, uh, you know, and, and, and J.A. framed it as kind of a like a, a leadership accountability thing. And De'Aaron was like, I don't get anything. I'm paraphrasing. Oh, yes. I don't get there. anything out of coming to the podium. Yeah. Um, and. My teammates don't give a f if I come up here or not. Right. If Mike or uh, Michael is the public relations relations person, Shannon is the the, the head of the media uh, the team there. If they ask me when they ask me to do it, I come do it. I don't get anything out of this. Did you have any big deal, little deal, no deal? No deal. It was I nothing. think it's no deal. Yeah, yeah it was nothing. And, it and was the, funny if it was anything else. And the the reason why nothing I think it's mm -hmm. no deal is simply because. He said his teammates don't so, trip. And if that's accurate, I have no reason for him to believe that it's not. If they're not tripping and they don't look at him any different as a leader or anything, if he talks or not, then it's a no deal. I feel like if I, anything, they just cleared it up. Just as far as like what people think of those con like those press conferences and stuff like that. It's just not, it's just not what we all have thought, maybe. I, I might be so <laughs> there was there was way too much made of that time where De'Aaron wasn't talking. Mm -hmm. And I know James brought it up and I know why James brought it up and everything that transpired after that was kind of kept between all parties involved. There was way, way too much made of that mm -hmm. way, way too much. It was very, very literally nothing, but I think I'm out of the loop a little bit on this. Did people think it was a big deal? I don't, I, I didn't really dive there. I mean, it was circulating and there was comments and all this. Are you I talking about as far as last night? Like, yeah, said, yeah, yeah, I think yeah. people, people were turned off. Some people, I'm not gonna say everyone. Cause I feel like there's a lot of people like, yeah, it's big, like no big deal or whatever. It's nothing. But I feel like people were kind of turned off by just kind of Damn. like, Oh, like, well, you make all this money. Like you go up here and like just stuff along the lines of that. I'm, I'm looking at, uh, I'm, I'm looking at Matt. Cause I know Matt had the isolated video and I'm just looking at the, um, some of the responses. Uh, yeah, this is weird. I, I didn't know this was, I, I literally thought absolutely nothing of this when I saw the clip. Hmm. Yeah, it was, it was certain the, the, um, Twitter page that I'm talking about clutch points. I mean, that's, that's one of those NBA central, they picked up on it. Um, some people are just saying, man, it is not that serious. Is it, it like, hear me out. I'm not trying to like bash fans or anything. Is it a matter of fans just wanting something to mean more than it ever will? I think we all have our perceptions of like leaders and, you know, different things like that. And again, it's not my story. So I'll like, 
what happened with De'Aaron earlier this year wasn't about leader. It was literally less than nothing. Mm -hmm. And it just got turned into something it didn't need to be. It wasn't De'Aaron's responsibility to make sure that he spoke instead of Keon Ellis. Mm -hmm. I'm sure if Shannon or Mike, the individuals that, that De'Aaron referenced, if, if neither of them comes to De'Aaron and says, hey, we need you to go to the podium, he doesn't think about, well, who's going? Right. If they don't come to him, he's going through with treatment, working out, whatever his post-game routine is, mm -hmm. he's doing it. Mm -hmm. He doesn't, it's, it's not his job or a, quote, leader's job to track down, well, who's talking to the media today? That's other people's job. And so like, it, it's, it's, it's nothing. Like De'Aaron's leadership has been called into question for far too long. I thought that got deaded last year, but I don't know. Maybe not. It's, it's, I'm, I'm with De'Aaron. It's not that serious. They do it because they have to. It's part of their job. That's why they do it. Yeah. I don't have a problem with that. I have no problem with that whatsoever. I, I don't either. Um, Some players don't say it. Right. Oh, no, it's fine. I, don't I mean, know that, that may be. No, yeah, you got it. Like, no, De'Aaron, like, I don't give a F about any of this. And, and that may be one of the reasons why the clip is, you know, going the way it is, because you don't hear. This never really comes up like that, right? Like, not not in the post game, not even on, like, podcasts, on podcast B. Like, they don't really talk about it. They all just kind of, they're not asked about it, I guess, so they don't say nothing. De'Aaron was asked about it, and he's like, it's, it's literally a no deal. Like nobody in that locker room cares. I don't care. I don't really like doing it, but if they ask me to, I'll do it. It's whatever. People speak in their mind, like in, just in general in the NBA, like Russell Westbrook is a guy who think who gets a lot of like, not heat, but just more so like attention for it. Like it's just, it's always going to, whether it's good or bad, it's always going to get attention. Yeah. If you're That's not, doing, if you're not yeah. given the robotic answer, like yeah. you're just speaking your mind to get attention either way. Huh. Which speaks to the fact he's the leader of this franchise. Mm -hmm. When, when, when you go plus or minus positive or negative, that speaks to who you are to this franchise. Yeah. Once again, I, I say this, I say this, uh, routinely. I give my thoughts about this. I was saying this all Friday after Malik and Mike Brown and all this other stuff, how I go about, you know, saying, Hey, I, I don't like this, or I don't like that, or I don't think this is necessary. I don't think that is necessary. I'm coming from the premise of high school athletics, college athletics, AU athletics, where the dynamic is adult and kid or young man. The NBA is a completely different place. It's a different world. And they, they like Malik and Mike, I look at something like that and I'm like, bro, that's not cool. We don't need to be doing that. But in the NBA, and specifically with these two, they've already said it. It's whatever it just happens mm -hmm. we're cool like it doesn't affect nothing the locker room don't feel no way about it we talk about it we move on that's what i'll go by mm -hmm. i i haven't lived in an nba locker room i haven't been there day to day it's a different place and once again in a in a certain world you may want to say hey my, my my leader or whatever he always goes up talks faces the media all this other stuff we respect that or whatever but this man telling you and other people are telling you they don't they don't care one way or the other in the locker room. That's all I need to hear. I'm not going to they don't care if they're good. It's all that matters. Mm -hmm. And he says they're good either way. Like if he talks or doesn't talk or Simonis talks or doesn't talk. So that's the way I take it. Yeah, I think fans. And I mean this lovingly and media do it as well. They just make too much of these things that happen at the podium. Like and and I think it's only magnified. I'm just looking at these responses, and and if you're a Twitter responder and you're listening, man, no, we appreciate you. Mm -hmm. But some of y'all are just too deep. Mm. It's pause. It's just not that serious. Like it is really, really not that serious. Um, let's get to these phone lines, man. Nine one six nine zero nine thirteen twenty. We'll start with our man Kamara. I know he's not happy today. Kamara, what's up, man? I mean, actually, I'm not like upset. You know, it is what it is, man. They've had so many bad losses that maybe I'm just dead inside. I don't know. <laughs> well, this also wasn't a bad loss. You lost, I mean, like, just, you lost yeah. and handedly, but you lost to a good team. They shot great. You didn't shoot well. 
It happens. You lost to a team that you had kind of mentally prepared to lose one game to. You just really wanted to win the first one. You thought they was going to win both? Well, uh, I, no, yeah, I, mean, I just saying, that. I don't think I don't think they go into like thinking they're going to lose a game. I just I think what happened is, as Kenny said, it's a make or miss league, and you know they were hitting shots that you just kind of like, all right, well, listen, we got a hand in the face, off balance, got PJ Washington who's been shooting twenty nine percent for the year, all of a sudden looking like Larry Bird out there. Like I just think it's just one of those things where you're like, all right, you know, it's just one of them nights. You know, for some reason. Uh, Golden Golden One has the softest ri- rims in the league because everybody seems to find a rhythm when they get in there. But you know, listen, they gotta they gotta get one on set on Friday. So it is what it is. I guess one of the things I thought I want to ask you guys and you know, Kenny, get your thoughts on it was, um, I don't know. Sometimes I feel like uh, Domas, and it's hard to criticize somebody who's leading the league in double doubles and in triple doubles. But you know, do you feel like sometimes we're like, man, I you're you're deep in the post and instead of looking to attack, you're looking to pass. And sometimes I want Domas to be like, listen, man, like take on the aggressor as far as scoring and not always looking to distribute um, and, and punish them in the post and, and, and make your presence be felt, not just physicality and rebounding, but also going up strong and, you know, getting those, getting those points. And um, I do agree, uh, Kenny, that, uh, or maybe it was D that you're saying that De'Aaron was going side to side a lot. Um, he did find his way to the rim to the rack sometimes, but um, sometimes it's because Dallas was bringing up the, the the bigs on the high post and pinching them, forcing them to like uh, change up their their uh, DHO action. So I do see adjustments going to be happening in the in the uh, fourth game on Friday, but um, I, I I do want to see maybe if like what else they can adjust and what do you guys see going forward as far as adjusting on their game plan. I'll, I'll take it offline. Well, no, I'll shut the hell up because he asked Kenny. <laughs> no. I ain't want to hear what I got to say. No, I'll see, I'll see. Come on, that's fine. Not even the TC, like, courtesy. No, yeah, no, D-Lo, not, even, like, no. not even the courtesy. No, that's cool. 25 years, just right down the toilet. Just want to hear what, what KC got to say. That's fine. So, KC, what adjustments do they need to make? I mean. Well, wait a minute. Actually, before that, what do you think about what he said about Domas? Because uh, that was the KC question. Yeah. I, I understand what he's saying, but, you know, when Domas... You get in is, trouble for this type of stuff, by the way, Kamara, because I once posed this. And- well, no. When when Domas is... When he's got nine points, eight assists, seven rebounds, and the shots are falling, mm-hmm. we don't think about it, right? Mm-hmm. You know, that he's... We're talking about he's the hub of the offense, and he's getting everybody involved. Because when the shots are going, that's what's going on. Last night, it didn't feel like the shots were going down. And that helped to it. And I look, I don't disagree. Like there's a couple of times I want him to just get on the block and go to work or mm-hmm. something like that. So you're not wrong with it. It's just, uh, you know, sometimes it don't don't happen that way. And when the shots are falling, we don't we don't think twice about it. Yeah, I, I obviously I want to see that more, especially when he's effective. Boy, but that post game for Mike. Mike was taught he Mike uses that term spray so often, which is the paint touch to the three, the paint touch to the three that it feels like that's their plan. They know Domas is efficient and can score. Mm -hmm. So that's going to pull in the defense as soon as it does. Find Keegan. Mm -hmm. Find, 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 find De'Aaron, find hair, find whoever it is, because that's the spray we're looking for. And that's the shot we can hit. Yeah. And absolutely. Unfortunately for Domas, like, don't, it, last night wasn't one of those nights where where Domas was, you know, uh, uh, nine of ten. Mm-hmm. It's like, yo, be, yo, make that ten twenty. Yeah. He was three of ten. Yeah. Like they, 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 again, it's where I choose to give Dallas credit. Dallas did really, really good on De'Aaron and and, and Domas last night. Mm-hmm. I agree. Um, adjustments. De'Aaron was talking, I'm sorry, uh, Kamara was talking about them bringing the uh, post player up to De'Aaron uh, on a lot of the plays last night. What What's adjustment number one that Sacramento needs to make? We had the wide open three numbers, so they, to a degree, wait, they were there. Um, but is there an adjustment that they need to make? Uh, you know what, to watch the game film, they probably will dissect something that, that they can... They can do more. One of the things I think is attack Luca more on the defensive end. We we talked about that a little bit, but make him work. Make Kyrie work as well. Make these guys work on the defensive end. But 
it, it's maybe a little too simplistic and, you know, it's not inside basketball too much, but last, I really do believe last night was a case of the Mavericks shot the lights out and the Kings they did. couldn't, couldn't buy a bucket after a while. Would you let someone else bring the ball up the floor for the Kings? Yeah. Um, like if, if they're, if they're now there's, 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 you know, probably notes you got to take here, but mm-hmm. if they're only picking up De'Aaron and they're not picking up Keon or Domas even, do you let one of those two guys bring the ball up the floor and just get De'Aaron down the court? Because a lot of these plays, De'Aaron is crossing, like Harrison is setting, trying to set screens mm-hmm. like two feet above the, the three-point line to try to get him freed up and downhill a little bit to the basket. Maybe. And I only say, I only say maybe because I'd, I'd have to, I'd have to watch the tape, uh, look at the, look at the film a little bit, but I, in, unless they made an adjustment, they might have did the same thing last time they played them, and De'Aaron killed them. Oh, we'll like, find out. You know that that, that might have been the the game plan in, or we've seen different teams do the same thing, and De'Aaron plays well. Um, well, they did it effectively, that's for sure. Uh, now, at now, least in my opinion, they did. Now maybe. It's a little different because second night of a back-to-back, trying to wear mm-hmm. them out that mm-hmm. way, mm-hmm. and maybe that has a little bit of an effect. But you know, I, I, I think, I don't think what happened last night is too, is too um, difficult to decipher. I don't think much has to change. It's as simple as missed shots and made shots. Yeah. Hmm. I mean, these guys. These guys couldn't miss. They were hitting yeah. all all type of shots, and the Kings couldn't hit anything. So, like I said, you watch some film. I'm sure there's some things. Ah, maybe we could do this a little different, or we could force Luca here, like some real inside basketball, watching the film, like create a strategy type stuff that you could do a little different for sure. But I I promise you, like this, if you change something on the defensive end, that or or the offensive end, and the numbers are still the same. The result's going to be the same. Mm-hmm. That's kind of where I, I come mm-hmm. from. Mm-hmm. It wasn't those things weren't minuscule enough to say, hey, a change here is is what's needed. No, you need to find a way for to shoot better, number one, and hope that they don't hit 22 threes again. You got me uh, thinking, thinking, thinking. Uh-huh. I got I feel like Derek Jones was on him a lot in the first two games. Well, just four offensive plays in the first play. The first play of that game was just De'Aaron pulling up for three. Um, the first four play offensive plays of the game, they're not picking De'Aaron up like they did last night. Like, not at all. He's going straight to the basket. He had 34 in this one. Mm. This is the this this looks like this is the game on January 27th. So this is the last time they played uh, before last night. They're they're not picking anyone up at half court. They just uh, I, I got Herter and Harrison bringing the ball up the floor here uh, on this one, and, and, and De'Aaron you know working early, but they they made an adjustment again. This is a different basketball team. Mm-hmm. This this team that I'm watching right here from January 27th is different than the team we saw last night. We'll come back. We'll talk more basketball uh, adjustments for the Kings, uh, and maybe some more on the sales meeting. I don't know. <laughs> you you, you want to distract it? TC, I see you. Hang tight. Uh, 916-909-1320. Much more ahead. See them with KC. Brought to you by Sky River Casino and Sacramento Sports Leader ESPN 1320. Yeah, De'Aaron got a dunk in this one. that They were like, oh, we can't let that happen anymore. Oh, my <laughs> that was gosh. That was in a uh, transition, too. That's, that's the yeah. other thing. So that's the other thing about that, right? I think the Kings probably did a good job in transition getting out on the break. Well, you can't do that taking the ball out of the net the whole mm-hmm. night. Yeah. You know, they shot 58% or something from the field, 56% from, from three. Not gonna get too many transition opportunities. I need to hear this. Yeah, he just he, he they just did the ball roll gimmick all the way to half court. That was Sage Field. (laughs) 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 
match made in heaven right there. <laughs> she couldn't wait for that interview. Why does Nick Wright have his hair that way? I'm not sure. I mean, to each his own. I don't know. If it makes him happy, that's all that matters. Just, I think there's better looks for him. Maybe not. <laughs> yeah, they. I'm. I'm into the second half. They didn't pick De'Aaron up at half court one time, Ooh. or in the in the front in the back court one time. Oh, off glass, nasty. And he was fouled. De'Aaron's cold. De'Aaron is cold. Goodness gracious. He cooked the Mavericks this game. He's killing them, boys. He probably gonna yeah, kill them he on really Friday. He really did. He really did. Well, shout out to whatever player just said that we should pick up De'Aaron at half uh, in the in on, on the inbounds because that was effective. This team had a coach, man. They'd be good. <laughs> mm. Wizards, Capitals, Virginia talks are dead. That's funny. That's funny. Yeah, Those uh, talks have been going on forever. The governor or whoever it is, she, she already told you what it is. She mm -hmm. must think I got stupid written on my head. Michigan, I guess we could do this deal. Are you sure? It's probably going to get knocked out by like round six. <laughs> Are you sure? <laughs> Pretty sure I owe Michigan a bottle of tea. <laughs> How much time we got, Justin? Well, looks like the new J.J. LeBron podcast was talking Domas. I, I saw they put video clips on there. Mm-hmm. All right, Mitch, we can do it. It's a deal. Oh, man. That Caitlin Clark to the big three story is crazy. Absolutely crazy. ESPN 1320, folks. Love their popcorn. <laughs> I was a big popcorn guy back in the day. Popcorn's one of those things I don't think I can have in the house. Otherwise, I'm going to eat it every day. When I go to the movies, always get You always get popcorn? You have to. You have to. Have to. You get that at Coke Icy. <laughs> Maybe if you brought an extra $50, you can get a candy as well. Bruh. Nobody ever talks about that. They always complain about like tickets to games and all this other stuff. Movies. Yeah, movies have been running a scam for about two decades now. No, don't mind me. Yeah, Dame's busy. Back to movies. Like, yeah, I pay more me. for the snacks and stuff like that than you do for the tickets at this point. The, and the tickets are grossly outrageous. Yes. The tickets are like $20 a person. At least. It's, it's, it's really ridiculous. We need to take down big movies. movies. And then, like, but nobody ever talks about them. Nobody, everybody talk about the price for a game, which is crazy, which is a crazy price. I'm not saying that, but let's fix movies, too. That's facts. We need to do that. I will say, though, I love the fact I can, like, order my popcorn and, like, slushy ahead of time. Just walk in, pick it up. Don't got to talk to anybody, really. So I haven't really done that before. It's kind of weird. I feel like that's happening a lot now. So I'm, I'm like, taking care of business. And this is what you two do. Well, I didn't know what you were doing. I thought you were looking up something. Because you know how sometimes you get down a rabbit hole and get lost. I was like, all right, well, my man's trying to so Let's something. go to movies or boxing and slushies. You want to talk about, like, Kings? Well, <laughs> well, fair enough. We need to go back to when the one good thing, that the only good thing that came out of the pandemic was when they just started putting movies in the house. 
uh, cost see, twenty dollars. Do, do that. No, the I movies going to the movies is an that. experience. That's yeah, like I love it. Now. Come on, we can't be completely recluse. Out yeah. There. Like let's go on. A I day. strongly disagree. Let's go on a day. Let's go watch but a I, movie. Nah, but I never. I always want to go see a movie and say, oh, I can't. We can't do it right now. Oh, I can't do it. Oh, I forget. Oh, I can't do. It. If it was, oh, let's go. Let's watch it right now. Well, they should. And see, yeah, see, I, I'm, I'm again. I understand. Like it'd be, it'd be cool. But now, charge me twenty dollars to watch it in my house. You, you I, I'd see same. way more movies. That's not the same because they're losing like they're losing potentially like eighty extra dollars. Because it's twenty dollars a person to go to the movie theaters. You do twenty dollars for the whole family, you're losing sixty more dollars. Not my problem. I'm a consumer. Y'all I'm gave big us business. That. I, I, you know, I don't understand big business, well, but you I know, guess, big business. Yes, that guy on Twitter got through to you. <laughs> they did that with some movie. So, so what they do now is like, uh, it was uh, the the uh, the Bob Marley movie. I can't remember. It was called One Love or Marley. What what it's called? Well, it's not called Marley. That was a dog movie, isn't it? Marley and Me, I think. Oh, yeah. So, so the Bob Marley movie, I think it dropped on Valentine's Day. Sounds about right. And which I think was his birthday. It it, it dropped around that time. Mm -hmm. And then it's like you can you can rent it now for like twenty dollars. So I guess they'll do like a the theater run is a little bit shorter than it used to be. And that and that's and then you can get it. That's fair. All right, but you, yeah, I mean, you got to give it four to six weeks in the theater. Four. Look, no, dude. I feel like they do it now. If it's a flop, then it'll be on Blu-ray or I, digital tomorrow. Yeah, that's facts. If it's if it's good, that's um, facts. you're gonna have to wait a few months. Yeah, that's yeah. we're gonna have to make our money off of this somehow. And that's before we start talking about Netflix and all that other stuff where you ain't got to pay for nothing. Well, you Usually, paying you paying for Netflix? Well, you, yeah, you pay Netflix, but it's on there, right? Yeah, but I mean. That's why they keep rate Netflix damn near ninety dollars a yeah, month they now. Need to, they need to settle down. Because what am I going to do? Netflix, Delete Netflix? No, Netflix. More. I got to get rid of Netflix. There's literally no. You need to get rid of Netflix when Raw's coming next year. Oh, I forgot. Yeah, it's over. We lost. You ain't going nowhere. Streaming one. We lost, guys. Mm-hmm. He's right. Take my money, Hulu. Hulu's yeah, Hulu's the worst one. But Hulu, they but, messed up my whole little. I don't even know how to. But where it's Hulu a mess right now? Hulu, where Hulu was smart is they're a, a the Disney entity, mm-hmm. so you get Hulu, the stupid ass ESPN thing. Don't do that. ESPN and, Plus is actually phenomenal. And uh, do what's the other one? Disney Plus. Disney. They just launched the Disney they, Plus and Hulu just launched their new app. That's like a joint app now too. I didn't know that. Yeah. I need them. Why don't they just all merge as one giant app so I can just log into one app instead of the three? Like if I want to watch Moana, I can watch Moana. If I want to watch oh, Ali man. versus Frazier, I can watch Ali versus Frazier. I think that's what it is now. Cause like on Disney Plus, I can watch 30 for 30s and all that. I think they got like okay. the new Hulu show shows on there, I think. Okay. Moana, yeah. that is if I ever want Ryan to just settle down for 30 minutes. Moana's oh, a Moana. fantastic. She thinks she's Moana. That might be the Rock's best movie. That's phenomenal. It's no, it's a yeah, it might it's be phenomenal. That's a, that the game plan is phenomenal as well. Yeah. I do love the game plan. That's the one I like, right? Yeah, the that's football, the football one. one. Yeah, yeah. yeah, Tooth Fairy, the hockey one. It's weird. really not a good movie, the but it's plan? just very pleasant. Yeah, game plan is a good movie. Like The Rock is still kind of figuring things out as an actor, and it's he's it's not as. You see the tweets of The Rock the other day not with his him, best. like with him having like hair, like wasn't like when he first broke into the movie scene or whatever, but just after like, he's got like weird hair, which hairlines receiving receding, but it's just like, it's weird. He's like, he's not even big rock either. Oh yeah. Like he went through an era. That's why he fired his management team, his management team. I can't remember if it was, I I, I think he's with William Morris Endeavor. Now he might've been with CAA before and CAA was like, yeah, there's no guys your side. You need to, be smaller. You need to look normal. Like that's how you're going to become a leading man. Like you're mm-hmm. too big. You're that's not leading man material. So he slimmed down and you look back at these weird movies like tooth fairy. And like, there's a, even game plan to a certain degree. He's obviously in tremendous shape still, but he's a lot smaller than what we're used to. They're not necessarily, they weren't necessarily wrong. He just, no, they he, weren't, but it's one of those Mike Brown, Malik Monk things in that you've got to know your client, right? And that's not him. Well, maybe he wanted to be a leading man. Maybe he wanted to do Hitch. That wasn't going to necessarily work the way he's built now. But he is doing. He is a leading man. What you mean? The Rock is a leading man. 
and when, he looks when's the like last the rock time he did a movie like that like like hitched it's hitch it's not hitched it's hitch the guy's name is hitch this is offensive <laughs> your behavior towards that movie is offensive you need to stop in case you also have like seen back to the futures <laughs> well see that's not the same thing um most of the i don't know the rock when you say are, when you say leading man that's what i think of but no and, a leading man is the lead actor of like skyscraper he's the leading man in yeah he's the, he's the guy that doesn't mean he's a you're heartthrob right, you're right but it's a it's a different type of uh character like mission impossible is is a is a it's an action movie no, like tom cruise is you're, no you're right man. you're right but it's i'm just saying when i think of when i think of what they were trying to get him to do mm -hmm. like there's not any he rom coms. Can't, he can't. He yeah. Well, that's what I was thinking of, though, right? Like he's not gonna be Fast and Furious Rock and uh, Valentine's Day. I mean, game plan is a. It's cute. It's not a rom com. It's not a rom com, but it's it's centered around. Who was the Who was the lady in that movie? It was somebody we know, right? It wasn't Rosario so. Dawson, was it? Rosario Dawson was um the rundown. Mm. Was it the um, girl from no not Rush Hour, right? I don't remember. Well, now we're gonna have to. So find now I'm out. now I'm looking. Yeah. Uh I don't know what you'd classify Jungle Cruise as, but that's a fantastic movie. Man, that was a solid one. Jumanji. Jumanji's good. I don't I, I don't know what you classify these movies as, well, but not, once again, it's not hitch. It's a rom com. Rom they're also they're also the, they're not they're not like skyscraper like the movies where he's Freaking jumping out of buildings and all that either, though. He does. I don't believe he has a rom com on his. And I believe that's not. Not in any. By the way, it, Skinny Rock doesn't have rom com. I believe that's what he was trying to get to. Rosalind Sanchez was she the 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 oh. uh, the love interest in that movie? I think she was. She might have been. And the I game mean, plan, like the game, the game plan. Joe Shout Kingman. Shout out Rosalind Sanchez. Never say no, Joe. Um. No, I don't think so. Well, she's in oh, Rosalind Sanchez. Yeah, yeah, she was in it. Yeah, she was Rosalind in it. Sanchez was in that uh, uh, that movie with Cuba Gooding Jr. <laughs> it was like, I think it was Boat Trip. <laughs> oh, well, <laughs> his name has been kind of surfacing on Twitter too. For what? Why? I feel like connected to the Diddy stuff. Oh, no, I've seen his name a lot this week. Oh no! Don't be connected to the. Sh we call him Sean, by the way. Oh, the Sean stuff. We're trying to be sensitive. I got you. To yeah, 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 I got you. I'll, yeah. I'll clean that up. Yeah. I've been seeing that right. I've seen his name a lot. Trying this to be week. sensitive to social media handles. <laughs> Cuba Gooden Jr. What do we What do we got here? They've added Cuba Gooden Jr. to. Oh, okay. So I'm not wrong, right? No. Yeah. Nope. Yeah, he's on the blocks as well. Nope. So what am I supposed Do to it, not watch Boys in the Hood anymore? Yeah, then are we gonna lose the uh walking out of jail or walking out of the police office in handcuffs gif? Well that well, we you might that? get a new one. a little bit more real than you might get a new me. one. I wonder how much this would be an interesting pocket watching segment, but I don't know. By the way, The Rock's got like the greatest Wikipedia page of all times because you see like Rocky Mayavia. The nation of domination, and then you just keep <laughs> scrolling, and you get to like Moana. Is he up there with Jamie Foxx, one of the greatest entertainers ever? It's not singing, but like, well, the rock and sing. Yeah, we got the rock concert. The rock and sing. He's also got that tip hop, that rap he's song with a, Tech Nine, right? Medium. He does have the Tech Nine. That was bad. We can forget about that. <laughs> I do remember that. <laughs> he tweeted after too, like, "Wow, I was kind of like shy about this, but I, I, I did great with this." <laughs> no, you didn't, pal. Hmm. <laughs> I wonder if I can, I have a fascinating idea for a pocket watching segment. I got, well, for today, because I got one for today. Okay. Are we, are we ready for it? I don't know, but Banks, come work with us. Um, what year was, this is 2024. Mm. There's virtually no way we could do this. I don't think there's any way we could do it. Well, let's but brainstorm it. What do you think? It would be fascinating. The Rocks movie career earnings now uh, let, let, let me let me let me let me no, that's that's wrong that was wrong that's not right that's not i did that wrong i what i when i say the rocks movies i mean the rocks movies the movies that he made the, the that, gross earnings like not how much money the mock rock made 
for the mummy returns, but how much money the mummy returns the mummy returns made. Mm-hmm. Anybody, anybody down, or, or is it I'll too, play this too game, difficult? I don't know. I don't know if they have these numbers available. You probably have to add I, them up. I, I think I, I, I think I have the number, and I can give you the highest grossing. <whistles> wow, I'm always down. Is for that a, game, a shoot? Yeah, I think it is. I can give you the. There's no way this number's right. Mm. This number can't be right. Well, Fast this and number. Furious. I'm sure um, those movies pumped up whatever number you're looking at. I don't think I I don't think we could accurately do it. So I'm gonna say I'm 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 scratching this. I don't think we can accurately do it. Mm. It has Fast and Furious. Let me see which freaking number this is. Furious Seven, 2015, Mm. as its highest grossing film at 1.5 billion dollars. I mean, that feel like the fate of the furious is number two at one point two billion dollars. Where's Hobbs and Shaw? Probably not there. So this is interesting. Jumanji comes in at third. And it's the first movie below a billion dollars. It's nine hundred and ninety nine point five million. Those are the top three grossing movies. I don't feel like this number could possibly be accurate. But the total start to dwindle down. Maybe this is only the number from a certain year. After becoming one of the greatest professional wrestlers in the WWE, Dwayne The Rock Johnson shifted his focus towards his acting career. The late 2000s was then his career really started to pick up the momentum. Johnson starring in the game plan, Get Smart, Race to, Miss Rich, uh, Race to Witch Mountain. Since then, he is starting countless films, which have grossed more than any guesses just for fun. No, because ne- never mind, because you're going to go count it, count it. <laughs> Five billion. It, so it says twelve billion dollars. I was going to say about eleven, which seems around. low, given the fact that we just read off three movies that were in the vicinity of a billion dollars each. Well, but those are obviously. That doesn't count the rundown, which probably made like yeah, I was about to say that six sixty million. Those 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 probably carry it. Oh, for sure. Everything out, outside of those, you know, the way we should have done might it might get you a billion in itself. That's e me. We should have done it this way. The highest grossing one was what one point seven. The Fast and the Furious ten on the list because these are the top ten. Was the Mummy Returns at four hundred and thirty five million? Mm. So that could have set a little bit more context as to what this looked like. So we're I working with stuff now. I still feel like $12 billion is a little low, but this was published a month and a half ago, so I'll I'll buy it. Maybe we can do like actors and entertainers or whatever for our in-season tournament of pocket watchers. <laughs> in-season tournament. I'm telling you, this is That's a, a good idea. making I gotta, deal. I, I like it. I'm telling you, I got a good one for today, man. Okay, well, okay, well I, I, what, what time do we, oh, we got time. Jake Gaden's going to join us in a couple of minutes. So what do we got? Make people mad. What about, I don't know if we've already done this before. If we have, I certainly don't remember. What about my boy Kyrie? He's been in the league long enough. He's had some, some interesting contracts. What about Kyrie for today in pocket? I don't think we've done Kyrie. I don't think we you have think either. So? I don't think we have. Just by my search, it doesn't look like we have. Kyrie Irving. Were you out getting shots up on spot track yesterday? I was not getting shots up. I was just watching the game. I said, I wonder if Kyrie. Because this needs to be, needs to get paid. There needs to be a daily occurrence. You can honestly do pocket watches like with the Kings opponent player. Like after yeah, every, like, I'm, go. oh gosh. Yeah. That's part of uh, Will Z's uh, getting ready for the game. Yeah. <laughs> Find a pocket. We got watch. graphics for this. <laughs> the guy, okay, where did the. Where are they finding these pictures from me? Looking those, sad, those looking pictures, black and white, all this. Other, what pictures, are we doing? Pictures are that's a really great graphic. We can't figure out how to do graphics here at ESPN 1320. <laughs> we'll figure it out in two Google searches. Kyrie Irving, the former number one overall pick from the 2011 NBA draft. Kyrie has been in the league 13 seasons. E. Woo. Interesting. We're doing earnings to date, correct? Earnings to date. 
I'm a big fan of just what his earnings will be at the end of his career, but we can do earnings today. Well, earnings at the end of his current contract, not necessarily current, the end yeah, of his career. Contract, yeah. Doing, doing yeah, his earnings at the end of his current contract. Boy. Total. All right. That will put us at 15 seasons for Kyrie Irving. 15 seasons. His highest grossing year will be the final year of his current contract. Mm. Which will be the 25-26 season, $42.9 million. See, the spices it up when you do the Goodness career earnings. Gracious. $42.9 million Kyrie Irving will earn in the 25-26 season. That will be his 15th season. In the National Basketball Association. And that's going to be his highest earning? That will be his highest earning year as a professional. My guess is it will be his highest earning year as an amateur as well. well he only played like 11 games. Yeah, well, I won't be too sure. The former number one overall pick in the draft. 15 seasons when this current contract is over. A Kenny Caraway special here. Career earnings for Kyrie Irving is what? I'm going to say 321, Bob. I don't know who Bob is, and that's bordering on offense. But 21, uh, give me the number again. I'm sorry. 321, Bob. 321. I think you shortchanged them today. Is the number for Kenny Caraway. $321 million as he cheers himself on Jesse Tapia, the reigning defending champion who holds a record right now of 2 and 11. Why we always got to bring the record up? I don't 11 and what, 2. I mean, do they put the standings every time they play a game? Like, why, why do we have to do that? Jesse Tapia. We're going to go $340 million. We're going to go. I'm expecting it to be higher, but 340 $340 million. In a tightly contested battle. Oh, wow. Kyrie Irving's career earnings after the 25 26 season will be $353 million. Ladies and gentlemen, he has done it again. His 12th victory of the 2024 season. Kenny Caraway moves to 2 and 12. Jesse Tapia moves to an astonishing 12 and 2. It's like what's what we like to see. We're on a Boston Celtics run right now. Point differential through the roof. Casey, after these blowouts, do you feel it's important to go to the podium and speak to the people? Like, is this your is this is this your way of showing leadership uh to the chatty house and, and to the folks? Look, who I don't give a look. If Kim tells me to come out here and talk. I talk. If she doesn't, then I don't. But Rich and Gina and Lauren, they don't care whether I come out here or not. Jesse, you have any uh, words after it? it I don't. It, 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 I don't know how many victories in a row this has been. We're probably up to seven. That's a conservative guess in a row. We do what we do because that's what we do. That's all I got to say. Now here's Will Z again. Well, now we got a winning percentage attached to the record. It's a, Why? It's a, it's a winning percentage of 143 uh, for Kenny Caraway. Approaching Detroit Pistons status here, though the Pistons. I want to make Pistons Wizards jokes, but I can't because they beat the Kings. So. This game is rigged, man. This, game this is was literally this, we, you, you it was picked, literally yeah, you your favorite it. player. Yeah, it was definitely. Can I say, I'll say this. It's definitely rigged. Let me say, it's about, it's, it's, it, okay. You need to go watch some Carol Lawson inspirational videos right now. <laughs> because, like, look, hey, you got, you got a little better. Oh, oh, stop it. You got a little better. It's stop 300, it. You weren't, you weren't terribly far off. It was 321. As soon as Jesse said, I think you shortchanged him a little bit. I was like, well, this could get tough for my guy. It was just a question of, was, was, was he going to go way over? What did he say? He said 340. He was within 13 million. I mean, I went first yesterday too. It's like I don't know. Just keep fighting. I this stupid ass game. I do want to be clear though. If you're, it was your idea, and it was your favorite player. Stupid game. 
Right. We do pocket watch for Allen Iverson. I win that one. That might just be the end. Like, oh, we might, yeah, just, that, be, we be might just have to move the, yeah, the LA Caraways Kenny, somewhere Kenny, else. Kenny might get in the pickup truck and go home. <laughs> <laughs> Kenny, Kenny might get in the brown pickup truck if we lose <laughs> Allen Iverson. We'll, we'll save that for a later date. And all you people in the chat talking about, I tried to rig it. No. It's on the up and up. I just was watching. I think Kyrie would be a good one. If, if Kenny tried to rig it and that happened, <laughs> man whenever we do have bobby marks man. on again though we do like need to oh, bring this up to him oh, i think he'd be down to bobby would absolutely <laughs> yeah be i think he'd love to play it. what would be it'd be a triple threat match though because the <laughs> ultimate walk-off would be jesse beating bobby marks but and look bobby marks will beat jesse but he uh, uh what's the what's the match when he can't lose the title because I didn't pin him or something like that. Or is it the other way around? No, it's the he other way around. He can lose the title. Right. You beat me Bobby. Pin. Yeah, you yeah. beat Bobby and Jesse gets the loss. <laughs> yeah, that's good Oh, stuff man, right this there. is trash. <laughs> <laughs> the number, I mean, these he, like Kyrie's earning $82 million over the next two years. They, like, it, it's, it's amazing to think for an individual with this much money, but the, his number is changing drastically. Like he's going from 270 to 353. Am I, am I tripping thinking he might get another contract? Not a big one, but he might get another 40 million. How old is uh, he? 40 million. Yeah. He's going to get another 40 million. I'm certain. after this, after this one, though. After, but how old is he? He's That's 32, 33, 30. So he'll be 34 when this contract. And he up. might get a 70. You sign. Yeah. You sign a two year deal. He gonna get the four hundred. Wow. Yeah, he'll get the four hundred. Kyrie, man, Kyrie wanted to. You 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 signed a two year deal for twenty five a pop. Did he make top seventy five? That's a good question. I don't remember. I feel like he. I don't think he did. Yeah, think no, he didn't. He didn't because I remember they would. There was a tweet. I don't know if it was a yeah, joke. I think, I think it was a did. joke, but they had a Kyrie highlight video for him making yeah, it. They, didn't do it. They tripping. They tripping. He he's 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 one of the best to ever do it it's the other it's the other stuff mm -hmm. and it's a like I, I i didn't feel any type of way it's an arena it's they they Kyrie's name got called last night they let him have it they did yeah and it was like it's not it wasn't like long and sustained like his name was buddy mm -hmm. but it was like wow okay now they let luca you know like he's the star they player luca yeah yeah they booed luca. oh man they remember, booed luca. remember were we there Nah, we couldn't have been because we weren't doing the show. But when, like, the first, like, two, three years, he was getting these obnoxious cheers. and people There were, were some Mavericks him. fans there. There were definitely Mavericks. There was fans there was, cheering them well, back in the day. I said, well, you guys should be ashamed of yourself. There were some 77s out there last night. There but, yeah, some... boo his ass. Well, certainly boo him on Friday. Mm -hmm. uh, don't boo Jake Gaden, though, because oh. he's going to join us. Man, I We're forgot. We're going to get into it, bro. I forgot TC was there. Oh, damn. Hey TC, call back. TC, in call 40 back, minutes. bro. Sorry about that. We got, we got. Hey, that's, e, that's e me. We gonna, we gonna get into it. This is, this is. We might break some news. We might. We're gonna talk with Jay. This is, and this is a little controversial around here too, man. It is. It, it is. is. Well, Jay Gaten's been all over this A Sacramento story. Uh, so we'll talk with him when D the one Casey return here on Sacramento Sports Leader ESPN thirteen twenty. Jim Harbaugh finally getting gray hair. That Jim Harbaugh living in an RV. <laughs> He sold everything in his house. Man, man, my oh man just. Um, I feel like Jim Harbaugh is like the regular guy who like yep. made it is like a professional like coach yep. and all that. Like he's living the life we probably would have lived. Like he won't go to a steakhouse because it's too expensive. <laughs> He'll be like, no, I'll just kill the cow and get the steak myself. You ever hear the stories of him, of him playing pickup with his family? He's just fouling everyone, taking it as serious as he can or whatever. <laughs> Jake. So guys, can you hear me? We got you, buddy. Your 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 your, frozen, your, your, your picture's you. frozen. Are you are you on Wi-Fi? Are we good? I'm on Wi-Fi, but I can see you guys, but not me. Hold on. I'm perfect. I can see myself. Am I no you good? Yeah, now now you're good. Yeah, yeah. It took a second, but you go right now. Or maybe not. That's <laughs> <Yeah>. it. <laughs> Hey, Dr. David. hey, hey, Jake, try it. Could you try a quick reset of your computer? <laughs> Click the link and come right back. All right, Jake will be right back with us. We in commercial anyway, so we ain't missing nothing. It's just fun. I even put Jake's logo back up. Where's Jake's logo? Right there. Boom. 
Oh no. It's tough. Oh no. Oh no, we already got time. Shoot. Keon Ellis got Bobby Porter eyes lightweight too. If you look at the um, Getty, if you go through the Getty and the pictures or whatever, like sometimes they're just wide open. Mm. This is why people don't like coming on here. No. <laughs> I don't like that thing on her. What's that? She had like a I don't I don't know what you call it. I've never seen it before. She had like a uh it almost looked like a a crochet uh what are those what are those things that you put on when you go to the prom? Oh yeah, the um corset. corset. It looked like she had one around her neck. I'm fundamentally against comfort. That's a great line. I'm going to go tell the sales team that. <laughs> I'm fundamentally against comfort. Got to shake the table. Mm. Corsage, they're saying. Corsage. Corsage, okay. There he is. Is that better? Yeah, that's it. My main man, Jake Gaden. Got some answers for you, fam. Really good ones, oh. too. We ready. All right. We ready. We ready. All right now. Look at Oh yeah, it's, it's uh oh. some around her neck. Yeah, that's what I mean. Like I don't like it. That's okay with me. Stylish. Uh, says the guy who tried to wear a scarf the other day and thought it looked like, or not a scarf, a uh, neckerchief and thought it looked like shit. <laughs> yeah, how about that beat down last night at the Golden One Center? Well, not good, man. Not okay. Not good. Not good. Not good. Not good. We've talked about the rocks, uh, movies, um, <laughs> done a pocket watching segment, done about anything we can to avoid uh, talking anymore about that dumbass game. I'll just say this. But they'll all be fine if they win Friday. Yes. For, thank you. Thank you. That's all I was going to say. Yeah. Just win Friday. I got to see our good friend Joe Davidson this afternoon. Oh, very nice. OD. Was he where you were at? Yeah, he was at the River Cats. All right, we're coming back, Jake. Hang on. All right, man. Let's get into see, it. See, and I'm a little cryptic with how, you know, the questions I ask our guests, because I don't know what he can tell me, what he can't tell me, but I know he's going to tell us a, a little bit uh, that'll so, be informative to the area. So what we'll do is we'll introduce our, our man, Jake Gaten, CBS 13, uh, your partner over there on, on CBS 13 and in, in, in the March Madness coverage. Uh, Jake, you have been all over this Sacramento Kings, Oakland A's uh, story. And so I'm, I'm with KC. I'm not exactly sure what to ask you, but I, <laughs> I don't know like what's between us and what's not. So I know you, you said this on the live stream, so I think it's okay. You were visiting the River Cats today. Some of our questions through this process have involved the River, River Cats. What have you learned uh, through the co course of your reporting uh, as it pertains to the A's? Sacramento, how the River Cats are involved, and in, in how close we might be to this thing actually happening. All right, so let's start with my interview with Vivek Ranadive, the King's owner, last Monday. Uh, we, we did a segment on Vivek on the future of Sacramento in 2030, and didn't even pose the question of, like, hey, do you think the A's can come to Sacramento? He just actually brought it up in the conversation of like, hey, I've been talking to John Fisher about bringing the A's here. Now, of course, weeks ago, we reported that the A's were visiting Sacramento and Sutter Health Park, seeing it was a viable option. Of course, there was a uh, there's a report that came out in Baseball America, I believe, that that said like, hey, we are super interested. The A's front runner to, to, to land the A's if they do leave Oakland for the three year period that they uh, have until the stadium in Vegas is built. So the veterans that up says, Hey, I'm talking to John. We're trying to get the A's here for three years. And I've also talked to Rob Manford, the commissioner of the MLA, about keeping a team here because he does want to expand 
possibly pass just Vegas, an East Coast team and a West Coast team. There's no one that is on the record for Manfred of the expansion that he wants to see. Um, that led to a lot of conversation throughout Northern California of w- how is this going to work in Sacramento? So a couple of things that I learned today by speaking with general manager Chip Maxson of the Sacramento Cats. One thing that he did tell me today is that the River Cats are here to stay. So if the A's do come in, this is going to be something where they're going to have to work out a schedule because both teams are going to play here, right? Um, the River Cats aren't going anywhere from his understanding and from what he had told us today. The other thing that he told me that I think was one of Delo's questions yesterday, which I was intrigued about, what needs to happen to Sutter Health Park to make it available for an MLB stadium? Well, a couple of things have already happened. They have updated the locker rooms out in left field, which I got to tour today. It is beautiful out there. State of the art, nice weight room, nice locker room, uh, brand new kitchen for food for all the players, uh, weight room, um, athletic staff have a great area. It's really state of the art. They did a great job for building it in less than five months. Um, the other thing that they need to do that Chip was telling me today is there is a lighting issue. So for them to have a MLB stadium there, they'd have to add additional lights to the actual stadium of Sutter Health Park. As for the field dimensions, don't need to touch anything. I also asked, hey, left field, excuse me, um, yeah, in left field, could you build on top of uh, the, the, the structure out there where the locker room is? He said it's not retrofitted for that, so that would be out of the question. Um, so to answer your questions of one, why is this happening now? Well, the A's have to make a decision within the next two to four weeks of where they're playing. They need to put to 25 schedule, the MLB does, and they need to figure out where the A's are going to play. So this is why it's kind of coming up again of when, when – when is this thing all going to come to close and when are they going to decide everything? That's the question right now. Um, But I think the bigger thing that's stopping everything is the NBC sports deal. Until that deal is figured out, nothing else will happen. If that deal can be figured out, they might stay in Oakland. If they can figure out a deal, they'll come to Sacramento. They might go to Salt Lake. But right now, it, it stopped the TV deal. And that's where it is. Can you, sorry, no, go can you elaborate a little bit on that? What specifically needs to be worked out with the NBC sports deal? Cause obviously there's an NBC sports Bay area. There's an NBC sports, California, California is where the Sacramento Kings air. Bay area is where the golden state warriors games air. What, what specifically, if you're aware, of course, has to be worked out in terms of that television deal. So the deal with it is it all comes down to money, right? And the question of can it will A's will will A's games be shown not only in Sacramento, but also in the Bay Area as well, right? Because like when the Warriors play, we don't get that here in Sacramento. When the Kings play, they don't get that in the Bay Area. So that that's another can of worms that I'm not privy to. I don't know that information. I don't know how that would work. But I do know it's coming down to the money right now to 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 get out of the deal, they the, the NBC California wants to renegotiate the rights to the deal. Um, and they're like, I don't really want to renegotiate. I like the deal we have. And we already have an antenna over there at the Golden One Center to be able to, to send you guys, you know, um, to, to send to distribute the, the, the actual broadcast to everybody. It's not like we have to build a whole new antenna and a whole new system and everything like that. It's all retrofitted and set up. So the question is, how much money would it cost to, to renegotiate that deal? And will John Fisher play ball with that? That's where the TV deal kind of stands. And, and just for some clarification, because I see a couple of things in the chat of people trying to say, hey, they got to figure this out. This is all to start. If, say, the Kings or the A's did come to Sacramento, that's the start of the 2025 season. No matter what, they're playing 2024 in Oakland this year. Yeah, this season, they're playing in Oakland. It might be the last season at the Coliseum. It may not. Who knows? They have to find a home, guys. The lease is up. It's like that's what I'm like getting so frustrated with when you talk to Bay Area media people. There's a guy over there that's driving me up a wall every single day with what he puts out with the A stuff. They have to play somewhere, guys. They can't just sit there and play in the streets of Oakland next year. Give them a stadium. I don't know where, but they got to play somewhere. 
And, and and really, this I've whole seen thing. Jake fired up before. <laughs> Jake be getting fired up to see him during. Watch him uh, Thursday when UConn and, and San Diego State play. It's, it's gonna be it's gonna be live. But um, and and you can start to kind of already eliminate stuff, right? Because of how close we are to them trying to find a deadline. One of the thing, one of the things about the deadline is Major League Baseball. They like to put out their next season schedule mm-hmm. around July. Yeah, it's so, weird. So they they have to get started on that, like probably now. So that's one thing. Number two, they've already said they're not going to Vegas. Mm-hmm. Um, they're not. They're going to open up when they go to Vegas. It's going to be to open up their new stadium. So they're not going to Vegas. Mm-hmm. Salt Lake City is probably the worst option of them all because you probably won't get a TV deal like that. That's no money. Oakland, it's a bad deal because you're going to get no fans there. It's going to look nasty. It's going to be 200 people there for the next three years. That's not a good look, but you keep the you may keep the TV deal. Mm-hmm. Sacramento is almost, almost the best of both worlds. You're going to have crowds there every night, so you're not going to look like a complete embarrassment. But you're still... You're not going to get the 70 million that you would get in Oakland, but you're not going to get zero like you would get in Salt Lake City. My guess is they're probably, this is just a guess, they're probably negotiating or trying to negotiate around the 30, anywhere between 30 to 45 million. You know, maybe, maybe the A's want 45 million and, and NBC Sports is like, uh, no, nah, we'll give you 30. And it feels like they're, they're around. That's just my, my guess. It feels like Sacramento. It might be the best option for what they have in front of them right now. Can I also add to that? And I think this is something that's going to be completely missed because everyone's comparing the same situation to what the Kings went through in Seattle. Let's make this very clear. These are two completely different situations, okay? Completely different. The other thing that no one's taking into account here is, yes, even if the A's are here for three years, economically, does anybody understand what this is going to do for Sacramento? Like that West Sac area can be completely rebuilt. You're going to have an influx of money to that area with new stores, um, food options, restaurants. Like they're not going to just make it and just make out oh, Sutter Health Parks over there. Like they're vicious dodo 2.0 over on West Sac. Like I don't understand why people wouldn't want that for a team. Yes, they're going to be here for three years, but then you're going to have at least three decades of economic growth over there. Like, why don't you want that? Do you, are you okay with Sacramento just staying in the past and being slow cow town? No, let's look to the future. Let's see if we can build up this area. Well, that's the biggest downside of Sac of saying, hey, there's so much space. We don't know what to do with it. Throw money at it, especially if an A's team comes here and they're seeing the uh, other teams, because let's be, be honest here, they're not going to be coming here to see the Oakland A's. They're going to be coming here to see the Otanis of the world, the Aaron Judge, the Mike Trout, whatever you want to say. But that will put money in the seats, which will then put money in West Sacramento and Sacramento and Yolo County, and that would actually add to the economic development that we so badly need in that downtown area and that West Sac area. Yeah, and to the Remember, this is throwback into the borough of West Sac. <laughs> oh, that boy, that is a that is a throwback for sure. Um, you talked about the potential limit economic growth of West Sacramento. Are we talking like an increase? Like, like what what specifically are we talking about? Because obviously, you're going to have more um, visitors because that arena is going to. Uh, excuse me, that stadium is going to be full. Uh, 80 times, or hopefully, you know, 80 some odd times uh, a year now with that down there. Are we looking at at, at building down there? Or are we just looking at uh, added traffic to what's already down there? Like what what can West Sac residents I- I expect should this go through? Because this is this is something the city has never, ever had to profess even short term, long term. Feel however you want to about it. The city has never had two professional sports franchises franchises at the same time. This isn't the surge or the mountain lines or whatever that stuff was in the past. This is a major league baseball team. And this is something Jake, that we are not familiar with here. 
I think there's there's multiple lots over there. So the, the best example I can give is there's a place called Drake's Bar, which is right by Sutter Health Park. It's a great place to have a beer in the summer. If you haven't been, shout out to Drake's. I love it there in the summer. There's multiple vacant lots along the river that can be built into something. So it's it's going to be new development, D-Lo. It's going to be stuff like where you're going to see new shops, new restaurants. Imagine what happened with Doco. Remember when Golden One was built and they demolished that whole entire area and then they built up the Doco area around Golden One? Have that type of vision. Now, it may not be as big as it is and it may not happen year one, okay? But that's the vision that, that, that they have for that area of building that whole area up, making it more connected to downtown Sacramento and being in an entertainment area where you can go out to eat uh, during the winter and the summer. You can go out and get a cocktail before or after a game. You can go shop at X, Y, and Z. There's also uh, apartments that are over there, guys, as well. Those are pretty nice apartments. If you go live there and walk in and watch the A's game every single day, that's Pretty, pretty a good spot to live. I think it's going to add to the value of the area. That, that That's the, the point I'm trying to get across. You know, one of the things that um, that I'm, I'm still trying to figure out, maybe you could add some light to this and or maybe just give your opinion, is I thought it was um, thought it was interesting, and especially having more context now talking to you, that Vivek brought this up on his own and spoke so openly about it almost as if he's pretty confident all of this is going to happen. And when I mean all of it, the the temporary home for the A's and that he ha- not guarantee or not a promise, but he does have a real shot at bringing Major League Baseball here permanently in some respect. Did you get the same vibe of like, man, like were you kind of shocked? Like, damn, he's talking about this right now. Like he's been really open with this. No, it's that that's the reaction I got. I was like, he, a, a person in his position would not say the things that he said if he wasn't confident in saying them. Vivek Nadeve is a smart businessman. He has gotten here because he's he, because of the decisions he's made in the past. He would not go on record and say, I feel pretty confident about this. Look what we did in Doco. We have a track record of doing this. We could do it again. Like a smart businessman wouldn't say that. Now, again, could he put, be putting smoke into this and pumping some fuel into it to make it actually happen, to get it across the finish line? Possibly. I'm not going to dispute, right? Because, again, this this is a, uh, a what-if scenario right now. But it does have legs. This thing does have legs. This is not a 5% chance of happening. I'm giving it more 50-50 right now more than anything just because you don't know, like I said, where it stands with the TV agreement. And you don't, I don't know what's going on in Oakland and their negotiations of trying to keep them at the Coliseum. Those are the two question marks I have that I'm still trying to dig in that I don't have contact for. That I would love to know, are, is Oakland playing ball to stay there for three years? And how much is the TV deal playing ball? But to your point, though, the fact that Vivek said it makes it have some legs. Because the man is, not, is, is smart with what he says. And he's not going to put something out there that he doesn't believe doesn't mean it's going to happen. That's d and Casey here on KIFM West Sacramento, 98.5 FM, KRX, QHD2, Sacramento, ESPN, 1320, always live on the free Odyssey app. Our man, Jake Gaden from CBS 13 here with us. Um, I could completely be wrong in this. I'm not nearly as locked in, Jake, as you are, but listening to the 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 challenges that that are ahead for this for, for either city, you laid out, KC, you know, the Coliseum is going to look horrible uh, every night on television, but the TV deal will be there. Mm-hmm. Sacramento will be full. You'll have a different type of television deal, and you probably lose everything of substance if you go to Utah. Mm-hmm. Jake Mitch, it's this is a money thing. Mm-hmm. I don't think anyone involved with the Oakland A's cares if no one shows up to the mm-hmm. Coliseum for the next two years. But if NBC Sports Bay Area is paying them, which NBC sport because the deal's already done, right? Like that's not a deal that needs to be done. The Oakland deal is done. It doesn't matter if no one watches mm-hmm. or everyone watches because that money's all there. Mm-hmm. Why would they leave it? Can I say real quick, Jake, the thing that goes in my head is the Oak, they wouldn't leave it, but Oakland wouldn't agree to help him out 
unless they get a guarantee of a team back yeah. in Major League Baseball. I don't think is going to do that. So that's what I keep wondering is, and that was the next, what does Oakland get out of this? Like, that, I don't that, that's see what the question. Oakland gets out of this. They don't. And that's where the rubber meets the road, guys. Like you're, the, That's the question that is the million-dollar question with all of this. What does Oakland have to gain in this, and what does NBC Sports have to gain in this, right? Again, John Fisher is going to get his money no matter what gonna happen and and to your point d and what you're saying they don't care if it's an empty stadium or a full stadium mm -hmm. the same goes with the product on the field okay they don't care about the product on the field that, that, that that's just that's how it is right now all right that's how it is as an oakland a's fan what you have to ask is the money that you're going to be giving up if you move to 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 to, to sacramento and, and and renegotiate that well, is that worth it especially with the amount of more money you could possibly create in Sacramento and maybe the deal that Ron Adive is giving you. Is that for the same rate of just staying in Oakland and and they're going to give you a – their deal is probably going to be more expensive, but you keep the same media right deal compared to new media deal, less amount of money to, to, to play at Sacramento, but more butts and seats. Because the other thing that everyone's forgetting about this – Tomorrow, there's a reverse first book boycott on opening day at the Coliseum tomorrow. Like, that is happening. So, like, people are going to – people are continuing to boycott in Oakland. Like, that is still a thing. I don't think they get that same type of vibe here in Sacramento. I think you're still going to have the haters or the haters are going to hate. But I think you're going to get a different clientele if you get – if you come to SAC. It's great stuff, Jake. Yeah, man. Uh, you have been all over this story, man, for, for months now. Um, we'll continue to uh, stay locked in, man, and uh, have you back here to give us the latest developments, man. You said two to four weeks. Well, we'll keep our eyes on your on your Twitter handle, see what happens next, man, but we appreciate you. No, I appreciate you guys. Hopefully this the Kings can figure out their stuff, all right? God dang. Well, it, man. No, no. It will. They'll be ready to play on Friday. That's all that matters. Yeah, they'll be ready to play. Get Friday, just look at Brian. Just get one. Just get one. Just get one. one more stop. Get this. Are, are we still sad about Luca? By the way, are we still sad about Luca? That's the question no. I have. No. no. Okay. No. Move past it. Stop stirring stuff up. Okay. <laughs> Freaking guys from Boston, man! I swear to God, y'all come in here looking for stuff like knock it off, Jake. Behave yourself, Jake. You going hey, hey, go Huskies. Hey, you know, kiss my ass, Blue Devils. You gonna hear from me, Jake? You C O N N. Con, you con, you con. Let's go. Get this crap off of my screen. Get this crap off of my screen. Look, uh, uh, hold on. Watch this. Yeah, uh, uh, kick from studio. Get your ass out of here. Get out of here. Oh, no. oh, no. You gonna do that this week? Ain't gonna do that this week, Jake. Ain't no oh, chance. No. Ain't gonna do that this week. Jake, Jake is is testy this week because um he should be testy. Gino's gonna get his ass kicked. Well, he's got that game, and then you know, producer Roland is a San Diego State guy. Oh, and producer Roland. Oh, yeah, that's gonna be a tense office. Yeah, so it's crazy right that's now. That's gonna be a tense <laughs> office. It's crazy right for there. Jake right now. I get it. I get it. You're coming here doing you kind of oh, that out of here. Hey. Um, first off, I apologize for the sound. Uh, Jake, it was kind of that in between where it's clear enough to hear everything he's saying, mm -hmm. but just a little techy enough to be frustrating. Mm -hmm. So it, it, I, I, it, I, I thought it was, I was just trying to walk that fine line. So I'm sorry. It was, it wasn't the, the, the best audio. Mm -hmm. Um, but hopefully I, I felt like I heard every single thing that, uh, Jake said. So hopefully everybody yeah. did. Hopefully too. they, hopefully they did too. Some good stuff too, man. Um, it look, it's been a, it's been a, a testy topic, you know what I mean? It's been a testy topic around here. You know, I've had the tweet that I had yesterday, which we reiterated what I said on the radio mm -hmm. a couple of days before is that thinking about this from a Sacramento point of view, like you got to do this. You got to do this. If you can, you got to take this opportunity. And I know there's a lot of A's fans in the area that, don't don't feel good about how this is going down and don't want Sacramento involved in helping this guy out. I completely understand. That. I, I go ahead. Is it just A's fans that don't want the A's in Sacramento? Or do you think it's like people who so, don't want John Fisher here? Like 
for those that don't want them here, like it's, it's just who like what is it? It, I, it, it? It's both. I think the 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 Fisher component is the biggest component. I also think people have drawn, and we'll Matt, Matt today's Wednesday. Matt will be with us tomorrow. Matt's mm-hmm. one of the big proponents of like he doesn't want this to happen. He loves the Oakland A's, and he hates the owner like mm-hmm. with a venomous passion. He hates John Fisher, but there's been this weird correlation between Sacramento and Seattle. These are not the same thing. Mm -mm. It's not even remotely close to the same thing. This is a situation where a franchise is leaving. This is a situation where a poorly run franchise is leaving a city. Mm -hmm. They need a place to play for a few years and they're not going to the allegedly their future home, Mm -hmm. right? If Sacramento has the opportunity even in the short term, to step in and have two sports franchises, I think it's a good look. This isn't stealing the A's away from Oakland. That is not what this is. Sacramento and Seattle were owners who were looking to sell a team. It wasn't relocating. It wasn't temporary. None of these components are the same. Mm -hmm. The relation between the two, the, the correlation, it doesn't make sense. When you tie, especially after what happened with Seattle and Sacramento, it does not make since it's not the same thing and i get i come and, and for ace fans i understand every single one of them mm-hmm. instead of looking at it as a sports fan and maybe they don't look at it differently and this is what i was trying to tell matt last night instead of looking at it as a sports fan look at it from a resident of sacramento mm-hmm. what does this mean for our city short term or long term what does it mean for our city if you can come to the conclusion that it means nothing then so be it. Then you then you deserve the way to feel that you do. Mm-hmm. To me, with some of the things Jake was talking about there before he lost his mind and started chanting UConn stuff, <laughs> it adds to the city, and that's important for what we as a community mm-hmm. are building. Absolutely. I, I agree 100% with what you're saying. And I'm sensitive to the Matt Georges, the Kyle Matts, and the James Ham, and, and what they have going on. And some people took, took uh, offense to me saying the game is the game and all this other stuff, but I'm sorry. The game is the game. It is what it is. It's not mm-hmm. fair. Like it's not fair. Yeah. that A guy that makes $8 billion is asking mm-hmm. me right. and you to mm-hmm. help pay for a stadium. It's and, not fair. And I'm looking at Polo right here. Polo says I'm a Dodgers fan and the A's belong in Oakland. You're a hundred percent right. The A's no, belong in Oakland. Saying that's not the truth. But they're not going to be. Whether Sacramento is here or not, the A's aren't staying in Oakland. Mm-mm. That's not this. That's not what this is about. Sacramento is not taking the A's from Oakland. The A's and Oakland, that relationship is over. Yeah, and and on top of that, like I said, once again, I understand how everybody feels, but you know, I hear Casey Pratt, who I like, I go to for information, talk about. Oh, Kings, Sacramento, do you want to be a part of that after what you just went through and all this other stuff? Look here. If we're if we're being real, the A's didn't originate in Oakland. Mm. Mm. They came from somewhere. If we want to go even further than that, everybody loves the Sacramento Kings, right? Mm. We are not crying for those people in Kansas City. Mm. It's all good. Is that it doesn't matter because it happened a long time ago? Like there's people who with Scott Gobranson, we talked and I used to grow up yeah. watching the Kansas City Kings. We don't think twice about that no more. I'm a Giants fan. The people in Brooklyn and New York loved the Dodgers mm. and the Giants. They loved them and they left. And we, nobody thinks about it. Guys say you're a Dodgers fan. You think about that? You think about how people in Brooklyn and, and generations of people in Brooklyn Got their team ripped away? No, you're happy because you're a Dodger. Like, we're not going to sit up here and now look because Sacramento has an opportunity to enhance their profile as a city or do something and be like, oh, you shouldn't do it because of what just happened to you. Like, that's not, even once again, I hate me saying it, that's not the game. But even at that, it's not, you're right, but it's not even the same game. Mm -hmm. It's not the same thing. The A's are leaving Oakland. They're going to Las Vegas. Mm -hmm. If they're housed in Sacramento, they bought a house in Las Vegas, but it's not going to be renting for three years, and they need to rent somewhere. Mm -hmm. If renting it in Sacramento works for the city of Sacramento, do it. I'm relying on 
Mayor Steinberg, Mayor Flo, whoever might. I'm relying on you to run the numbers. You need to do your own version of pocket watching, and you need to be the Jesse Tapia of pocket watching versus Kenny <laughs> Carraway. Make sure these numbers are right and tell me that this is good. Talk about what Jake was talking about. Tell me that this is good for the city of Sacramento, and we keep it moving. That's it. And then in three years, four years, whatever it may be, they're off to Las Vegas. Mm -hmm. Oakland keeps it moving. Sacramento keeps it moving. And that's that. That's it. I just looked at the clock. What do you want me to do? I don't know. That was kind of flowing. Yeah, so I thought it, that was good. Yeah. So I don't think we well, need to I break. Mean, we can keep going. We, yeah, right, we'll keep, keep it. We'll keep go to going. 20. That's my and, and, and here's one of the things my man, Dr. David, says. And I'm just, like, like I said, if he says, yes, Casey, but it's happening now, not 30, 70 years ago. That makes it better. That makes it okay. There are people, there are people in Brooklyn, in Harlem, New York, in Kansas City, Missouri, who had their team ripped away. And we celebrate and have a good time talking about the Kings and we're talking about the A's and all this other stuff. We don't think twice about it. But now people want Sacramento to think twice about it. That's not, no. And, and like you said, people saying it doesn't matter because it happened 50 years ago. That's not, no, it's not okay. And, and you sign, I hate to sound like this, but as a fan, signed up for it. This is what it is. This is what it is. I don't want, I don't want, uh, my taxes to go up, you mm -hmm. know, or anything like that. I don't want none of that to happen, but I'll tell you right now, unless something drastically changes, if 20 years from now, Vivek says, Hey, we need a new arena and it's going to, I don't want the Kings to leave. So there's, you there's got my yes vote. It, 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 it's, it, it sucks because we're consumers, right? At our heart, we're consumers. We look for deals. Mm -hmm. Um, music distribution will never go back to what it was before. You're never going to pay $20 for a digital download again because you pay $20 to listen to all of the music in the world whenever you want to. Mm -hmm. Like that, is it fair? Yes and no, but we're consumers and the consumers speak now. So if Apple goes, this isn't fair to artists, but Spotify, <laughs> come over here. Mm -hmm. We're going to Spotify because we're, Consumers, it sucks that uh, Fisher, uh, these it's these terrible. these owners, they have eight, nine, ten billion dollars mm -hmm. to 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 they have money in their couch cushions to fund billion dollar arenas, and they ask us to do it. But the flip side of that is, back when this used to happen, it's not just the Sacramento Kings; mm -hmm. it's the Travis Scott concert. Mm -hmm. It's the, the Paul McCartney concert. It's the WWE pay-per-view. It's Monday Night Raw. It's all of that stuff that comes through the arena. Now it's the, uh, the barbecue joint mm -hmm. outside. It's the miniature golf spot. It's the, 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 the bowling alley. Mm -hmm. It's the haagen -Dazs. It's Yard House. Places it's we go to when of, there's all no All of game. that. All of that mm -hmm. is part of the arena. The arena, not there. The barbecue sauce isn't there. Mm -hmm. None of that stuff is there. And it sucks. It's unfortunate, but it's 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 guaranteed dollars, right? It's guaranteed money in the NBA. It's the way the game is played now, mm -hmm. and it's never going back. Yeah. I, I mean, and look, I I'm I'm not an A's fan. I'm a Giants fan. I lived in San Leandro for two years, right off of Davis Street. I would catch that BART train to go to work and pass the Coliseum every day. Some of when I was in college at Cal State Hayward, poor, I would try to take my now wife on a date, be like, hey, it's Dollar Dog Wednesday at the Coliseum. Let's go see the A's and the Angels. And we'd get in there for $3. We'd have three hot dogs and have a little outing. Go to plenty of A's games. I enjoy A's games. I enjoy the Coliseum. It's not state of the art or anything, but I think it has character. I I enjoyed every time going there. So it's not anti-A's and you don't understand. Some of my best memories are at the Coliseum, 100%. But once again, Sacramento has an opportunity to boost their profile. And like I mentioned yesterday, this is the only chance I think they're getting. This is it. MLS ain't coming here. Not with no disrespect, but not with the ownership that, that we right. have here. Mm-hmm. That, that ship has sailed. Mm -hmm. That's gone. Mm -hmm. If they get new ownership and deeper pockets, 
Maybe, but they're almost maxed out. NBA, you already got that. NHL, doubt it. NFL, hell no. Mm -hmm. This is it. Mm -hmm. This is your one shot. And you may not make it. Like, you may be like, you did a great three years. We just don't think, we'd rather go to Portland right now or something like that. We go to Salt Lake. You may not make it, but you have to take that chance. You have to take that chance without a shadow of a doubt. You got to take that shot if you're Vivek. And look, Vivek doing this, Vivek may win out of this. There's a there's a scenario when, where Vivek doesn't get a team in Sacramento but gets some type of ownership stake in the Las Vegas A's. And you know what? He played the game, and look, he's he's the owner another, of another sports franchise. He may be doing this all for himself. And once again, I understand. He's got to do what he's got to do. And guess who that benefits, though? It, it still benefits us. That's one, exactly. Still benefits us. Exactly. Yeah, I mean, it doesn't hurt him. No. But it benefits the city of Sacramento because Vivek, as much as I believe there are people working against him in his own organization, that dude's about the city. Mm -hmm. He's been about the city from jump. Mm -hmm. And if there are steps to make Sacramento um, a, a stronger economical city outside of the traditional, this is a government town line, mm -hmm. yo, let's do it. So he's trying to grow, man. Let's he's do trying it. to grow, and this is an opportunity to help it grow. And and, and I want to reiterate, it sucks for all the Ace fans because they got – they they got more memories at the Coliseum than I do. Even yeah. though I talked about the memories I have. I know uh Matt George, Kyle Madsen, James, James Ham, all these other they got more memories than I do. So that sucks. Mm -hmm. I'm not trying to just discount that and, and and walk all over that. But but that's not but the but that's not whether Sacramento was in, and my point is whether Sacramento was involved or not, mm -hmm. that doesn't change. Mm -hmm. The A's are leaving Oakland, whether Sacramento is here to cushion this fall or not. Mm -hmm. They're going to Las Vegas. It's over. That's 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 why I keep driving home. This is not Seattle and Sacramento. Mm -hmm. It's not the same thing. They are gone. Mm -hmm. yep. If we can benefit out of them leaving for two years, three years, four years, five years, forever, yo, do it. And, and, and you tell me if I'm wrong, Jesse, you tell me if I'm wrong. The way I see it, saying no does nothing for Sacramento. Nothing. I, this whole well, I don't mean to. I, I don't mean to be I, like this, but this whole arbitrary I can sleep at night type deal. Come on, <laughs> come on, that that no, yeah. come on, man, that ain't. That, I, I don't like. I said I, don't, I ain't trying. What are we to NBA officials? All of a sudden, what's going on here? <laughs> You'll sleep fine if the A's are here as well. <laughs> right. You'll that, be fine. That that ain't got nothing to do with it. Doesn't. To just to have an opportunity and walk away because you think it's it's sleazy or something that don't do nothing for nobody. Can I, are y'all moving? Well, it's like, like yeah, like, no, seriously, y'all moving because a whole lot of people threatened to move to Canada in like 2016 and no one did. Y'all moving? Nobody moving if the A's get here. Like y'all will sleep fine. Everything will be fine. It the the situation already sucks for Oakland. Mm -hmm. Nothing today, tomorrow, or next year is going to be better for Oakland. Mm -hmm. It's going to suck. If Sacramento can get some benefit out of John Fisher's uh, poor leadership, mm -hmm. I'll take it. But again, I'm trusting because I still, I know, I know, I know Jake laid out, you know, the, the stadium stuff, like some of those, some of those different questions. I need to know the, the, the uh, J we, we, we talked kind of vaguely about the economic impact. I need to know what that looks like. Mm -hmm. What's that mean? Mm -hmm. Don't, don't use arbitrary words with me. Right. Sh what is that economic impact yeah. specifically point to West Sacramento mm -hmm. point to these buildings, point to parking lots, point, point who's benefiting from this. Who are the owners of this? How do homeowners benefit from yeah. it? How does this affect the renters? Show me all of that stuff. Yeah. And if that's a net negative, then I'm out. Mm -hmm. But, that means it's a net negative overall. Right. That means the thought of baseball. That's a dead thought. That, that might mean the thought of another sports franchise mm -hmm. is a dead thought. Mm -hmm. But that's their job to relay to us. Exactly. Well, it's like Kenny says too. Like, I'm like next would be like my tenth year living in Sac or whatever. So I feel like I've been here for a decent amount of time and whatever. Like if like Sac has like it's not maximized. Like Jake was saying it on his interview. It's not maximized. It's not like you need more like more team like t like teams here and stuff like that to really like show what Sacramento is and stuff like that. And it's like, we always, com city complains about not having teams, no respect, stuff like that. It's like, 
why not take at least an opportunity or a chance? You got to put yourself in the game at least. You no, know, we've got a hole at the doorstep of downtown Sacramento that's been there for 20 years. <laughs> mm. <laughs> they just that, that lot in the middle, right off of uh, five, just a just a hole in the ground that they like. We need any upkeep we can get right now. You know what I mean? And like I said, Sacramento has an opportunity. You just, you, you just have to hop on it. People like Vivek, people like Mayor Steinberg, like Mayor Flo, potentially. You got to hop on it, man. You, you got to try. Yeah. You got to try because this is it. This is the last chance. So speaking of, I was uh, doing my homework, too, about, like, the A's and the franchise and mm -hmm. how they got where they are. Yo. If you, are you guys familiar with uh, Charlie Finley, the the owner that got him to Oakland? I don't think so. Oh, man, this guy, this guy was terrible. Oh, wow. <laughs> Not like as a person, but just a a snake oil salesman. Oh. He goes to Kansas City, right? They had all this like interest of like, man, you know, they might be trying to move us. Da -da -da -da. Charlie Finley comes in there and essentially says, "This is your team, Sacramento, oh, God. the Kansas City," yeah. and he's like. The first day he he has the lease of the ballpark in Kansas City, like the out there was an out for the lease or something like that, and he goes to home plate or in the press conference or whatever and says, "We're here forever," and lights the lease on fire. Right? Well, come to find out, it was just a fake piece of paper. Yeah. <laughs> and when it's the first chance he had to move, he was like, "Yeah, the lease say the lease is here and intact. I'm out of here. I'm trying to go to Denver." I'm trying to go here. He ended up going like they, he tried to move that team out of Kansas city like five times and eventually got Oakland. And that's how they got to Oakland and then tried to leave Oakland a bunch of times. Sounds like the A's have a toxic relationship with owners. That's Sean Michaels playing Bret Hart's music type heat right there. Yeah, that's for sure. <laughs> In Canada. <laughs> it's one of the great promos of all time. If you've never seen it. No, it's that was, that's, 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 an all -time that's, that's one of the great promos of all time. Heel Sean is special. A heel, heel, heel Sean is really good. He's top five. Sean? Top three. Sean's one. He's pound for pound. Yeah, oh, I'm Sean's, talking, one. Well, I'm Sean's one. Heel Sean, yes, yes. Or just Sean all period. Around. Yeah, Sean period is one. Pound for pound. Sean's one. Stone Cold got something to say. Stone Cold got no, something to say. No, 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 no. Stone Cold is the great. So you've got to break it down into categories. Stone Cold you, is he saying the length, like LeBron, like the length of his career? Like is Sean in there at number one? Stone Cold is the Stone Cold the is the greatest money maker. <laughs> I don't know. Is Stone Cold the greatest money maker? Is it Hogan? Shawn Michaels is the greatest in ring performer of all times. I don't know how to break. Well, that then, down. then are we talking? Are we taking Sean over Cena? Absolutely. We got to sneeze on what Cena did. I don't. I got I got seen in top four. Sean never had the company on his back. No, he didn't. But he is the greatest in ring performer of all time. See how I factor those things in, though, too. He cut a hell of a promo, too. He, no, Sean, Sean's my boy. The great, Sean's my boy. The, That's in my, terms of, my favorite. In terms of in the ring, on the mic, there's like complete package. There's no one better than him. And we're talking about making money. Like, I don't know. When That's, either H, Austin. Like, That's either Austin or Hogan. Or Cena and Cena, yeah, Cena's up there too. Sean is top top three favorite wrestler for me. Though. I love yeah, I yeah. love Sean Michaels. Yeah, yeah. I don't mean to speak bad about him. I love Sean Michaels. All right, for real, we have to go to break. Okay, <laughs> we'll come back. Uh, we'll talk to TC. <laughs> TC, come. Is TC on? No, he's right there. Oh, TC, the one KC brought to you by Sky River Casino and Sacramento Sports Leader ESPN thirteen twenty. <laughs> Tila, who is one, two, and three of Cena's four? I probably go Hogan. Hogan Austin, Rock Cena. Hey man, hey man, hey. Mm. That boy, that boy, that 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 tribal chief that moved into well, the top five now, man. Up, Come man. on now, <laughs> that tribal chief, he in the conversation now. Do we still act like '80s Hogan is good too? No, but he he's he, he can't. It's, it's almost like. Uh, Bob Cousy, bro. No, I was about to say he's like Bill Russell. Well, I mean, at least like the 90s run was legitimate. Like that was cool. But look, you still got to. That's the crazy thing about Hogan. The two careers. 
You combine it. Damn. He's Brady, I guess. Damn. Like two careers. I'll acknowledge, I'll, acknowledge, I'll acknowledge that, Russ. We did change the game, but just watching it back, it's just, I don't know. I mean, all the wrestling was bad, though. All of it was bad. Like, like Dame, he loves wrestling. So, you know, he's, he's able to do that. I can't watch those matches. They're like 20 minutes of grappling. <laughs> what is this? It's like it's like the Batman, the first Batman movie in the 80s. Like everyone swears by it. Watch it back. It's not really that good. <laughs> oh, but but Hogan. I, there's there's never been nothing like that. He's, he's the pioneer of it. There's never been nothing like that. I don't think Cena was like that. I don't think Stone Cold. I don't think The Rock. The there was there's never been nothing like Hogan. 80s Hogan. Never. We would have booed that man, I'll tell you that much. <laughs> Cena might be the closest. Because you got you got it like Hogan had everybody. Hogan had the kids, had the teenagers, had the adults. There was no booing. Nobody hated Hogan. I won't I won't knock the impact. I won't knock the impact. I'm just saying nobody hated him. I mean, go back, watch WrestleMania 3 or whatever it was. Like, uh, wow, he did a side slam. Sick. Danny, I think second round. But that's like max, max, max. Everything goes right. Yeah. Yeah, that's fair. Ideally, I think maybe first. Um, For me, I mean, it's, it's just tough. As an adult, I mean, it's 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 Hollywood. Um, but I mean, as a kid. Yellow, yellow and red, golden red Hogan. Come on, man. I it's hard, it's hard to say. Because I lived, I lived through yellow and gold Hogan and Hollywood. All right. So Hulk Hogan, he's just, he's Hogan, he did his thing. Are we in or out on Bruno San Martino San Martino chat? Are we in or out? I can't tell you one match, one moment he ever had. I think he beat, feuded with Billy Graham, I think. Right now he's banned from the arena. Oh no. Back. They lost by 30. <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Wait, let me talk to him while he out. Bruno San Martino might be the George, or no, the yeah, the George Mike of wrestling. I'm not going back. Oh. <laughs> Bruno versus Bob Backlund. What is going on in here? Well, Jesse asked the question he knew the answer to. He said, are we in or out on Bruno San Martino? No, we're out. <laughs> Bruno. You guys didn't have your headphones. I call him the George Mike in a wrestling. <laughs> That's yeah. a good call. That's fair. <laughs> That's a good call. Bob Black Backlund is the Bob Cousy. Jesse tried to call Hogan Bob Cousy. No, said, he did not. I said, you I did. did not. I, did. I said, I told him, oh, I told him this. Bro, go back and watch and it. It said, stinks. I said, he's Hogan stinks. I said, he's, stinks. I said, I said he's Bill no, Russell. Come on, go back and watch it, bro. That's fair, right? Bill Russell? I'm yeah, not going to disrespect Russell's Bill we're not Russell. Gonna, we're, like, do we think Bill Russell would be doing things? That, no, but come on, man. He's Bill, Bob Cousy's different, but we just think Bob Cousy had no shot. Hulk Hogan's Michael Jordan. What, what are no, we doing stop, right now? No, what are we no, doing now? Right now? Stop. No. What are we doing? No, no, that's disrespectful. To who? To Jordan, to me and Kenny, to everyone in the chat. Jordan, Jordan could play today. Hogan couldn't do that stuff today. I'm so, no, we're not 90s Hogan Dad. is great. 90s well, Hogan 90s, is great. Yo, 90s yo, Hogan. Yo, 90s Hogan, I'm telling you, 80s yo, Hogan hey, is getting booed today. Hey, we're booing him out the stadium. Hey, put out an ad for <laughs> Kenny's new co-host. This is bullshit. <laughs> Put a new, hey, put an ad out. Kid. Hey, I'll even put go. Out. I, I'll agree with Russell. This is this is more Jordan to me. HBK is not Jordan. Y'all are ridiculous. Who put who put the NBA on the map? Who took who, who put the, yeah, Magic and Bird then? Fine. Oh, yeah. y'all hoes. <laughs> y'all hoes. Y'all hoes are okay. Okay, boy, y'all really. Larry. Y'all really Larry. That, the, room, Hogan is Larry Bird. All right. Hulk Hogan is not Larry Bird. Hogan's Bird, uh, Macho Hulk Man Hogan is magic. Is not Larry Larry Bird. Bird. This is the most like ridiculous. That. No, I actually like. That. No, absolutely not. I'm we'll play this stupid <laughs> intro like I'm gonna stop talking. Hey, TC, just wait another four. Is no, 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 no. Hogan is Jordan. Hogan's Hulk Hogan is Jordan. Hulk, so yellow and gold or yellow and red. Hogan. I'm sorry. 
Yellow and, yellow and Red Hogan could play today. I'm sorry. What happened in 1996? What? What happened in 1996? What happened? What do you mean? Hogan turned heel. and be, Hulk Hogan has been the biggest baby face in professional wrestling and the biggest heel in professional wrestling. No, see, he yeah. did that 12 years after Hulkamania started. Once again. This is ridiculous. I mean, WCW Hogan is great. 90s Hogan is great. Saying. 80s Hogan does not hold up. 90s it doesn't Hogan. Make, you, you, you're looking at the big boot, the leg drop, and the match quality. People were paying to see Hulk Hogan. I, I told him that. I told yeah, him that. Larry Magic. I said, I, well, I said, I said, kids, teenagers, adults loved Hogan. I've never seen anything like that. We've never seen anything like that in wrestling. All right. But they also had never seen anything <laughs> like Magic and Bird when they came out. Now, if you, they, Magic and Bird could play today. But Hogan, Hogan, 80s Hogan came out on Raw today. What does that look like? Not knowing, like, not saying he's Hulk Hogan. He came out there today. He'd be trashed. Let me ask Hollywood you Hogan comes out today. What happens? Let me ask you something. He's cheering. Let me ask Come you on. something. CM Punk. It's so, and, but it's Hulk Hogan. Like, what are we talking about? It's the same guy. It's Hulk Hogan. Hulk Hogan is Jordan. I don't mm. Hulk Hogan is Jordan. You really oh, said HBK is Jordan. Stop it. That's HBK absurd. could go today. No, no, Jordan no, no, could no, play no. today. You're, HBK you're, could no, go today. That's not how you. That, no, no, no. That that's not how you rank wrestling. You that's just how, called him the best. I said he's the best in ring performer you said of all, all time. Around. I said he's all, the best. I said on he's the mic the best. and in the ring. Yeah, he is the best performer of all time. He's not the like biggest Jordan, money dude. draw of all time. No, he's not the biggest money draw of all time. That's either Hogan or Austin. When Hogan did turn face after his heel run too, back in WWE, he didn't go back to like yellow trunks. So some Hollywood elements still with the long, like it was still, he still held on to some of it. He didn't go back to what he was. But when he got a 17 minute ovation in Montreal, what was he wearing? <laughs> Red and yellow. That's what he was wearing. He came back in 2000. Right? <laughs> he came back in 2000, hit three punches, dropped the leg, and the crowds went nuts. That was nostalgia. It doesn't matter. It's because it's Hogan. It's 20 years after it we actually love, happened. We, we love Hogan. Well. Don't we, do this. Don't do we, this we, like we, you're trying to calm a crazy person down. <laughs> you two are being ridiculous. Absolutely I do, ridiculous. I do, I do think the Hogan as Magic and Bird. Is no. That's fair. Hogan's Jordan. No. Hogan is Jordan. We can, I don't know who Magic and Bird is. Maybe that's superstar Billy Graham or something. But Hulk Hogan is Michael Jordan. He took professional wrestling into a different stratosphere just like Jordan did. And Austin might be LeBron. Uh, can't he talk to him? I feel like he's like, like he put it on the map the same way like Magic yeah, and Larry I, did. That, it, it does and then, and then the 90s and, guys and took Stone it. Stone Cold and no, Rock took no, it. Yes, too. they, so no. they took it and with it. We got on the Super Bowl. No, no. Seen as LeBron. No. <laughs> Damn, Jesse's in his bag right no, now. No, Cena's not. Damn. This is stupid. Jesse this is, no, is back no, right now. no, <laughs> sit your young ass down. <laughs> Absolutely sitting not. Down. Where were you for WrestleMania <laughs> one? Where were I you? Even where of, were bro. you when Andre turned on Hogan? You got the nerve to tell me. Absolutely <laughs> not. Boy, Jesse got in his bag right now. When he hit that Hogan magic no. bird. No. Stone Cold and Rock Jordan, and then when he hit Cena's you guys Braun, Hogan, ridiculous. Larry, and Magic God. Rock, you so Stone Cold, you, Matt, and MJ yeah. could run. You children so are ridiculous. Hulk Hogan was on the cover of Sports Illustrated. He was at the Grammy Awards with Cindy Lauper. You two sound absurd. Shawn Michaels with Pamela Anderson. He was on the Anderson. A team. Yeah, that's that's the depth. You know why? Because of the house Hulk Hogan built. You should change the WWE's name to the house that Hulk Hogan built. WrestleMania, the what do they call it? The show of shows, the granddaddy of them all. Hulk Hogan main evented the first nine. That show is what it is because of the money he so, drew. So here's the equivalent, though. Magic, Magic and, Bird. and Bird got the NBA Finals off of tape delay. Great. Great. I don't like the way redacted magic and bird. redacted can be magic and bird. Whoa, Hulk no, Hogan. no, whoa, whoa. Hulk Hogan is Michael Jordan. <laughs> don't do that. that feels low key disrespectful. Don't do, don't do that to magic and bird. He well, might wait be a minute. Wait, no, 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 wait a minute. Let's not, let's not, let's not diminish redacted's 
uh, what he did for professional wrestling. No, we're not. But he's not even a performer. Well, he was. He Redacted, might be. He might be the second Redacted greatest heel. Is David seen. Stern? Redacted no, he's Jerry not. Bus. No, he's not. Austin is Austin. This dude just. Austin. Oh my no. No, to cut oh your mic gosh. off. This if I knew how to going, cut your mic off from here, I would. This guy going crazy right now. Yo. Jerry Bush changed, Vince changed McMahon changed might everybody. be the second biggest heel in professional wrestling history. What are you talking about? Is Austin even Austin without Vince McMahon? Yeah. I don't know. That's a question for you guys yeah, to answer. No, I don't think he is. When did, he's, he's big. He was, he was doing all that before Vince. There was no, but no, he wasn't. He yeah, was, he was. no, he wasn't. That's he why was, he got the strap. He stunned Vince McMahon before he got the strap. Oh, okay, I get what you're saying. I get what you're saying. I mean, I get. He wasn't Mr. Started, McMahon, though. No, he was, right, 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 he was right. the announcer and all that, and, and the owner. But I get what you're saying. You're right. You're right. I hear you. <laughs> Tyler Jenny said, "There's no right or wrong opinion." That's no. Me and Casey are right. <laughs> this dude, I I can't deny Jesse got in his bag. I can't deny that. He got in his dumb bag. That's what he did. <laughs> Vince McMahon is not Jerry Buss. Excuse me, redacted. I said, I said he's I said he's David Stern. He's not David Stern. He was a performer too. All right, that's cool. David Stern was out in front. You so, really diminishing someone's, redacted's accomplishments. Someone say, someone say David Stern was was uh, a performer. He was part of the show. I, I I'd go I'd go David Stern. Like I I I'd, I could do a David Stern Vince McMahon correlation. I could do that. I could do that. I will yeah. not do Hogan still, and I'm, Magic. No, man, I'm going. Crazy. I will not do that. I, I'm, my head's still spinning because Jesse went crazy, bro. He went crazy. You got you. Th who when he who threw is seen as LeBron? That's crazy. Who so is your Jordan again? Is, 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 Austin. Look, no. Roman, we, we can do no. Austin or just no. whoever you want to pick. Roman no. Steph Curry. Okay, this is this is getting dumb. Oh, gosh, Kenny cooking too. <laughs> this is dumb. This is dumb. You guys are just being stupid now. Dude, Kenny's cooking. Change the game. Kenny's cooking. You, you guys are being stupid. <laughs> Change right the game. I love my job, bro. Go to any phone call. I don't even freaking care which one. This is stupid. TC, how you doing? TC, hey, talk to your hey, boys. Man, listen, what's up with my two brothers, man? Nah, what's you, up with you in the back? I'm fine, right? <laughs> TC, what, what up, man? How you living? I know you ain't talking wrestling, man. What, what's up? What's up, man? What you talking, man? Hey, now check it out, though. Look, hey, hey, Kenny, D Lo, Jesse, y'all got me? We here. All right, look, check it out, bro. Like, so, so seriously, on a on a Kings though, um, it's two parts to that situation. So, as far as from fan standpoint, like, I think the fans we're, we're more frustrated because it's it, we feel like, bro, we care more than y'all. Like, y'all coming up here super real, nonchalant. Real quick, Ooh. real quick, for clarification, he's talking about De'Aaron's post post game comments. Am I right, TC? Well, that is, no, because De'Aaron is going to be De'Aaron. I'm not too much on that. I'm just too much. I'm, I'm more on the standpoint as far as, like, everybody like, oh, it doesn't matter what the fans think. It doesn't matter if they're not really tripping. I'm t thinking it like, bro, listen, we're caring. We shouldn't care more than y'all on this situation. You get me? That's not fair, uh, TC. That's too much. That's not fair because you don't know that nah, you that do. Yeah. I would actually tell you you probably don't care more than they do. No, nah, I think I think fans think about it differently than they do. Mm -hmm. Like we forget this is their job. This this consumes them. Mm -hmm. Like it doesn't consume every athlete to an unhealthy degree, but it like no, nah, that that's not fair, you, TC. It, that's not that's these, not fair at all. These guys in professional sports got to this point in part because of their talent, but the other part because they're some of the most competitive human beings in the world. <laughs> like you a lot of like Maybe you'll get a Olawa Candy or you'll get a Ben Simmons every now and then. But most of these guys want to be the best at everything they do. These are the, some of the most competitive people in the world. They absolutely care at a high, high level about whether or not they're winning basketball games. Andre the Giants, Magic Johnson, and Larry Bird. I don't know who, but that's a what? good that's David Jackson. David Jackson brings up Andre the David Giant. That's Jackson, a good call that right there. Well, awful. he did. Well, no, that's not what he said. He brought up Andre the Giant in the chat, and it made me think that's who's Magic oh, and Bird. Well, Dilo, now we that fixed is that. Awful. No, that makes you don't sense. believe that. We'll come back. No, I think I do. I think I believe that. But this this Hogan isn't Jordan thing is absurd. <laughs> we'll come back. Get James Ham's thoughts on this. He joins us. Unfortunately, we'll talk Kings basketball, and we'll look ahead. Rather than look back too much, we'll look ahead. 
uh, and talk about what this game means for Sacramento coming up on Friday when we do the one case if we turn here on Sacramento Sports Leader ESPN 1320. Is the Rock Allen Iverson? Oh, boy. Rock Allen Iverson. Don't hate that one. Influential. I might have gone Rock Kobe. That's a solid one, too. I'm trying to think, man, who could be who could be Allen Iverson? Someone that just kind of changed stuff. Oh man, the Rock is Kobe. Yeah, hmm. Undertaker equals Shaq. Ah, that works. That works. That works. Yeah, David Jackson put something in about Andre the Giant. That made me think. That's 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 Larry and Magic. People that, that uh, Ho, oh, Andre was probably the first famous professional wrestler. Hogan became the uber famous professional wrestler. Ooh, Macho Man, that's a good one. They'd have to be someone in Hogan's era. Uh, that'd have to be someone in Jordan's era, I mean. Um, ooh, oh, that's a good one, David. Damn. Who's the Macho Man? Hmm. Is Macho Man? I don't know. Like, I don't know. Like we'll do Hogan, whatever. But like, is Macho Man magic? He so that I, that that works. Like I feel like that works because he was at the top, and yeah. then like they kind of like he was them right the there. Yeah, yeah. Not, yeah. Not like magic. I pushed the side. He got sick, but yeah, he was right there. Barkley probably works a little bit too. I'm not sure. I do like the idea of magic. Um, Luca, flops. <laughs> yeah, he's Luca. I like that one. Okay. All right. Perfect. You said Stefan? Okay. <clears throat> I don't know if this works. Pippen was good. Ultimate Warrior to go with the most overrated player of all time, probably. Draymond. There it is. Ultimate Warrior's Draymond Green. I was never an Ultimate Warrior fan. Steve Kerr was sleeping <laughs> Lanny Poffo. <laughs> NWO Rodman is Draymond. That's funny. Fair. It's funny though. Macho Man is Rodman. Okay. <laughs> Barkley could be excellent. <laughs> Jim Duggan. NWO, LeBron D. Wade and Bosch. Yep, that's easy. Red Heart James Harden. Draybond equals doink. Is Red Heart James Harden? Feels like he's been slided at every turn. <laughs> but that says Iverson. I know, but I, I'm oh. just changing it. Yeah. Oh. Like one of the oh. all time greats. Oh. Yes. Yes. One of the all time greats. Oh. James is, put the headphones on, Kenny. You got it? All right. Is Bret Hart James Harden? Oh, man. Come Top five on. at his Brett, position. Very dude. bitter about just <laughs> what's happened to him and stuff like that. Man, if WCW no, is yeah, listening, you gotta, you gotta, you gotta tell WCW Ooh. what like James Harden. Yeah, yeah. I, James Harden. Yeah, I could have won an MVP that one year, but Giannis <laughs> took it from me that one year, and I should have won it. Giannis kicked me in my face. Oh man, <laughs> I am the best there is, the best there was, and the best there ever will be. That's my breath. That's my breath. That is. That wow. Well, hmm. some would say, some would say, um, 
There's parallels there. Mm -hmm. Some would say Brett is Isaiah Thomas. Who would say that? Isaiah's no, always complaining. Because like, oh, I thought you were talking about it, like little IT. No, 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 Detroit. Oh, okay. I'm very anxious to see the response we just got to that text. <laughs> Jesse equated James Harden to Bret Hart. And mm. at first it was like, hey, wait a minute. <laughs> wait a minute. That might check out. Do do you um did you hear, hear the other one I had though? That Isaiah Thomas is Bret Hart? Yeah, I don't they like were that champions. one as much. Yeah. Brett was a champion. Isaiah was a champion. Never the guy. Yeah, they complained never the about guy. never getting the respect. Never the guy. All this other yeah. Stuff. I mean, Michael Jordan is Isaiah Thomas's Goldberg. <laughs> we can't go in an interview without hearing about that. Well, <laughs> like that's spot on. You've right been there. wrong a little bit today, <laughs> no, but you it's are been in this bag. You are no, cooking. man. Come on, man. This you guy's been cooking. in his bag today. Mark Jones wow. says, I'm in my bag. He's in his Gucci bag. It's probably a Louis bag. Ramsey's gonna change the subject. I actually know what Ramsey wants to talk about. This is interesting. Oh, What's... can we do you already know? Can I guess? Sure. Um uh to opening day tomorrow no oh, no nah. it, it, that's too that's too mainstream like this is this is a this is a big story it's in our notes we haven't brought it up yet but ramsey go ahead my question is <laughs> I, while i commend ice cube for going on pat mcafee today and offering caitlin clark a five million dollar contract to join the big three how does this truly logistically work with big three games and WNBA games being played at same time, at the same time on same days in different locations, that's the only that's the only logistical thing that I can't wrap my head around at the moment. I could be wrong. I didn't hear the interview, by the way. I, I didn't, didn't know either. that he did it on Pat McAfee. I know a TMZ report got out, mm -hmm. and he did. Hugh die. confirmed it, yeah. and by saying we intended to keep this. A seek like we wanted her to get through the tournament first before we publicly acknowledge this offer. My thought was this wasn't the big three and the WNBA. This was the big three instead of the WNBA. That's what I that's what I, I could, thought. Maybe, but again, I didn't hear him right. explain this, so I could I could be completely wrong on that. Because because I thought like there was a uh a, 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 an article or something. I think it was on Jill Adge's thing where he had talked about given an alternative to having to go overseas and, and he it's exactly what he tweeted about so that's that i mean that doesn't his tweet read yeah, america's women athletes should not be forced to spend their off seasons playing in often dismal and dubious foreign countries just to make ends meet and they should have more than just ah and they should have more than just one professional option in the u.s at a time when American pro sports leagues are being infiltrated. Okay, I'm just going to. Well, all right. So I, I just got concerned because Cube has been a little. <laughs> yeah, you never know. You, where you he's never know going. exactly where he's going, but I don't. Um, I don't hate this. I don't hate it, but I, I, I don't know if I like it. I, I don't hate it for her getting that type of bag, for him trying to build his league. Like, I get all that, but. My, my feel the the first focus should be the the uh w growing the wnba i th i think the re and the reason in my opinion that that should be the case is how many more women can he offer that money to mm -hmm. or anything in the vicinity of that money because if the big 3 can start offering 8 to 10 women a year a million dollars or more then this is an entirely different conversation mm -hmm. But if it's one potentially generational athlete, and I think he used that term in one of his original tweets, one potentially generational athlete, $5 million, that probably, that doesn't do much for anyone except Caitlin's pocketbook. Mm -hmm. Like it creates an intrigue, a, perhaps a greater intrigue to the big three mm -hmm. 
it probably hurts the W. It doesn't probably hurt the WNBA. It does hurt the WNBA. But like once the newness of Caitlin is over, then what for the big three? Mm-hmm. Do you do it again? The fo- Do you do it with Juju? Right. Do you do it the following year? Like, are you attempting to? And it sounds like maybe this is what he's trying to do. Are you attempting to create an alternative for these women? Because if you are, I need to see your offers for everybody else mm-hmm. in the draft yeah. who you find. They don't have to be generational talent. Right. They've got to be good talent. Also, what's your league? Yeah, well, that's what I was about to say. And and like what like what uh, are we is talking she, about? Is she competing with the guys or the, are you creating a girls division or women's division? Like what what are we what are like, we doing? Like is she Katino Mobley's new teammate? Yeah, like I like I, if he was creating hey, a women's division, I'd really like that. I think the big 3 is fantastic. I think it's a it, it, it it's a it's a tremendous product to be at in person. They do. It, it can be a long day. They used to tape. I don't know how they do it now. They used to tape a bunch of games at once and the games would air over a stretch of time, but you'd be there. You were there for a good, decent amount of time, mm-hmm. but it was a super interactive experience. They got the crowds really, really involved. They knew the audience was a little bit younger. Like cube to me, cube did a, has done a brilliant job of building out this league. Mm -hmm. I like this idea. It gets them attention. I don't like it for Caitlin. I hate it for the WNBA. I think it needs to be kind of worked out a little bit more. Mm -hmm. And if you, I don't, I don't know that you need to create a separate sports league. I don't think so. If you don't think you do, if you want to run something, you know, that, that doesn't run against the WNBA and Caitlin is is here instead of going overseas and you're paying her five million to do dollars to do that oh yeah mm-hmm. yeah give me that yeah give me that but like don't don't compete against the wnba that's going to do more harm than good i agree uh to i think your greater purpose i agree I, I i was just thinking about that thing like can they start putting the big three at a different time of year i don't know if they can it's tough i don't know if they because can because of when the wnba ends right and now you're up against the NBA, you're yeah. full force with the NFL mm-hmm. and all this other stuff yeah. in college football. It's tough. Um, so it might have to stay there. But if you're going to do that, but I think I don't there's... think you should you should mess. I don't think you I think the at the big three lean into what, you they know, are. Mm-hmm. And that's a place where retired players who can still play and maybe some street ball college legends can do that and play. Cool. You could hell. You maybe could do a women's division at a different time of year, you know, and and see how that works. But I, I, I think the WM the the WWE is fifty two weeks a year. They're at a new location every Monday night and every Friday night. Mm-hmm. That competes with the NFL. That competes with 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 the NBA. You book your arenas around that. Mm-hmm. The big three can you can work with arenas and how you visit these places. Their price point is not a Sacramento Kings Golden One Center price point. Mm -hmm. It's very, very different. You can work concurrently with these other things. Now, television deals come into play Mm -hmm. and they, I think, have been with. Fox, CBS, CBS. Okay, yeah. So they so they've 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 had their deals Actually, with the zone, I think, too. Okay. (laughs) Well, you'll have to fill me in on that. I, I, I guess I I don't know, James. I equated the Hulk. I equated uh, Hulk Hogan to Michael Jordan, and the whole show has gone to hell since then. Hmm. All right, but it still beats uh, talking about the Kings losing by thirty plus points to the Dallas Mavericks. It, well, last look, night. and before we talk Facts. about them, I just because there's a bunch of NFL stuff, we'll probably get to tomorrow. I don't want to get. We into might that. never get to it. <laughs> It's been in the nose for three days. <laughs> but did you did you see uh, that thing about <laughs> how the um, how the 49ers g- yeah, got caught? I did. Yeah, I need <laughs> Stacey Kaufman to do that. Are you giving the money back? If I already got, I didn't even notice. No, <laughs> I wonder how how like how long it took them to get back because the money spent like, like there's nothing I can do about. It. If you if we what, get paid on Friday and you found out on Tuesday maybe I could like give it back. But if it's months later and I didn't bought me a new this and that, sorry. 
Yeah, no, if I it's can't give it back to you. If it's months later, I'm I'm probably not thinking about it. Because so the story for those who didn't know, John Lynch says the Niners got in that salary cap trouble because they accidentally overpaid one of the players by seventy five thousand dollars, and they went to the before they got caught and or had to report it and all this other stuff. They went to the player and like, hey, we gave you an extra seventy five thousand on accident. We got to get that back. And the player was like, no. <laughs> and they they were like, hey. That's what I'm going to do. Hey. Like, and they, I think and he said be. they could have like appealed or like done a bunch of stuff. He's like, just forget it. Just move forward. We'll take the penalty and, and do what we got to do. Yeah. Like, yeah. By law, you have to give that back. I mean. Oh, shut up, James. <laughs> yeah. I, I mean, it is what it shut is. Up. Like. Like a bank error in your favor, this is not monopoly. You do have to actually give the money back. Well, it wasn't necessarily a bank error, though. It was, it was a, your accounting company. error. Yeah, yeah, your company yeah. messed up. I just thought y'all more. thought highly of me once. I don't know what to tell you. <laughs> I thought this was a safe way check. I thought the <laughs> rules finders, keepers, losers, weepers. All I right, thought, that's what it is. That's I right. thought this was a bonus for me showing up at the sales meeting yesterday. <laughs> that's right. No bonus there. No. Apparently, <laughs> James gave a legendary sales meeting. Uh, recently, because oh, many people have brought attention that James was drawing boxes <laughs> on 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 the whiteboard in the room, and that was brought to my attention today. Because James and I have different approaches apparently during our sales meetings. Many they're people like, say I did well in that meeting, but I don't know what that means. They, when they agreed to it, they're probably like, "Oh yeah, sure, we'll meet with D'Lo and KC." We saw how well went with James and, and Kyle. I, so nice. I wonder what D'Lo and KC will draw on the whiteboard. <laughs> Oh, guys, so nice. the you guys just walk in with a stack of phone books and set them yeah. down really heavily on the counter. All right, let's have a talk. Yeah, it's about <laughs> how it went, James. It's about how it went. Um, all right, man, we've had our fun. Oh man, <sighs> yeah, I know. Wah, I know. Wah, let's talk wah, about it. Here, here's here's the thing, Hammer. Yesterday sucked, and. It, it was it, it was bad on national television. It was a beat down. It was it was just a tough game uh, from Sacramento. But we all knew you got two games against Dallas. If you get both, man, that would be incredible. But really, you've got to find a way to at worst split these two games. As bad as last night was, Hammer, nothing's changed. Friday is still in front of you. You've got to play a whole lot better than you did yesterday but the ability to split these two games with Dallas and win the season series is still right there in front of you. Yeah, it's huge. I mean, like, look, this team has put themselves in a position where every game is basically a playoff game at this point. If they want to get in, they've got to win. And, uh, you know, there there aren't any more excuses. There are no more, you know, reasons why you you didn't hold up and and you came out in the third quarter and just you know, laid a complete egg. You just have to figure out ways to win. And, you know, if you, if you want to be a team that makes a po- the postseason, uh, you can't, you can't just float around for a second half of a game and, and hope that you don't get clobbered because NBA teams are tough and you went up against two of the best shot makers in the, in the world. And they burned you. One of them burned you in the first half. One of them burned you in the second half and you got to be better next time out. You got to be better, Can but I, I'm sorry. I just saw this. Did you see that the Fox clip made awful announcing? Oh, no, yeah. but it was all over the place. Yeah, like, like I, 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 James, when you put, I did not think anything of this. <laughs> this clip really is everywhere. That's I didn't wild. think anything of this clip when, 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 I mean, when I, I didn't either, but I did, it just kept popping up. But they grabbed Matt's, you know, because mm-hmm. he had the straight, he, he, they, they, they grabbed that video and the, it, <laughs> well, okay. They wrote an article about it. Um, you can go read that for yourself. I don't want to be, yeah. Um, but yeah, I guess that I guess that was a big deal from De'Aaron last night. Did you think anything of it when he said that? Um, well, I I knew it was a potential viral clip, but no, I didn't think anything of it because I I know that that's how De'Aaron handles his business, and that's how De'Aaron thinks. Like, there's there's nothing new in there. Like I've Mm -hmm. known that for a long time. De'Aaron does not love speaking to the media until it's time for him to speak to the media for specific things. And then he's fine with it. But overall, like he knows it's part of his job. 
He knows that when media relations comes in and asks him to go speak to the media, that it's time for that. He, he doesn't say no, he, he comes in and he does his job and, and he understands that it's, it's not a real fun thing for him. Um, I think the only time he does have fun is when he comes out with Malik and they do like the tandem uh, post games. And then it's kind of those two just kind of go playing off each other and having a good time. But like, look, you get asked very similar questions, like in an 82 game season, 41 of them are at home. It's the same group of people sitting in the same exact room. The only difference is for some reason they move the chairs almost every single day. So we'll always have different formations with the chairs, which is weird. But outside of that, it's the same exact thing again and again and again going on seven years for him. And every once in a while, we have a, a really cool moment with De'Aaron or one of the other players where they reflect on something in an interesting way. That question, um, uh, you know, again, Jason Anderson asked a question, which, you know, he, he asked it, so it's not like I'm telling secrets here. But uh, I just think De'Aaron's answer was was just, like, forthright. And, like, this is how he feels. Like, he would rather not be there. And And to be honest, I don't blame him. You know, I, I would much rather we just have like right after the game, they bring one guy in, you know, seven minutes after the game and then another guy right afterwards. Then those guys get to go shower and leave and do whatever they're going to do the rest of the night. It is kind of a long drawn out approach now and, and it takes a, a long time. And then again, you're asked sort of the same questions night in and night out. That question was a little bit different, but it, it just seemed to strike a chord with him. Here on Awful Announcing, the headline is De'Aaron Fox denies doing post-game media is a form of leadership, saying, quote, I don't get S out of that. <laughs> I think, no, but the, the great of, thing is there's no – picture of him smiling next to him. Because <laughs> he was smiling when he said it. He's like, yeah. I get – I thought the clip was funny. I was like, that, that, that's De'Aaron. Like, I think for us here – like, that's just De'Aaron. Like you just said, that De'Aaron yeah. is being real as he could be right now. No, I totally agree. And, and to be honest with you, I understand the sentiment. Like if I were him, I wouldn't want to go out and talk to the media. Unless you're a player who's going to to be in the media when you're done playing and you need reps and you're 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 actually working on something. Like Vince Carter would like hold fireside chats at his locker every night. And everyone just fawn over Vince, Vince Carter. Always oh, amazing. He's amazing. And like as a writer, it wasn't great. Like for television, sure. For a video yeah, clip. There's a guy okay. in San Francisco who does that. Yeah. Yeah. But <laughs> the just clip. He a bunch of words to get ready for his television appearance. <laughs> exactly. Well, Vince would tell stories. And I mean, it was it was really fun to listen to. But if you're trying to make a quote out of it, it just was like totally unquotable. He, he had at least like 300 extra words in a sentence. And you're like, I don't know what to do with this. <laughs> so I get like, I get that he doesn't love it and he doesn't love the process. And I also get that he thinks it doesn't matter to his teammates or anything else. That's never been my point. My point is that you don't have to be accountable to the guys in the locker room when it comes to who goes to the podium. You have to be accountable as a leader for what happens in the game. So there is a different a, a different set of rules here that we're talking about. There is an account of somebody has to come out and talk when you lose to a Dallas Mavericks team by whatever the final score was, 32 points or what I don't know what it was, 36. It was bad. It was bad. It was bad. So somebody has to come out because that's part of the game. It's part of taking ownership of what happened. But as far as what goes on in the locker room and, and whether he likes it or not, hey, I, I totally get it, you know? Yeah. I, I, I've said it before, and I'm I just I'm going to continue to say it, and it's no knock on anybody. I just don't understand why they – all these professional athletes in all sports have such a problem with going to the podium. Like, it's like pulling teeth. And I understand – same questions or whatever, but just give the same answers. Like you're, you're not up there that long. You you can say the same can response if you want to uh, all the time, and then you move on. And I I just I've never understood that aspect of why um, they get so annoyed with doing it. And it's clearly not just Fox. Like you ask most of these athletes, 
And they're like, it's the worst part of the job. It's like, all right, I guess. <laughs> I don't, I don't, I just don't understand it. Yeah. And I mean, like when you're asking questions, it, like as someone who has asked these questions a bajillion times at this point, um, you're trying to get like a player to open up and give you something, some good content, right? And De'Aaron inadvertently gave good content last night, but he's also had moments where he just opens up and he's phenomenal. And when that happens, it's like, it's really difficult because there are like two or three people in the room that I think see it happening and are like, oh my gosh, we're getting gold. And then we kind of start chasing it. But the problem is in these settings, you have that. And then out of no one, nowhere, someone will, you know, raise their hand and, and sort of ask like a ridiculous question that doesn't make like, you know, about very too specific about a game, something happened in the game or about a, the other posing team and whatever. It snaps a player out of whatever they were going through and how they were laying things out for you. Um, and so I, I get it like. But again, it, it is part of the job. It, it is. And James absolutely has someone in mind when he just gave that scenario. <laughs> no, I mean, there are people that do that all the time that like they mm -hmm. they're not reading the conversation that they're mm -hmm. that they have in their head a question that they have to ask. They they've got to know the answer. And what they're not understanding is a player is or a coach is starting to go down a pathway that that is really cool and rich. You know, it's something that you, we can go mine that thing for a while. And then they just like, they've got to ask their question for whatever reason that is and snaps a player or a coach out of that conversation. And like, look, I, I think sort of the interesting thing about like what we do here, right? Um, when I'm on the insiders, I talk a totally different way than I do with you guys. Like we cover a lot of the same topics, but the format is different. You guys are throwing questions to me. Where in on the insiders, me and Kyle are going back and forth. We're taking a million different topics. And and I'm also very different when I talk on the King's Beat podcast. I'm running the show, I'm leading, you know, questions to so like if every time we got into one of these conversations and we started having like really cool, insightful stuff that's happening, whoever is is talking, you wanna let that breathe and you wanna let it have space and time and and then you want to follow up. Like there's been times where like Kenny, we had a last week, we had something that we were talking about and you just kept coming back to me and asking more and more and more about it. That's what we're trying to get to in a press scrum. Most of the time, what we don't want is, you know, the, the one sentence answer from Demonis Sabonis, which, you know, and that's not because Demonis doesn't say anything. It's because he, he, he's in and out. He doesn't like, have a bunch of extra words that he likes to throw. But I mean, that's our job is to, is to try to chase a story and try to pull as much out of a player as we can. And it's not the easiest setting in a, in a scrum. It's not like in this podium setting that we have now, it's not easy either. It's just different. I don't know why I have in my head the clip that I think I saw for the first time. I'd always heard about it, but I think I actually watched the clip for the first time, like a week ago when somebody asked Kyrie about LeBron being a father figure to him. And Kyrie was, <laughs> the lady asked the question, and this is when they were in Cleveland. She asked the question, and Kyrie was like, um, uh, no, what, I, I couldn't hear what you said. What, I, I'm hearing things. What would you say? She's like, yeah, hey, yeah, how about him being a father figure to you? And it goes, I, I don't even, um, he was so perplexed. He's like, hmm. well, I have one father, and that's, hmm. he said the father's name. And it's, but, yeah, LeBron, is he's, he's really great at being a leader in the locker room. And do, he was so flustered by, and that's like what James so, talks about. Like, maybe he's talking about, like, regular stuff, and somebody comes out of nowhere with this question. It's just like, Well, the reporter what? probably had the idea of writing a story about how Kyrie looks up to LeBron James. So they form that question that way in hopes of getting the answer they want for the story that they already had developing in their head. Yeah. As it turns out, the story doesn't exist. <laughs> no, I, and I think that that happens all the time. Right. But I also like, again, 
you you do this long enough and there's moments where there's like synchronicity with the group right where it's all of a sudden we see something that's happening and sean will ask a follow-up and i'll follow up to his follow-up and then jason will ask a follow-up and we're all pulling on the same thread mm -hmm. like unwinding this thing like crazy and that is when you get gold and it just doesn't happen all that often, especially now. Like if you get a, a an interview in a pregame setting with like, I had the one-on-one -on -one with Keon Ellis last week, right? It's just very much like there is no flow yet. There is no, we're not around these guys nearly as much as we were in the past. So there isn't like a level of comfort that he has with everybody. And a lot of times that's Pre not when you get the best stuff. Too, though, right? It depends on the player. Like, mm. and, and also depends on the line of questioning. So that's a place where like, if I'm writing a story about, let's say about Malik Monk, right. But I, I know that, you know, Mason Jones and him have a relationship because they're both from, uh, they, well, I think Mason played at Arkansas, but they also both played for the Lakers at the same time. And, and then I want to get a quote from De'Aaron Fox that's a pregame is a really good time to go in and, and ask a very specific line of questions that are very short and with the understanding that you're plugging them, plugging them into a specific piece, right? So I can go to De'Aaron, hey, I just want to ask you something really quick about Malik and then hit him with two questions. All right, have a good game, whatever, leave him. And then you go to the next person. That's Those are good places to formulate those those questions. Um, and and postgame, it used to be that while the scrum was in one area, if you were writing a story, you could sneak off and go get another player, but that's just not how it is anymore. There's one player in the locker room at a time for the most part. Like the post COVID era is very different for us. So this is fun um, talking about a viral social media clip, but what went wrong for De'Aaron in yesterday's game? Or, and this was my stance three hours ago when we were actually talking about the Kings Mavericks, I thought Dallas did a lot right that frustrated De'Aaron and perhaps frustrated Sacramento. What were your thoughts on the way the game transpired? Probably more specifically the first half. I thought the first half was pretty rocky. Obviously, everything went terrible at the beginning of the third. But they, they the Dallas Mavericks, had a game plan that seemed to really frustrate De'Aaron Fox and DeMontis Sabonis as well. Yeah, I mean, they sent Derek Jones Jr. at De'Aaron from the moment the ball was inbounds. So he was tracking him at all times, picking up, picking him up full court, which took the ball out of Fox's hands and sort of changed the trajectory of what he was trying to do. There wasn't a lot of downhill action for, for De'Aaron. And I thought it was brilliant. And then they just kept doing it. They, they used Dante Exum to do it. They... Uh, whatever, whoever the player was, it's a defensive minded player on the court. They sent him at De'Aaron. And I think that, I mean, it worked for one night that I don't believe will work again on Friday when they play again. Um, I thought it was, again, it is sort of clever for like a little short stint to try to get the ball out of De'Aaron's hands, but the Kings motion offense went to hell in a hand basket and De'Aaron wasn't getting the ball in the right spots again that will change and not only that but when De'Aaron found success early in the game it was because he kept using that and getting switched on to Luca and then Luca doesn't play any defense at all he just tries to reach out and grab you the whole time and so De'Aaron was abusing Luca on the high screen and uh he just didn't hit his shots and so like look I I think this was a bad game for De'Aaron is a bad game for the Kings in general Mm -hmm. But I think that they'll look at what happened in that game and they'll be able to make some pretty substantial changes into how they handle situations like that. And then if you look at the third quarter, you know, basketball players like anyone else, when whenever things go wrong, you regress to what you're best at and or what you think you're best at. And De'Aaron and Malik, I think both of them really regress to watching Kyrie and watching Luca and how they were dominating the ball and they turned into that player as well. And so there wasn't a lot of movement. There wasn't a lot of screens. Um, you know, they forgot about Porky on Ellis who has seven points in like the first three minutes 
and doesn't get another shot attempt until late in the fourth quarter when he gets an and one. Uh, they forgot about Keegan Murray for stretches, and it just became very unkings like basketball of way too many dribbles, way, way too much like me, 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 hero ball, and it and everything fell apart completely. One of the things that I also think about with um, that game and that strategy is if they're going to defend De'Aaron like that with those type of players, you're like, okay, well, you're taking something off from the offensive end for Dallas, and you didn't. Exum and Derrick Jones were a combined four of seven from beyond the arc last night. And that's just, like I said, if they're being effective on the defensive end, that's one thing, but you don't expect for to get both, right? Like, all right, we'll take a little off of our offense right now to get better on defense. Well, not only did they not take a little bit off on their offense, they shot relatively well today so, or last night. So, um, James, I just thought it was one of those things, like I said, we could talk about, you know, being ready and, you know, letting people – I don't think they necessarily let anybody do anything. I, Dallas shot the, the the crap out of the ball last night. Um, 22 yeah. threes, um, 56% from beyond the arc. Mama told me there was going to be days like this, and, and it was like that last night. You combine that with the fact that the Kings didn't really shoot the ball well, which is a little bit on them and a little bit you tip your hat to Dallas, mm -hmm. and you get a 30-point loss. Yeah, I thought it was interesting, even the way the Kings decided to start the game with Demonis Sabonis defending uh, P.J. Um, why am I drawing Washington. a blank? Yeah, P.J. Washington. Um, because then Dallas just kept getting him in the screen and roll. And mm -hmm. and so both, you know, they would sort of, Sabonis would go with Luka, and whoever's defending Luka would try to go with him as well because he's so crafty. And B.J. Washington was wide open and hit three threes right away, like right in the first quarter. Boom, boom, boom. Then they made some adjustments. And next thing you know, it, it was no longer uh, P.J. setting that screen. They started using their big. So Daniel Gafford was coming up and setting the screen or um, uh, uh, Derek Lively. And and then they tried to do screen and rolls. And so the big man's roll into the basket. Well, that's what happened in the second quarter, and none of that worked. And the Kings stayed in the game because they kept getting steals on Luka, making bad passes, and they were, again, shocking Luka. They are running two guys at him. And and then when he was trying to make the pass to the cutter, the Kings were just stepping in and taking the ball. So I, I think, first of all, Dallas learned from that, and when they came out in the second half, they stopped doing the screen and roll. They went specifically to all of those sets that you're talking about where they're getting the wide open looks. And I'd also point out too, when you talk about Derek Jones Jr. and Exum, like they have to play defense like at a crazy high level. But the way that that team is designed, if De'Aaron has to play defense like that on one end, and then on the other end, he's running around like a crazy person. That's not what they're doing with Exum and with Derek Jones Jr. Those dudes are going over and hanging out in the corner, catching their breath. And when the ball gets thrown to them at, you know, three seconds left in the shot clock, because Luca's dribbled all over God's creation with it and then finds them. It's not a huge expenditure of energy. They're really only expending the energy on one end of the court. So while they were effective and hit four of seven, number one, I don't think they'd hit four or seven again because that's not who they are as players. But also those guys are just kind of well rested. All they've got to do is play on one end of the court because you have two like tremendously high usage players in Kyrie and uh and Luca. Hammer, I thought, you know, we talk about the Mavericks defense, what they did to Sacramento, Sacramento missing shots. I thought particularly in the first half, the Sacramento Kings were really indecisive on the offensive end. Like there were some plays around the rim. Of course, they just they just missed a couple that, you know, if they do again today, maybe those drop. But there were some points where they made the extra pass where they probably shouldn't have made the extra pass. And it either resulted in a bad shot or a turnover. And it felt like, and I don't know if this is a credit to Dallas or just their own thinking, but they looked really, really indecisive in that first half yesterday. Yeah, I just think they had a lot running through their minds. That's what it kind of looked like. One team wasn't thinking and was just playing, and the other team was thinking about it and thinking about Teams how were upset they were on true TV. That's what was going on at first. <laughs> there half. it is. I'm like, wait, we're on true TV? What the hell? <laughs> yeah. And it was in your head. Wondering why it was going to double overtime with the with the Lakers and Bucks. 
wondering yeah. why Don Rivers blew another lead. Yeah. Mm. Hmm. Imagine that. <laughs> oh, a 19 point lead. Hey, Anthony Davis did a hell of a job last night. Well, LeBron didn't play. Yeah. Uh, I, I, I love. Man. I, love, I love how um, Doc Rivers is the first person we go to there. Oh, yeah, that's a must. Yeah. Like, yeah. yeah. Like, like he was one for five in fault. the fourth quarter. <laughs> it's his fault. I said I said to Mike, he's in 3-1 <laughs> mode right now. Sorry, James, go ahead. Maybe no. This Doc Rivers comedy hour. <laughs> yeah, I, I mean, the Kings just made a lot of errors. And, you know, uh, just a weird game. Plus, I, they they also like each of these games is a reminder that you're on nationally te- national television, that everything's the breaks are longer, that yeah, you know you have to mm-hmm. slow yourself down and kind of live in the moment a little bit more, and I, I think it also plays into it too. We saw, you know, Malik try to go playoff Malik, and it wasn't a good form of playoff Malik. It was forced, and you know his three point shot is not falling at all right now. And same with De'Aaron, you know his three point shot has been hit and miss. Um, and we saw just way too much of that, almost like, Hey, the bright lights are on, uh, you know, more people are watching and it, it just did not go the way that they thought it would go. Uh, that is a good first half though. I mean, until Kyrie started, I thought it was, I thought it was a terrible first half, but I thought they're still in it. Like they're right there. Yeah. So this is, this is actually great. They didn't play well. They're right there in the game. This will be a strong third quarter. Huh. Huh. Not the, huh. that, that, that didn't no, happen. It did not. That game, yeah. that game ended quickly, man. Yeah, it really felt like 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 an anvil just fell from the sky and right on top of the Kings. It was just like a they, Kyrie avalanche. Yeah, just one like mistake, one forced offensive play after another. And then on the other end, Kyrie, he wasn't even touching the net. Mm-mm. Like, it was like, what in the world? Um, when That's what makes those two that team so tough. When they start hitting, they're nearly impossible to stop. When when you have Luka and you have Kyrie hitting, I don't know. I, like, I, I feel like... And that was the like, cold piece. It wasn't even at the same time. No. It no. was like, Luka's like, I got the first half. Kyrie, you take the second. Kyrie went crazy i kind of feel though that the golden one center has become like the course field equivalent for for basketball teams you know like you go to course field and everyone hits a home run because the air yeah. it seems like whatever is with the sight lines in sacramento they are perfect for shooters and shooters love it and everyone everyone hits everything at golden one center and uh, you know i don't really remember a whole lot of teams having bad shooting nights there uh, except for the Kings. See, And that's because the, they play there more often than everyone else. But yeah, it's not the King's fault. It's the architect's there fault. There you go. There Mike it is. Chill out. It's not about defense. It's about the architects. It's the lighting. That's it's about, it's about that damn open <laughs> thing that everyone <laughs> tries to, it's the, the hanger that everybody tries to replicate. Uh, we'll come back. We'll talk much more about the Sacramento Kings with our insider from the insiders. Our man, James Ham here. Medilla and KC brought to you by Sky River Casino. Return here on Sacramento Sports Leader ESPN 1320. I uh, was looking for a picture to be a smart ass because I've never seen one and didn't think it existed. And to the best of my knowledge, it in fact doesn't exist. But I came across a very unfortunate Reddit post from Squared Circle. Jesse, are you listening to this? Nine years ago, Mike and Mike on ESPN. Just called Hulk Hogan the Michael Jordan of wrestling. Oh, no. Yeah, well, Mike and Mike oh. broke up, so that shows how much they knew. Recycled. Get up. I'm Damian Barling here. <laughs> <laughs> oh. mm, that's funny. I'll concede Hogan and Jordan if you give me Bret Harden and Harden. I'll give you that. That's pretty funny. I'll give you that. Man, I looked at the, I don't know, James, for some reason after that loss last night, I feel like the King's schedule looks a lot tougher than it did last week. 
<laughs> got the Jazz ahead. I got that. That Knicks Celtics thing is stupid. The Knicks Celtics net stretch is ridiculous. Yeah, but look at the look at the Sun schedule. <laughs> well, it starts tonight for the Suns, right? It's it's uh uh Denver tonight. Yes, they have ten games left. The easiest win loss percentage on their schedule is the Sacramento Kings. They have oh a six six forty seven. So if you look at Tankathon strength yep. of schedule, the Kings aren't on their schedule as one of their tough teams, and they have no this, easy teams. This is a monster. It starts with the Nuggets tonight. Uh, the Thunder on Friday. This is, I, I I'll, I'll do better. Sorry, at Nuggets, at Thunder, at Pelicans. They're home versus the Cavs, home versus the Timberwolves, home versus the Pelicans. Remember those two games they have against the Pelicans could help the Kings out either way, especially if they win Friday versus the Clippers at the Clippers. Again, remember those games against the Clippers can help the Kings either way, especially if they win on Friday, then they'll play Sacramento the second to last game of the season on April 12th and then close out at Minnesota. So they end with three games on the road while Sacramento finishes with three games at home. That yeah, that is brutal. That Kings game against Boston will still be tough. But I think that's going to be one where like um, the Kings will be playing like the Celtics without Drew Holiday. And, like, mm -hmm. like they're going to be nursing like injuries and stuff like that, like resting mm -hmm. guys till they get to the playoffs. So the Kings might have a little bit of um. That's maybe, the uh, second night of the back to back. Doing. I think. I think the yeah, first night in New York, it's the national yeah. televised game, and then uh, and yeah, then they, they go got to go back to New York, Boston, New York. Yeah. Stupid. Mm hmm. Yeah, I don't think the Lakers are making the sixth seed either. And that um, Clippers is a road game, right? That's at the Clippers. For the Kings? Yeah, is it, or is that here? Oh, no, it's next Tuesday at home. It's here. It's here. Oh, okay, okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I might have to go see my boy. I got to get out to that. These games, yeah, oh, Russell's back, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, these games, have, uh, like every game down the wire is going to be crazy. Yeah. So... That's a good point, Amos. Mind you, the Celtics just to play everyone that day. Yeah, it's a good point. Even the Kings finished two games at home, right? So it's Phoenix and then Portland last game of the season. I think it's three games at home. Um, because I think the Blazers are in there. The Is Blazers Pelican, last game. Pelicans, Suns, Blazers. Oh, Jesus. Let me let me double let me let me double check to make sure I'm not. And the Pelicans and Suns are both the fifth game of the season against those teams. Yeah. Weird. Yeah. All right, real quick, someone in the chat. There's Matthew threw it in the chat. Is Jeff Hardy, um, is that AI? That's not a bad one. Jeff Hardy is Allen Iverson. That's not a bad one. Hmm. The Soul Shine Band. We have no idea what's going on with, so uh, with Sasha. They have not given us an update at all, except for to say he's questionable. But he's been questionable four consecutive games and not played. So it's kind of weird. Like it, they there were certainly strong indications he was like pretty close. Well, he's been a full participant participant right. in practice before, right? Yeah. yeah, yeah. They they practice tomorrow. Mm -hmm. What time is practice? Will you get there? Probably not. Oh, probably be at noon tomorrow. Oh, okay. All right. Um, Drew Dumber and DJ Khaled. Every time this dude smiles, it creeps me out. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, the Kings just played. Just so, just to answer this question, he's questionable for straight games. Hasn't he been practicing? The Kings just played five games in seven nights. There are no practice practices when you like today. There's no practice. Anytime you have a back to back, you don't practice the next day. So the Kings have not practiced at all. Yeah, I mean, they might be trying to get him in, in game shape. I, I get what you're saying, but it's, there's no practice to do that. And even practices this late in the season, you're not doing full contact, real practice. That ain't happening. Everyone is taped together. <laughs> Domas is stitched up. Jesus, yeah. Even the other night, he had to have his face taped up. Like We're coming back, Hammer. All right. 
All right, we're back here. Well, I guess we should bring that conversation to the to the radio here, James. Um, whatever update we can have on, do we have any sort of update on Sasha? I think there was a belief his return was really, really close about a week ago, and it just seems game after game after game he's continuing to be ruled out. Um, do we have anything on Sasha at all? Yeah, we don't. Um, he hasn't even been in the locker room in pregame, so I'm used to at least like going over and talking to him in pregame. Um, I've had plenty of conversations with him this this entire season. Uh, the problem that he probably has is that the Kings like their players to go through a handful of practices to build up, and the Kings just haven't had practice. Again, we talked about this off the air, but the Kings had a back-to-back last week and then a day off uh, to travel, and then a game, and then a day off to travel again, and then uh, and then the back-to-back again. So they've, they've had five games and seven nights. The Kings will not practice in that scenario at all. You're not going to practice um, when you have three games and four nights, and then you're, you're practicing the next day, and you never practice after a back-to-back. So like today, the Kings have off. They'll practice tomorrow. Uh, for for Friday's game, but like there's just not a lot of time to get somebody in game shape, and you know again he's a 28 year old dude. You're not going to send him down to the G League to get him some run, although that might be the best scenario for him to get him some like some that. game action. That the G G League just isn't used that way, and I don't know. Again, I think it's the flaw to the G League and a flaw to the thinking um, that's gone into it. Uh, but they teams don't do that. Like rehab assignments in baseball. I, I think it would be like in this situation, how else is he supposed to get, you know, out there and start running. And mm-hmm. this late in the season two teams just aren't doing a five on five, go at each other practice where you're running up and down the court and you're trying to get somebody some court time. So a lot of times the younger players, they'll get together and they'll do like three on three or they'll do five on five with, um, with some of the like, uh, you know, the training crew and the uh, the uh, player development crew, you'll see a lot of that even this late in the season. Um, but like, who are we talking about at this point? Because most of the younger guys are having to play right now because you've got Herter and Lyles and and of course Sasha out. Uh, so there isn't even a lot of that going on because players, if they're gonna play in a game, they usually don't have those uh, those like secondary games. Um, cause what you don't want to do is roll an ankle in a secondary game before on like on a game day, um, or on the day before a game when you might get to actually play. So have you kind of changed your feelings maybe about seeing Sasha this year? I know when he first got hurt, it was like, ah, we probably won't see him this year. Do you, you feel maybe a little different about it now, or is it just not the time not lining up, um, to possibly see him this year? I mean, what are we down to nine games, nine or 10? Uh, and like, no. like no, he maybe. might play. Yeah, he might play. But in mm-hmm. my opinion, the reason he's going to play, if he plays right now, the reason is because Trey Lyles is out. Like, mm-hmm. I, I don't think I was off base with my thought on that. Mm-hmm. Like, at, they're just, it's, he's been gone for so long and he wasn't a huge part of the rotation when he went out. So what exactly are you expecting from him? You know, I, I don't know. Um, so, and, and I think that also tells you something. Like there is an opportunity here. If Sasha could play, you would expect that he would because he mm-hmm. the Kings need him because yeah. they don't have Trey. And so you would expect that if he could go, that he would, you know, go out there. But I think the Kings maybe are being a little bit cautious. But also, again, we don't have a medical update. We don't have a medical update on him. Uh, we haven't got one yet on Trey Lyles. We're at the two week mark on Trey Lyles. Um, right now, and that was the their spring. reevaluation point, right? That was the original the reevaluation, update. yeah, of the spring. But again, we didn't get a reevaluation point on on uh, Sasha either. We just heard he was at practice one day. Um, I just heard he was at practice, <laughs> and then and then we also we don't know what's going on with Kevin Herter's shoulder. Yeah, I was going like, to say we haven't even acknowledged the two guard who <laughs> they're just kind of like, well, we'll figure it out later. Well, I guess I, I, it's it's possible that you know that he's not going to do surgery. Uh, you know, I, I mm-hmm. mean, if they had a surgery surgery, they would have told us, I, I believe they would have said it was successful. Like everyone else says with these things. But, um, but at the same time, like we have, we have no idea. He's wandering around on the sidelines without a sling or anything on. 
And so it kind of makes you believe that they're probably going to see, you know, once it heals up and it gets to where he can, it's not super painful. They'll probably reassess him at that point and say, okay, are we going to, are we going to go in for surgery or not? Um, we had Dr. P on last week uh, to talk about the the types of surgery there. And, um, you know, like, it's not like a baseball player, like, which is called, I think a slap, a slap tear, which is in the upper part of the rotator cuff or the labrum, sorry, the upper part of the, uh, the labrum. And that's from an overuse situation where again, the bicep tendon goes into the shoulder and, you know, throwing repeatedly baseball after baseball, you end up, you know, damaging and you can have, um, the labrum tear away from the socket. Uh, and then you have to go in and like stitch up that tear. Um, the type of labral tear that Kevin has is from like a singular event, like a, like a violent act that happened to his shoulder where it pulled his shoulder pops out of the socket and it pulled the labrum with it and tore the bottom of the labrum. So on the bottom side, not on the top side. And so those things, they don't typically heal up all the way, but it can like do a little bit of scar tissue. The question is what grade he, of, of tear he had. And then on top of that, it's whether his shoulder is unstable, like where it might pop out again. And so that's the problem with the type of tear that, that Kevin has. He has the risk is that it will continuously pop out or a baseball pitcher when they go in and they clean it up, it's because it's a pain tolerance issue. So just two different types of, of, of problems. And you don't want to have repeated dislocations of the shoulder because then you can do more and more damage to the labrum. Is there anything you enjoy more than graphically describing injuries in there? <laughs> nope. their, their... I love it. <laughs> oh, there's a lot going Doctor, on. Dr. James Ham here with us on, on D'Lo and KC. Uh, well, good news, Kings fans. We're all really big Nuggets fans tonight. No let's, let's root on okay let's root on michael malone our old our old our old buddy uh michael malone uh, some of us roll the game not all of us <laughs> some of us some of us might want to root for the thunder too just for fun yeah. or, or, or or root for the root for the rockets i mean because it's the rockets and yeah, the thunder. That's, yeah, yeah yeah root against Absolutely. the thunder i mean uh, go palo as <laughs> go palo mm. Hmm. Well, pushing them down. Well, all right. Maybe out. <laughs> Go <laughs> Gigi, by the way. Go, yeah. <laughs> Go Gigi. <laughs> His Memphis has got the Lakers. Um, Sneakily, they're like two back. I mean, there's a lot of tiebreakers and stuff like that, but aren't they like two back in the standings, three in the loss column or something like that? From and, Sacramento. Yeah, they uh, won last night. Yeah, yeah that, they came back and won that game last ridiculous. night. After stealing the first half from Sacramento. On national television, um, by the way, Suns and Nuggets on ESPN 1320 tonight. That that reminds me. I remember game five, 2004, Kings Timberwolves. The whole first half, it was supposed to be on TNT, obviously, a doubleheader. The whole first half was on NBA TV because Pistons Nets went like three overtimes. Mm. Chauncey hit a half quarter to tie it and stuff like that. Miss Damner to hold, well, I was able to click over to NBA TV, but this is 2004. Remind you, this isn't, it's a different time. Mm. It's all damn, damn near the whole first half. Flashbacks. It, it looked like that game was going to a third overtime last <laughs> night. We were watching it on a computer like this. This It was 117 to 117 for at least an hour. <laughs> <laughs> that was rough. And Doc couldn't figure out how to get a, get a stop. Was Doc Rivers' fault. It was Doc Rivers' fault. Oh, no, we should tell the whole story. Dame Lillard put him up late ahead, but Doc messed it up. <laughs> I mean, look at the roster. I got Pat Beverly. I mean, you didn't, what you going to I don't know. Hey, Doc, we brought Pat Beverly here for you, buddy. Uh, Ridiculous. <laughs> most important one is Michael Malone, Nikola Jokic, uh, and the stand-up Porter Jr., uh, mm. Michael Porter Jr. Well, he's the stand-up brother. Is he? Well, Maybe not in all cases, but we're rooting for him tonight. Let's go, buddy. Get a problem uh, and, up. Yeah. <laughs> well, James. Yeah. James. Come on, James. Oh, Hope man. he can parlay this into a second championship. James. Oh, no. Is he going to wow. double down? Is he going to double down on this? <laughs> 
names. Goodness gracious. Hey, it's I, all part of the you're show. Supposed, hey, you're, su- you're supposed to be the grown up in the room, James. Come on, man. Come on. Come on. Um, Got to split. Got to get this one. We went over it. We were looking at the schedule during the commercial break. The Mavericks ahead for Sacramento. Obviously, the second game against the Mavericks on Friday. They got the Jazz, the Clippers, the Knicks, the Knicks and Celtics, which is a back to back. And then they go from Massachusetts back to New York to take on the Brooklyn Nets. Uh, And then they close out with uh, the Thunder. I think that's a road game. And the Pelicans, Suns, uh, and Blazers. These are all massively important games. And I was feeling. I was I was feeling pretty tough about that, and then James reminded me, "Hey, just go take a peek at Phoenix's schedule." <laughs> and man, it starts Rough. tonight. They're on the road against the Nuggets tonight. Then they got the Thunder on the road, the Pelicans on the road, the Cavs. And the good thing about these games is they've got two against the Pelicans. They got two against the Clippers. If the Kings can win some games here, like those, help Sacramento no matter what. Nice. Yeah. Yeah, no matter what, those help Sacramento, given that the Clippers and Pelicans have fallen back a little bit into the conversation. So it could be it could be a, a situation where, as, as, as weird as this might sound, if the Suns beat the Pelicans the first game, just root for them to beat them again. Mm. Like, whoever wins, the, just don't mm. root for splits in these games. Yeah. Root for whatever no, team wins the first game to go 2-0. <laughs> that's, that's it. That's it. That's what we've been hoping for here. Now we need we need a split. Yeah, now we need a split. Yeah, we were talking. I, I think Kenny wasn't part of this. The it's crazy if you look at Tankathon and the most difficult games left on your strength to schedule. The the Suns have nine games that are on the most difficult games, and then the tenth game is against the Kings. Like the <laughs> Kings, the Kings game doesn't even reach the point of what the rest of their schedule is. I mean, it's 647 win percentage. I didn't even know there were enough teams in the league with a 647 win percentage to have you have that as your final like strength to schedule against. They're playing with the exception of, well, because of what happened. <laughs> if the Kings had won last night, every team remaining on their schedule would be a top six team. Mm. Mm-hmm. They'd be a solidified playoff team. If they get in, they're gonna they're gonna earn it. Oh, they're absolutely gonna, they're earn, gonna it. earn it. But let's hope that doesn't happen. No, let's hope it doesn't. Yep. Let's hope it doesn't. Unless they win two against the Pelicans and two against the Clippers, knock them both <laughs> out, and the Suns and the Kings make it, then that's fine. Yeah. Hmm. That's 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 perfectly fine. Um, any concern about Malik? You you kind of you were talking about this a little bit earlier. Uh we saw obviously an aggressive Malik. He got a little there was a couple of pat. There were a couple of moments in the first half where you know the the, the bad pass that kind of th- th- led to a blocking foul. You know on the on the on the on the next play, um, he's had a string of a couple of games where the shot really hasn't gone his way. That just Malik. That's just the, the the game. Or you you a little worried as we head down here to these final ten? No, I'm not worried. Um, Malik has had a couple of stretches like this through this season. But we talked about this last year, like his his stretch that was bad last year was like six weeks. This year, it's been like three games. And even one of those times that he had one of these these little swoons like this, he came out and apologized, mm. you know, and, and just like this time he said, you know, I but I, I couldn't throw a rock in the ocean or whatever it was that he said. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, I think that. First of all, just the way he's played, how much responsibility is on him. The fact that he is playing way more minutes than he did last year, even in the second half of the season, he's playing way more minutes than he did last year. I think this is just part of his maturation, just like it is part of Fox's maturation um, to learn how to play at this level continuously for 82 games. And, you know, people want to call it an excuse, but five games in seven nights in what, like four different cities. That's like, that's ridiculous. It's not easy at all. These guys are beat up. Um, we're getting even Demona Sabonis. You can look at his numbers over the last couple of games. They're down. And if that guy's numbers are going to be down, that should tell you how much this stretch can wear on somebody. So I, I think Malik will be fine. These two days off right here, I think are going to do wonders for the Kings. I, I think that they will come out with a bounce in their step on Friday. I hope that they come out with a bounce in their step, but we've seen this team also come out after getting thumped by a team and get thumped by the same team again. Like what happened earlier in the season against Houston, what happened earlier in the season against new Orleans, 
and you hope that that there's some carryover from the earlier games against Dallas where they were just a much better team than Dallas, even with Kyrie and with Luca. And that for some reason, it's not that Luke, that Dallas just got way better and the Kings are regressing. So I expect a better effort. And, and I do, I do think that Malik will have a bounce back, you know, final 10 games here. I'm, I'm sorry. I'm looking at this schedule and I'm trying to pull up, have the Kings uh, this year, have they like dominated any back to back, like the little two game series? Or won any of the two? I don't think they have. I think they've lost Houston and they lost New Orleans. Those I don't think there's ones. been as many as there were in 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 recent years. Um, they've only had two, and they haven't gone well. Although in the um, wasn't the case in the Houston two game series, but in the New Orleans two game series, they got destroyed the first game and lost a close game the second time. Okay, buddy, you're not helping. Well, no, they don't. They, they, they <laughs> so what, what they're going to play well on Friday. I know that. Now, this uh, is also. Eerie. You literally just said they played well and lost. Well, that's what happened. <laughs> but this is eerily similar to the two game series the Kings had last year against Dallas. Dallas yeah. came in. Yep. Uh, it was right after yep. the trade deadline, matter yep. of fact. And somebody on the stream looked at me and said, they didn't need Mason Plumley, huh? Huh. <laughs> and, then, and they got worked and then they came back that next saturday and handled business who said so, that i don't know that was like a friday saturday right <laughs> <laughs> was, it? Was, like was it a, it was a like a thursday saturday? Saturday. it wasn't a true back-to-back but it was like a thursday saturday i think oh, okay. i don't think so are Let's you think. sure i think it was maybe so. it might have been it might have been a friday oh, i could saturday. i could probably look I, I, yeah, yeah. It might have been. i thought there was a day between while you check that too, I, I just want to mm-hmm. point out that people, again, the craziness of the last week and a half, right? So on March 18th, back to back. February 10th, February 11th. Yeah. Uh, Friday and Saturday. So the Kings last Monday. So we're talking about an eight day stretch, Monday to Tuesday, right? So over the last eight days leading into like yesterday, right? They played Memphis at home in Sacramento. They flew to Toronto the next day and then played the Raptors, then flew to Washington and played the Wizards the next night. Then they had one day to fly to Orlando and they played the Magic. Then they flew home and then they played Philadelphia and Dallas on back-to-back. So in eight days, they played six games, one in Sacramento, one in Toronto, one in Washington, D.C., one in Orlando, and then two more in Sacramento. And that's just absolutely ridiculous so if when you you look at the totality of it and what they should look like on the court man maybe they should have a bad third quarter against a team like dallas i mean that's it's an nba scheduling anomaly that was commonplace five years ago or seven years ago but you don't see this at all anymore where you have five games in seven nights or six games in eight nights stuff like that it just doesn't happen All right. Let's get this W on uh Friday. Yeah. Yeah, there's 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 I do think there's a few I do, I, I know they need to hit shots. I do think there's a few adjustments they need to make. And oh yeah. Some of it is like freeing the Aaron up a little bit. Also, we had we didn't really talk like they they made life tough on Domas. Uh mm-hmm. Domas had a very oddly unefficient night uh on the offensive end. Um and then, you know, I I know Guys not hitting shot. All of this stuff comes into a play, man. When they say the ball have energy, boy, they mean that when it comes to Sacramento because rarely does one guy shoot bad. Right. It's like they all – I mean, I know Malik had that night a few nights ago, but, like, man, it feels like when, when it's bad, it is bad, bad. Mm-hmm. And that's what yeah. happened yesterday. It was bad, bad. And Luca was good, good. Michael and, Jackson bad. And then Kyrie took over. Mm. And, and they hit all of their shots around the perimeter. What was that other game this year where they had that where, um, oh, when they were playing the Phoenix and you had a Kogi and you had Nasir Little, anyone who could have possibly made a three that was like mm. jarring made every three they took. And you're like, hmm, it'd be like that sometimes. <laughs> buddy buddy Ham here. Yeah, <laughs> buddy. 
But he, you see our man Ben Ross tagged us in the on this date. <laughs> buddy, buddy going off for Oklahoma. Buddy was cooking that day. He boy. sure was. He I was love cooking. that Buddy Healed is part of the permanent fabric of this show. I I, I get a kick out of that. Oh, uh, he gave it to uh, Jason Anderson yesterday uh, the other day. He gave it to Jason Anderson. Well, <laughs> messing with Jason. It was good stuff. Well, I guess we'll we'll end there. <laughs> we'll end there. He said it twice. We'll we'll see yeah we're the game ends on a penalty and we'll see you guys tomorrow at 10 a.m remember we got nba basketball (laughs) we got nba basketball coming your way uh at 6 30 the suns at the nuggets we'll see you tomorrow with the insiders here at 10 a.m on sacramento sports leader espn 1320 vamos nuggets (laughs) that's terrific all right, so everybody come see us on we we've got these watch parties. Come see us on uh Saturday. Yeah. Where are we at? We're at players. 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 Yep. And where are you guys at? We are at Bar, Bar West. West tomorrow. Oh yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, Bar West tomorrow and then you guys are out Saturday and then we're back out for the national title game. Tom's watch bar. I'm there with you guys for that. That's ridiculous, Russell. That's ridiculous. Hogan is absolutely Jordan. <laughs> oh, that's good stuff. Yeah, hammer coming out for the national championship game. Lego. Like it. I like it. All right, guys. We're gonna shut down and go do a radio show. Uh, we'll see you guys uh, tomorrow, 10 a.m. James and Kyle.